Alright guys, welcome back to another Steam free to play walkthrough. Today we have Twofold, the first no, which has achievements. I don't know if we'll get them all because visual novels is kind of hard because uh, I just kind of want to play through it. I don't want to play through it like 50,000 times to be honest with you. So, let's crack into this bad boy. As always, I'll leave a link to the game in the description if you want to try it for yourself. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. The first snow of the year should be a comforting sight, yet this carries a different feeling when so far from home. I always like when they have the Paper Mario kind of like character design. Winter has always been my favorite time of the year, but the joy of warm fires and upcoming holidays is missing. There's only a month left to go until the season begins to, in earnest, but I can't feel any of the usual excitement. The coming winter will be the first I've spent away from my family. After all, it's just me now, standing alone on a concrete balcony and looking out onto a gray sky. And you may wonder why I sound like a man in my head. Hey Allison, aren't classes starting soon? A woman's barking from down below freak <laughs> breaks at me out of my thoughts. A familiar figure clad in leather stares up, snow heaped on the rusted shovel in her hands. Reading is hard. Looks like the heating's died again. The inside of the apartment no warmer than out there. The, this new home might be a little shabby, but at least it's ours. Looks nice, and there's a panda over there. Background panda achievement. Hey, I like that. A quick glance at my phone as I walk to get my coat and bag confirms her to be confirms her to be right. The morning's message from a friend still showing on the screen. The idea of big news at this of all times fills me with worry. I'm already too busy just trying to keep up with my new life. Big news, Allie. Yay, 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 yay. Tell you later in the bio. Yay, yay, yay. With time marching on, I quickly slipped the phone back into my coat and set off for the stairs. I shouldn't have a problem making it to class if I keep a good pace. Screw class. The busily sho shoveling woman is still working away. Her efforts is obvious to see. The snowfall's been impressive for a single night, but a good amount's already been cleared. Her heavy breathing visible, easily visible in the cold air. Keeping a brisk pace is much to get to my classes on time as it is to try and warm myself up. I try to wave a quick goodbye. It's obvious she won't let me go without giving her two cents. Though, as she puts her shovel against the wall and takes a good stretch. Morning, Gross. Working hard already? Someone's gotta do it. Not like the those useless lumps will. Rose jerks her head towards the apartment. She's not really wrong, but her usual tactlessness is on full display. You all bundled up? It looks like winter's coming early, go going by the paper. I'll be fine, don't worry. Just take it easy out there, on the way there, okay, alright? I will. A weak smile is her response as I it art off down the road. She knows that I'm right. This is hardly the first exchange we've had like this. Every other morning, Rose comes up with something or another definitely not be concerned about. I don't mind, though. The kindness of her is one of her better traits. The weather's been getting steadily colder for a while now. The few workers braving the morning chill are slowly making their way down to the bus station for work. Those staying behind, grumbling as they shovel snow from the roofs of their cars and their driveways. There aren't many students down this way as I walk. However, student accommodation filled up fast, and the nearby apartments were all rented out soon after that. Thank goodness for a family friend offering to let me live with them. Helpful as Rose may be, there's still some sense of being a foreigner. It's only been two months since I moved in and started classes at college. My circle of high school friends and boisterous family home turning overnight to a cramped apartment shared between Rose and I. Oh, okay, Rose is your roommate. Sick. As the school buildings come into view, I join the tired masses, staggering through the gates and toward their classes. Much as I might worry, I know I'm not alone. I'm sure many of the students around me right now are going through the exactly same thing. It's only now that I realize I haven't had my usual morning coffee 
back at the apartment to wake myself up. With little time before biology class starts, I'll have to content myself with a quick can of soda from the vending machine. Heading over to the union building on the way to class, the morning's chill driven away, the usual gaggle, the goddamn gaggle, of those sitting on the stairs and blocking the entrance. Rubbing my hands together to warm, summon some warmth, I head on in. I kind of want some winter now, get rid of all the dang bugs and everything. With the heating being cranked right up, you could feel, you could almost forget it's winter outside. My relief doesn't last long, however. My heart nearly stops as a deafening clatter comes from ahead. A vending machine. Oh gosh, he's attacking it. A couple walking arm in arm skirt around the edge of the room, doing their best to not draw attention. Draw the attention of a blonde woman nearby. She grumbles loudly before delivering another kick to the poor fused vending machine in front of her. I hate situations like these. Either I do nothing and feel bad for not helping the vending machine, or step in and deal with the stress that comes with confronting someone involved with the vending machine. <laughs> as I try to work my way out of this, my heart freezes as a woman locks eyes with me. I must make for a pitiable sight with my hands raised defensively in front of me, her rage calming as she settles for staring daggers at the vending machine. Resigned to my fate, I reluctantly shuffle towards her as my heart beats wildly. As I do, her dour look is only made all the more intimidating from the bags under her eyes. Had a rough night, man. Leave her alone. Is something wrong? Stupid thing, ain't my money. No can or change at all. Threw five bucks in there, too. Ah, uh, the vending machine here messes up sometimes. It's usually better to go through the cafeteria for drinks. They should fix it then. Recounting the vent only serves to stir up her annoyance. Another foot being jammed into the accused vending machine. <laughs> the horrible noise makes me cringe again, and I'm starting to worry she'll hurt herself or the vending machine as much as the vending machine itself. Don't kick it again. Leave the vending machine alone. Why not? Things are already broken, isn't it? I want to say that I'd rather not get in trouble with the staff, but I get the feeling that it wouldn't face her, and I have to defend the vending machine. Reviewing my options as quickly as I can, there's only one solution I can think of that might settle her down. I probably shouldn't, but if anyone, nobody's paying much attention. Which drink do you, did you want? She gives me a curious look after I've managed to squeak the words out, but eventually points. I was just grabbing the lemonade on the way out. Could you turn turn around for a moment? I have to show her the secret way to use the vending machine, or hide the secret way to do it. With great reluctance, she turns away as I ask. I doubt she could work out what I'm doing by looking, but it's better safe than sorry. Am I using a quarter with a string? That'd be really messed up. Closing my eyes and silently mouthing the right sequence to make sure I don't mess up. I go about my business with any luck, the software hasn't been updated since I last tested this. A long sigh of relief passes my lips as the vending machine rattles away, loudly dumping the can into the smallest opening. Stilling is bad, Allison. Bad, Allison. Pulling the can before the blonde woman's face, as she turns back around, my reward is a somewhat impressive expression as she takes the item. Now that she has her drink and had a chance to get her frustration out of her system, she seems to be calming a little. Her height doesn't help her look any less intimidating though. Oh, she's an Amazon. With that, I consider the matter settled. As I nod and begin to walk away, only as I leave do I realize my heart's racing after having to deal with her. Hey, wait up! Reaching for my instinctual response, I pretend not to hear her as I skitter her away and disappear back to the entrance. You'll never catch me alive! See you in hell! <laughs> You'll never exploit my vending machine magic. The cold hits me at like a wall, and as I leave through the door, I hardly mind having a side to steady myself. As I head towards the classes, I only remember now that I intended to grab a drink for myself. But fiddling with the machine probably made me too late. The empty campus grounds makes me nervous, making me take my phone in hand to check the time. A quick glance is all that's needed to send me dashing towards the sciences building. It's going to be one of those days. Not one of those days.
Panting from the run, I stagger into biology class with as much composure as I can muster. The sight seems to make a pitiable impression on the professor, who merely nods for me to take a seat. Setting my bag next to me, I quickly take a seat next to a now familiar figure. The diminutive Caprice shoots a grin and as a wave as I sit, earning a smile in return. It's nice to see a friendly face. As the professor gets back to lecturing, I grab my still pristine note textbook from my bag, flicking through the text through to the bookmark I'd I'd, excuse me, I'd added for where we currently are. Movement from the corner of my eye takes my attention as a ripped piece of sketch pad sliding before me. Oh no, your perfect attendance record, what happened? Her writing is surrounded by various doodles and scribbles already on the page. I should pay attention to class, but it isn't easy to wave Caprice off. Then again, this is largely reviewing what we covered in high school right now. It probably wouldn't hurt to chat with her a bit. Oh, he added a picture and got held up by someone. I'm so good at drawing in this game. I write a brief reply and a little accompanying drawing before sliding it back over. A quick look to the professor making sure the coast is clear as, she, as he drones on. Thoughtful look. <laughs> oh, Cat Caprice's reply on the page is sit back. His pass back makes me grimace. I should have expected that. I almost reply before noticing the professor casting a knowing glance at my way as he continues teaching. He knew what we were doing, didn't he? Thinking better of it, I tuck the page beneath my textbook and start listening properly. I don't need to look at Caprice to know her reaction. I hardly think worse of her for it. Though swapping doodles during the class was how she broke the ice with me. When I was just another lone freshman student, a shy one at that. Yeah, but we're still fr we are still friends. I suppose it worked. Uh, maybe we should save. Do we have answer choices in this game? I wonder. Sneaking a glance back at, at the page beneath my book reminds me how well the mercurial girl can draw. At least compared to me. What are you talking? Didn't you draw that one and she drew these? I think that one's cooler. Even though these are really good too though. You mentioned one time that she's also taking our class, which must be paying off. Before I know it, the class starts winding up. The other students begin to get distracted as time goes on. The professor soon start starting to wrap up, wrap things up in response. No sooner do the words come from his mouth that the class is over, does the loud clatter of people packing books and pens into their backs and backpacks begin. Caprice wastes no time in talking as the two of us do the same. That was weird. Oh, as we pack up our backpacks, got it. I was worried you were sick today, Allie. It was only a couple of minutes. For you, that's a lot. She has a point. It's likely I was more concerned about this than the teacher. After near perfect attendance through high school, though, the last thing I want is to set a bad expectation from the staff here. We're really concerned about the staff. Setting that aside, I'm not sure the professor really likes us passing notes to each other in class. Oh, don't worry about him. He's cool. We've talked. Well, if you're sure, I do like seeing your drawings. Aw, oh, and I like seeing yours. I'm glad you're here today. Actually, I've been thinking, and I need your help with something. We're making an art club. But there's already an art club. Wait, why is there a we there? How am I part of this? You're a founding member, of course. Ah, achievement unlocked. Why do I get the feeling that Caprice has been mulling this over in her head for ages? Plans seem to already be in motion for her. And I'm not sure what choice I have left in this. I'm left to mull things over as I take my coat from the back of my seat and slip it on. The two of us taking our bags and joining the others and heading out of the, into the hallway. I hadn't even considered joining a club, let alone starting one up with all the work that it entail. I can help, but I have more high school work to concentrate on, you know? Getting a scholarship wasn't easy, and I'd rather not waste it. Ah, oh, right. You were majoring in chemistry, weren't you? Ah, that's a hard major. Jesus. I give a nod, albeit a slightly guilty one. 
Not that I dare have told my family, but I have only picked chemistry because I happen to be good at it. Like most things in life, I just went with the default option for me. Is that the default? Jesus. Jesus Christ. At least Capri seems to have moved on from me, from me being a part of this. I have enough going on in my life between moving to a new home and studying for college. The thing about spending my spending time in clubs and things. I'm sure you're surprised. I'm surprised you're taking biology classes. To be honest, aren't you more into art? Um, it's hard to pick a favorite, but right now bio is just entry level stuff. It's so boring, right? I talked to the professor though, and we're going getting into marine life chapters soon. That seems very specific. It's the most interesting part. I gotta focus hard when it, we get there. I plan on making it my major. So even a free spirit like a priest has something she's working towards. It seems I can't get away from how much of a mess my life is. With no idea what I want to do for a career. I want to be a chemist, apparently. The two of us head outside with our next classes in other buildings. As we do, I look about warily as students from other classes pass by. I'd rather not bump into that angry woman again. Who were you held up with anyway? Bump into a friend? That would require there to be another beyond her in the first place. She's about the last person I'd call a friend. Kind of scary, actually. She might have been make, asking out of small talk before, but now I have her full interest. With reluctance, I think back to the event. Not sure if you know her. Tall blonde, green eyes, very sharp look, with high boots, kind of pretty. Now that I have time to think it through, she was quite beautiful, and more than her body. Too, I liked her sense of fashion. Hmm, I think I know who you're talking about, actually. You do? Yep. Our other founding member, off sick. There we go. The romance thickens. And the plot. She hasn't dropped the thickest plot. She hasn't dropped the idea of me joining at all. And now wants her of all people to be a part of this. My reaction to the news apparently showing, shows on my face. If we're thinking of the same person, I've seen her around and I've heard some things. She floats around the art department a lot, so the other art club tried to grab her. <laughs> the other art club. She didn't even pretend to consider it. She just told them to get lost. Which means she's still free. If she already rejected one club, why would she join another? Because it's led by me, of course. Yep. Okay. <sighs> I just sigh. I need to get to my next class. Being late for one today is already too much. Resigned to my fate, I wave goodbye and start to head off. Not more than a couple of seconds later, I hear her calling out behind me. Ah, oh, before you go, meet me on the second floor of the arts building after class is okay. We need to start to get started on finding a club room and stuff. Looks like I'm going to be a part of the scheme whether I like it or not. Dealing with that woman again makes me shudder. But she'll surely just reject Caprice and that'll be that. You thought, son. This wouldn't be much of a game if she did that. Walking through the halls at these hours is a wholly different experience to the normal hustle and bustle, where students gossiped in the hallways, organized dates, and hurried between classes with arms full of overpriced textbooks. That's an hour of sweet silence. Christmas tree. All to be seen at this hour is the odd straggler thinking more about dinner than schoolwork. I love the art in this game, it's really good. Well, them and the Christmas directions, I get the feeling that the arts and humanities staff take in some enjoyment out of getting ready for the occasion. Much like the school itself, the decorations look a bit ragged, probably hauled out every year for decades. With little to do until Caprice shows up, exploring the arts building and peering into the classroom or that winds up passing the time. Heading up the stairs, I take my time strolling through the hallways. Everything is bathed in orange of the sunset. The quiet of the halls gives the building a serene atmosphere. It's calming after the day's events. 
It isn't until a good few minutes pass that I find the first thing of much interest. A single room with the door left open. With curiosity getting the better of me, I stroll up the hallway and gingerly step inside. At least I can close the door for, for them. With only a handful of chairs actually set against the tables, I think the room unused if not for the paints, papers, and sketchbooks strewn across the top of the cupboards. If Caprice wanted a club room, the club room this would be as good as any. The naked woman. Naked. As I peer about, the sight of one particular canvas among it all catches my attention. The paintings of a painting of a woman standing in water sits drying on the easel. The painter's utensils still lying about. It's the blonde woman's painting, I bet. The tall blonde. The Amazon. Stepping up to look at it, I'm surprised by how old-fashioned it is. The kind of old painting that would be drawn a century or so ago. Every brush stroke and line has depth to it. The painter's every movement clearly visible. I find myself struck by its beauty, slipping by me as I stare. Her soft skin and soft looking skin and flowing locks of hair are enough to make me wistfully sigh. Her face telling of her free spirit. It's beautiful. My thoughts are suddenly interrupted by the creaking of the door opening further, causing me to whip around in fright. I knew it. The particular person standing in the doorway, looking straight at me, does nothing to settle my racing heart, much less the fact that I'm not even supposed to be here in here today. What is this, clerks? I'm not even supposed to be here today. Sorry, I mean... I quickly try to stammer out something, but the words keep catching in my throat. Oh, it's Vending Machine Girl. Allison. Allison Merlot. So do you have a name? I'm Eileen Turner for what it's worth. I quickly nod for all my nervousness about being maybe being somewhere. I shouldn't. Eileen doesn't actually seem to care that much. In fact, she almost looks bored. This room used this room's used by a bunch of people. There might be a good chance There's a good chance she might not know that I'm an intruder. Well, I'm going to close this place up. If you want anything, you should grab it. Not that I think you have anything here. The cold edge of your voice freezes my entire body. I mean, I can explain. Miley narrows her eyes and crosses her arms, waiting for my response. The response was interrupted by a familiar voice booming from the entrance. Hey, Allie. I don't think I've ever been so glad to see Caprice, given this art club business was her idea. It's for the best if she explains it all. Eileen doesn't look impressed as Caprice skips into the room, looking this way and that, like some to tourist. Good work, you already found us a room. This will work perfectly. So Caprice got herself a new goon. I wish I was surprised. Yep. You're not supposed to agree with that. And what do you want this room for, pray tell? Well... The current art club is awful, so I'm sure you know. So instead of dealing with them, we're going to form our own. And it looks like you and Allie have found us our club room. I see what's happened here now. Caprice engineered the situation so we'd all be here together. This isn't a very subtle script scheme, but that's all the more reason for her to have come up with it. I try my best to backpedal in a way that don't that do doesn't upset either. I just thought we'd draw a bit. Didn't mean to interlude. Intrude. Interlude. But <laughs> Sorry. I got permission to use this room to practice my painting, not for some dumb club. Sorry, but it's two against one. Majority world. I didn't say anything about a club. Well, too bad. This is a dictatorship. Ali stands her ground, staring down her opponent as I try my best to stay well out of the argument. Her resolve doesn't last long though. Realizing the futility of it, she eventually heaves a sigh at Caprice's antics. I can't say I wholly blame her. I just want to work in peace. That isn't much to ask. But... I'm going. Not going to get anything more done today anyway. Ali turns to me after picking up her coat. She's gonna thank me for the vending machine, probably. A. From a desk and pulling her scarf around her. Rather pointedly, but being finished with Caprice. See you around, I guess. Yeah.
At a loss for how I'm supposed to respond to such an unenthusiastic tone, I'm left standing silently by as a frustrated Eileen throws her backpack over her shoulder and strides out. Game. Capricious smiles and shrugs as she looks back at me. The argument they had just moments ago flowing off her like water on a duck's back. Well, that's how it is. I feel like I got dragged into something. I didn't really think that'd work, but it was worth a try. She's not listening to me at all. Am I really just an instrument to try and win this argument between them? No, I can't think of it that. that. Caprice is forceful, but she means well. If this did end up being a club, I'd probably enjoy it. Caprice certainly wouldn't make it dull, and it, I think if Eileen got to know me, she'd be nicer to me. But I don't want to risk Eileen getting more, even more, getting even more annoyed with me. It feels like I've been left to hunker down in a fox, foxhole in no man's land, and all I can do right now is hold my helmet on tight. As the orange of the sunset starts to wane outside, it becomes obvious that nothing more is going to get done today, just as Eileen said. I'd better head home. It's getting late. See you tomorrow. See ya. If you ever want to, if you want to draw, feel free to drop by the new club room. Precisely none of what Eileen said penetrated, did it? That's a thick skull. You ain't penetrating that easily. I just gave give a weak smile as I wave and take my bag, idly wondering if Rose will be cooking something from dinner and bringing home takeout. It's something more heartening to think about than today's efforts, anyways. Oh boy, my eyes are tired. Working. Working got me tuckered, boys. As I collapse onto the couch and settle in, the deafening sound of silence rushes in. The odd passing car from the street below the apartment only lights highlights the quiet of the room. Plucking my phone from my pocket after dropping my bag on the cushion beside me, I take a quick note of the time. I guess Rose got stuck in traffic. An annoying train of thought starts up once again as I put it away, one that's crept up on me occasionally, ever since moving out, just waiting for when nothing, nothing's around to distract me. I can cope with the schoolwork easily enough. It's mostly just review right now. People like us, like Caprice, might be a handful, but they do liven up the day's routine. It's a fair distance to campus from here, but the walk keeps me fit. The silence that I can't deal with. Grabbing the remote and flicking on the television at least provides some background noise, but it's no replacement for the sounds of home. There's no mother busying herself over the cookie pot, cooking pot to welcome me home and ask me how my day was. No excitable elder brothers fighting about the silly thing or that. No father for me to happily come see, happily come seek, happily see come, that sounded freaking dirty, happily come see him home from work. Okay, I read that so wrong. That was hard to read for me for some reason. My brain was not grammaring. It's just me now. My fingers roll over the screen and thought as it get, brings up the lock screen, mindlessly tracing out the cracks in the bottom corner. I could easily call them right now, but my mom and dad both made it clear I could ring any time at all. She's homesick as a mother. It happens to everybody, I guess. More to some than others, but as I stare at the screen, a deep apathy strikes me. Before college, I thought that with my family and old friends, just a phone call away, nothing would feel all that different. Maybe I just couldn't admit to myself how big of a change this re would really be. Admitting defeat, the phone ends up on the couch beside me as I watch television. The news is interesting today, so at least it's some distraction from all this. Just when I thought I finally found a friend or two in college, it ends up being a mess. Why do people have to be so complicated? What is this, Avril Lavigne? <laughs> as the door behind me opens, I close my thoughts on the subject. There's no point in, point in mulling things over any further. Ah, Art Matters achievement. Let's freaking go. Wait, I already had that achievement. Is there two Art Matters just achievement? Oh, there's a new art club. Which I guess was the first achievement, and then Art Matters is the second achievement. Okay, gotcha. We're two out of ten achievements, boys. The Saturday morning's 
Air is brisk as I stagger back from the market, supermarket, hand with full, hands full with bags, so apartment itself may be nothing to write home about, but it's certainly in a good location. I still don't feel like I've been pulling my weight when it comes to daily life with Rose, but at least I can help with errands like groceries. Her attempts to teach me handiwork skills have been less successful. Even this much has been a learning experience. My parents are usually doing the shopping back when I live with them. Ah, sheltered. Reaching the apartment, I find Rose crouched outside and working on her motorbike. She looks perfectly content as she plows away her time, with tools spin spread around her, as if a child happily playing with her favorite toys. Working on the bike again? Hmm? Oh yeah, hey, that was quick. She levers herself up with the ground before pulling back the edge of one bag with a finger to peer in and then another. I'm a little worried as she checks over my work. Having to hold my breath as she does isn't exactly helping. I'm still not used to the acrid smell of her smoking, but maybe that's a good thing. Good work. Everything we needed. And no weird impulse buys. Do we need more window cleaner though? You said to grab necessities if they're on sale and don't spoil, right? You're learning. Could you help me down here once you put everything away? I need another set of hands. I figured she'd have more of a deeper voice, but I went with a lighter one because I don't know how to make a deep female voice. Boy, do I not know how to make a deep female voice because it makes it... <laughs> Without anything in particular planned for today, I agree before heading inside. The rickety stairs creak as I slowly head up with groceries in hands, fumbling with the door handle. My arms are thankful for the relief once I manage to drop the bags in the apartment after opening the door. Dang, she's strong. Carrying groceries distance is hard, man. I used to carry them like two or three miles when I was at... Oh, man. Opening the fridge, I get to work stuffing in the frozen and cold items first. Next, I open the cabinet doors and start ladling in the cans and boxes. Yeah, because that lactic acid in your arms like builds up. I think it's lactic acid. Maybe it's a different kind of acid, but... As empty shells fill in, I get an odd sense of satisfaction from caring for myself but yeah it builds up and it's like oh man it's awful living as an adult is busy work but it's rewarding in its own way there's an odd and unexpected feeling of accomplishment from doing even simple tasks i'm sure it'll wear off in time but i'm holding on to it for now with the job done i close the cabinets and get back up to look about the room the apartment is barely any warmer inside than out I suppose there are downsides as well as upsides. Putting it out of mind as best I can, I head back down to head to Rose. Slipping back outside and closing the door behind me, familiar clangs and bag bangs carry on the air as Rose still works away. Pass a rag, would you? I quickly take a seat near her on a patch cleared of snow, grabbing one of the turned up pieces of old shirt and handing it to her. She seems to be cleaning out some part of the engine or another. Anything interesting happen at school? Not really. The schoolwork isn't too hard so far. A friend wants to start a club. A club, huh? That's cool. What kind? In our club, apparently. I'm not really sold on it, though. I need to study, and she basically came up with the whole idea by herself. Rose passes the bag ba rag back and puts the part in place, motioning for me to hold it while she wrenches it back down. After a few grunts, the job appears to be done as she puts the wrench down with a clunk and turns back towards me. Life's not about studying. I know you were a teacher's pet back in high school, but you should could stand up to be a little bit more social. So it's this again. This is another downside of living here. With so much of my time spent alone with Rose, there's Better, for better or worse, no way to escape her questioning. I know she has my best interests in mind, though. I'm glad to have someone around to help me get to grips with my adult life, even if I did find her intimidating at first. What was your college life like? Never had the chance to go. I'm left a little surprised as she, get back, she gets back to her bike. I've only known Rose for a couple of months now, so I'm still finding out new things about her all the time. Maybe you get why I'm on your case about this stuff now. Not everyone gets the chances you have. 
So make the most of it. Go to parties, get some friends, and find a boyfriend sometime. Even if it don't, doesn't last, it'll be a start. My family always pushed me to put such things aside and focus on my education. So that's what I did. The simplicity of life back then suited me just fine. It worked out well going by my scholarship. I was never really interested in boys because I was caught up in learning. Was so caught up in learning is what I'd like to say, but I'm honest enough with myself to know that's not the whole story. I like the women's. She's just like me, so relatable. <laughs> Seeing Eileen last week reminded me of that. Women like her keep catching my eye. And then that was there was that painting of hers. As time goes on, that difference in what I like, looking at gets harder and harder to explain away. Rag Allison? I hastily place a rag in her outstretched hand, Rose using it to try and rub off some of the oil and grease off her hands. I'm sure she wouldn't mind if I'm not straight. If that's truly the case, while I'd like to talk to with her about it, I can never quite seem to find the right time. You alright? Yeah, I was just thinking how life is complicated. Sure is. Hey, you bought that ice cream I asked why for while you were out. It's in the freezer now, why? How about we have some? Could use a treat after working all morning on this thing. She has strange ideas about what makes a good dessert in cold of winter, but I'm not going to stop her. <laughs> not like you could. As the two of us start packing up, another peaceful day rolls by. Dun 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 dun. Black screen. A loud yawn from Rose emanates from the couch, the droning of the television briefly overshadowed. The only sound is the coffee pot blowing away from the kitchen, punctuated by the occasional passing car. Only half awake and still acting on autopilot, I lazily wipe the sleep from my eyes as I stagger through the door. The smell of Rose's taste to her toast roasts, wafts invitingly through the air, making me envious of her later start to work. Save game. I let out a loud yawn before I can stifle it, causing Rose to look over from the couch. Oh, she has a Rose tattoo. Makes sense. Wow, you look like hell. Thank you. Stay up too late playing on your phone or something? Doesn't look like you got an hour of sleep. While Rose is less than tactful about this, it's true that I shouldn't be so tired. I'm usually a morning person, but right now I can barely remember where I even put my phone. Rose picks herself up from the couch as she finishes her breakfast, brushing toast off crumbs off herself as she starts towards the kitchen. Just the neighbors being loud again. I'm surprised you didn't hear them. I may say that, but it's hardly any real shock. She sleeps like a log, which I've always been jealous about. Rose puts down the plate in her hand, giving the more, matter more thought than I attended. The one above us, right? Man, I'm sick of them. I'll go have a talk to them later today and get them to knock it off. Making a racket during the day is one thing, but the night's another. You don't have to do that. They might be quiet from now on anyway. He looks surprisingly disappointed at my attempts to wave, or, wave off her concern. You have to stand up for yourself sometimes, Allison. Waiting for things to blow over aren't, ain't always going to work. I wind up rubbing my neck and avoid outright answering. Apparently dropping the topics, dropping the topic, she sighs and disappears into the kitchen after taking her plate again. I just don't want to cause a fuss, especially on my behalf. Is that really so bad? With time rolling by, I glance about and see my phone on the corner of the table. Slipping it into my coat pocket, I skip over and grab my bag sitting by the door. As I stretch a bit and try to wake, try and wake myself up. Before facing the cold outside, Rose calls out from behind me. Turning to see her shows a fistful of crumpled do dollar bills in the hand thrust out towards me. Here, go buy yourself an espresso or something by the on the way. It's fine, you don't have to. Just take it, you look awful. She really does have a way with words. <laughs> I reluctantly take the cash and slip it into my pocket, thanking Rose as I leave.
As soon as I get out of the door, the weather hits me. Looks like it's going to be a harsh winter this year, with the cold of snow dumping down, being made all the worse by the chilly fog hanging in there, twisting my head to and fro to bury my scarf a little better. I set off down the road with hands formally lodged in my coat pockets. There don't seem to be many people around there that are braving the weather. Not that I can blame them. As the muffled sound of snow under tires rings out, a garbage truck rumbles by- God, it's loud! It's only a worrying few seconds that I remember. I did indeed put the garbage out for collection yesterday. Reaching the campus, the welcome sight of a cafe nearby lifts my spirits. I've overheard students mention the coffee here is good. It's conveniently right next to the campus. It looks homely enough for, from the outside and only a, has a handful of people inside at this hour. As I peer through the windows with a quick brush of the snow, fallen snow off my shoulders and bag, I take a quick, I take a breath and walk in. Here we're shy, I must say. A bell above the door rings out as I enter. The smell of coffee on the air combining with the homely styling inside making up for an immediately cozy atmosphere. Joining a couple of people in line, I quickly rehearse the order in my mind to make sure I get it right and now I'm gonna mess it up anyways. The barista's nice smile towards other pa patrons keeps making me trip over myself and I've never been great in dealing with strangers. Coming to the front of the line, I manage to blurt out my order of a latte with sugar before I can mess it up. He smiles and takes my payment leaving me to wait for the, wait to the side as it's prepared. I briefly consider having it here, given how relaxing the cafe is. The oak tree, it does look really nice. That's before I notice Caprice, loudly chatting with the tall man sitting across from her. I'm surprised I didn't notice them. I must really be out of it. As the cute barista slides a cup of coffee, or the coffee cup towards me, I decide I'd better leave the two in peace and drink outside. Before I can, Caprice catches sight of me, catches sight of me, and begins excitedly waving her hand in there. Allie, hey, Allie, over here, Allie. So much for that. Coffee in hand, I wearily walk over to their table and look from one to the other. Morning, Caprice. Um, Wallace. Upon Caprice making, moving her backpack off a chair and placing it on the floor, I take a seat. Austin here is a good friend and one of the founding members of the art club. The new art club. This is Caprice's radio, so I'm content to let her deal with the club as she wants to, to do too at this point. It takes a moment to realize she's referred to me as a good friend in particular. We've only known each other for a couple months since this semester started, but I'm a little glad she thinks of me like that. Hi, I'm some guy Caprice found. He's our fourth member. As he sighs forlornly, all I can offer is a stilted smile in response. Caprice looks so comfortable dealing with him that I assume they know, knew each other already. Come to think of it, Caprice had no problem with Dil Eileen either, despite barely knowing her. I'm impressed at how she can talk to strangers with just the same confidence as friends. Maybe she even considers him one already. So what'd you get up to over the weekend, Allie? Just housework and errands. It's surprising how much I spend on that sort of thing now that I've moved out. I get what you mean. Thankfully, I spent the work with my split the work with my roommates. My roommate that makes me want to pick up the slack. Caprice looks to Wallace for his input, making him part of the conversation. I look after the family gun shop on weekends. Nothing glamorous, but enough to get by on. Caprice continues on chatting, mostly with him. Wallace quietly nods along, adding a yeah, or I see, as needed. I get the distinct feeling he's been talked to at more than being talked to. Dun dun dun. Wallace has seen things. Look at that distant stare as he looks through the two girls, thinking about his gun shop memories. Now that we're both sitting across from each other, I can fully appreciate how much of a bear this man is. The man is cutting more of a foreboding figure thanks to his his beard. I can already feel myself shrink, 
shrinking in response. For what not to for what to not stare at him, I turned to the coffee steaming away before him. The flat black with the lid taken off of it to let it cool faster. I could taste how bitter it is by just looking at it. The conversation is suddenly interrupted by a phone going off. Brzzz. Apparently Caprice is as her hand dives into the front pocket of her hoodie and retrieves it. Wallace and I look at each other as she wanders off a few steps to take the call, unsure exactly what to do with ourselves. Awkward. It only takes a few seconds before she returns. We didn't say one thing. Sorry guys, gotta go. Roommates need me. Uh, wait. I'll see you two around. We've got much to more to discuss. With that, she grabs her backpack and skips into out into the winter air without another word. Why would you do such a thing? You just left me with Wallace that I don't even know slash want to talk to, apparently. Going by her face, I'm more worried this, about this than she is. Left alone with Wallace, I sip my coffee for something to do, glancing in his direction. He looks more relieved than anything. She means well. I know she does. Even if Eileen doesn't think so. I just have to keep telling myself that. And now I'm glad I didn't say that. Much as I would like to leap to her defense, she is pushing, pushing this awfully hard. He's trying to start a conversation. I feel I should at least try to reciprocate up rather than letting him twist in the wind. So you and Eileen know each other? He gives a nod after taking a long sip of his coffee. That must be so awfully bitter. He comes by the gun shop a lot. We're friends. Met when she was a freshman in high school. Capri saw us together and made the connection. Oh. She filled me in on this club business. I'm going to guess you were pulled into it. Something like that. It kind of spiraled out of control. Sorry. Wallace simply shrugs. Not the first time that clubs have been pushy about scouting members. I was actually thinking the whole thing might be good for Eileen. Her single-mindedness is really her best and worst trait, really. I don't want to say please put up with Eileen, but I'm having trouble working out a better way to word that. She isn't a bad person, just driven. I'm sure you know someone similar. I do shudder what her reaction would be to being told she and Caprice are similar in any way. I'm still not sure about dealing with her, but it's hard to deny someone worried about their friend. Wallace seems content that he's managed to get his point across, silence hanging in the air as he thoughtfully sips his coffee. It reminds me that I should drink my own before it gets cold, too cold as well. The weather outside is a harsh contrast to the nice atmosphere in here, which might be why more students are starting to file in before classes start. The coffee's nice as well, so maybe I'll make this a regular spot if I can afford to, that is. As for my companion, I think I'm starting to see him in a better way. He's just concerned about his friend. Maybe he's just the gentle to giant type, who isn't that threatening at all. With his cup empty as he sails, sets it down, Wallace sits back to savor the last of its taste. Well, I've said my piece. Caprice will probably give up on me. But you and Eileen are another matter. Caprice is a good friend. I can handle her. It was nice meeting you, Wallace. I carefully repeat his name to try and engrave, engrave it in my memory. I have no doubt I'd instantly forget it otherwise. He's perhaps over, overly hopeful when it comes to Caprice, though. Thanks. You seem so nice. So hopefully Eileen will ease off a bit. He levers himself off the chair with a grunt, taking a glance outside before grabbing his scarf and hat once more. Good luck with class. Thanks, you too. With that, he leaves the cafe while sliding past someone coming in, staggering through the terrible weather outside he, as he goes. My next class so soon, I'd better finish, the coffee, this, finish this coffee off quickly. With that in mind, I concentrate on taking as big gulps as I can without looking unsightly. Funny how one thing leads to another, though. Feels like a snowball's begun to start rolling, meeting new and interesting people since I started here. 
might have taken a couple months, but maybe I'll ma I will manage to find some new friends. I like this game so far. It's really well written, and the atmosphere slash drawings and everything look amazing. And that was really freaking cool transition. Transition. With the weather turning worse and worse as a week went on, the library seems as good a place as any to find. Uh, shoot. To spend some time before having lunch. Unfortunately, it looks like I wasn't the only one who had that idea. While the library here is bigger than my previous school, that doesn't matter much when a large portion of the students are dumped inside. While my first choice would have been used using one of the computers, that's obviously out of the question. Worried about looking like a dork as I loiter about, I start walking slowly through the library. Thankfully, nobody pays me much attention while I glance from side to side for an empty table or desk. That's where we run into Eileen. The students who are actually studying seem to out be outnumbered by the, those gossiping with friends or catching up on sleep. It's only in a far corner of the room that I catch a familiar face, albeit not a necessarily welcome one. Boy, I am the psychic! I knew! My ESPN is off the charts! Eileen sits hunched over a thick textbook, occasionally scribbling into a small notebook beside it as her finger stops every so often on an one important part or another. Hard to tell if she's annoyed or just studying hard. I consider leaving Eileen to her studying and braving the weather outside before she rubs her temples and looks mournfully at her notebook. That pose is all too familiar for any student. I feel a little bad for her, given the vending machine problems and how she wound up with Capri stuck to her. She doesn't seem to have very good luck. She might not be the friendliest person, but if I could help her help her a bit. With Wallace's words weighing on my mind, I grimace and accept my fate as I begin walking to the other, otherwise empty table. He looks up and catches my eye, eye as I come near, so I guess I'm committed to this now. Afternoon. My existence has been noted. I didn't... Don't think that could sound any more perfunctory, but at least she isn't shooing me away. Setting my bag beside my chair as I take a seat, I pull out my phone to check for any missed messages and switch it to silent before placing it on the table for me. Hi, surprised you're not in the art room. I don't live there, you know. Wouldn't it be more private there than here, though? She lets out a long, miserable, uh, as her head sinks. Hardly <laughs> difficult to work out which, what she mean, that means. <laughs> Priest wouldn't stop bugging me to join the, her drawing for some stupid theme. What was it? I wasn't really listening. Christmas scenes or something. She's barely even listening to me as she starts, tries to wave me off. Chris is probably scurrying around campus as we speak, hoping for me to join her as a drawing partner. What are you studying? Math. It's been kicking my ass. So I need to get my head around it for the stupid gen ed classes. Eileen barely lifts her head up from the notebook as she speaks, looking over the table at her work. Various practice equations that cover the notebook's page. I have to admit, I do admire Eileen's drive. I was just going to pass some time in the library reading, but seeing her working away has made me feel a little guilty. You any good at this stuff? Let me say game. Huh. I wonder what this means. We'll mess with that later. Theme, story, fall, winter. I don't know what that means. I'll leave that for now. Math? Well, I ended up skipping the gen ed classes thanks to my placement exam results. Someone spent their time studying like a good little teacher's pet. Nothing like that. Math and science are easy enough, so I ended up coasting along. I need to learn how to study now that I'm here. Eileen's eyes narrow. Maybe she wasn't exaggerating about her skills after having such an easy time in high school. It's easy to forget I'm the odd one out here. 
Of course I put my foot in my mouth just as I was starting to break the ice with her. I mean, uh, if you want, I could take a look at your work. She's hardly enthusiastic, but she shrugs and moves herself a little out of the way. My curiosity's gotten the better of me. Coming around the table and looking at the notebook from behind her, I take a gander at her notes so far. At least this is easy to read, given her immaculate writing. The more I check over her notes though, the more the cor corners of my mouth drag down. She's done a good job of showing her process, and the first couple of questions covering expressions look right at a glance. When it comes to polynomials, however, the next two have odd leaps of logic, while the last meanders off into the wilderness. <laughs> I realize I should say something to express how she's done so far, but the window of time to say something, even mildly positive, softened the blow has long passed. So it's like that, huh? You got some of it right. That didn't help. Polynomials do seem to trip a lot of people up, so she isn't catastrophically bad at this. Still, considering the first semester of gen ed subjects is mostly reviewing what we did in high school, this isn't a promising start. Mind if I scribble on this a bit? Knock yourself out. I reach over to grab my pen from the other side of the table before hunching over her book and jotting down a couple of notes. Bursts are up or a few pointers to where the first poly two polynomials went awry before taking a parallel crack at the worst of them. Pausing for a moment halfway to check the logic of what I'm doing, I'm satisfied I'm on the right track as I finish it off. The result looks about right. Eileen flips over the textbook page on cue to check my answer, looking a little dubious as she does so. Vindicated by matching by the matching result, I feel a good bit of relief at not making a fool of myself in front of her. At least one of us has a head for this stuff. Does it make more sense to you now? Takes a thorough look at my scribbles on her notebook, eyebrows furrowed as she tries to pick up the reasoning. I can't help but glance between my notes and Eileen as she looks over them. If she didn't project an aura of wanting to be left alone all the time, just her looks and style would probably attract people. I think so. You don't sound too sure. This is about as confident as I ever get with Matt, so don't worry. I'll have to repay you sometime. Taking that as confirmation that my job is done, I return to my seat as Eileen leans back in her chair. It's nothing, really. You should ask your professor, though, if you're not confident doing poly polynomials. Meaning to ask them doesn't mean that I want to. Given how frank she is, I guess this must be a matter of pride rather than shyness. Maybe that's where her stubbornness comes from. Why are you wasting your time here with me anyway? Don't you have some friends to do friends things with? I only really know you and Caprice. Met Wallace the other day, actually. So that brat was trying to drag him with the club into the club too. Wallace may think it may, might be a good experience for her, but Eileen's disdain for Caprice is going to be hard to overcome. Hearing my phone vibrating on the table, I quickly pick it up to see who's messaging me. I quickly force myself to keep a poker face as the name comes into view. She must have given up on the art out of loneliness. It, if Eileen's avoiding her and I'm here, I'm not terribly hungry. But I should probably get at least a sandwich or something from the cafeteria before classes begin. Big news, Ali, yeah, 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 I think that's what we read earlier. Hey, wanna grab something at the cafeteria? Quickly typing in, agree in an agreement to meet there, I lock, my I lock the phone once more. I might go grab lunch, wanna come? Sorry, I already ate, thanks for the offer though. She's already back to concentrating on her textbook as she mumbles the reply. Probably for the best anyway. Given a quiet for farewell, I grab my bag and put my phone back inside. As I pull it over my shoulder though, Eileen looks up. By the way, I don't blame you for any of this Caprice stuff Caprice is pushing. You seem alright. So, I'm alright. Perhaps I should accept that as praise coming from her. Glad for our meeting. Having been somewhat successful, I wave goodbye and head out toward the cafeteria. The cafeteria is a little less full than the library. The stocks of food are behind the counter, already running low on all the usual student favorites. 
With the line for food moving quickly, I've managed to grab the last set of sandwich sandwiches and move on. Scanning about, I notice Capri sipping her juice, an empty tray before her. She sure eats fast. Glad for the company either way, I walk over and take a seat at the table. Hey Allie, long time no see. We saw each other yesterday. I thought we were on the same day when we got coffee. Were those two different days? What the hell? How's everything going? How are your classes? Not too bad. It's all familiar enough right now. Not that everyone's doing as well as I am. As I unpack my sandwich and begin to nibble, my thoughts turn to the woman in the library. I feel a little sorry for her. Eileen's struggle reminded me that I have it easier than some at times. Then there's the matter of her in the club. Setting my food back down, I decide to tackle this more directly than usual. If Eileen can be so direct with others, then so can I. She's already influencing me. Our relationship is growing. I was thinking, you meant for me me Eileen last week, didn't you? She's fun, isn't she? Something like that. That painting of the girl in the water was really pretty. She's really good, huh? No wonder the art, other art club tried to grab her. About that, well, more about Eileen. I'm not sure it's a good idea to be forcing people into this club. I know you're excited to get things started, but just because her art's good doesn't mean she wants to be in a club. You sound like you're not really into it yourself. Be sharper than I give her credit for. Cut off guard, I have to stop and think as she sips the last of her juice. The sucky sound is she makes sure to get every last drop doesn't help. <laughs> I can't say I'm more enthusiastic about this. I think studying is exactly what I need to be doing. Lest I waste my scholarship. On the other hand, Caprice is my only friend right now, and I do enjoy spending time with her. If she puts down her drink with a satisfied breath, I know my answer. I can make time for it. He gives a comically big sigh, missing my hesitation entirely. If this ends up only being a, between a couple of us, maybe it won't be too bad. Long as it's not a whole bunch of people getting involved. I want to do this for her sake as well, you know. Eileen looks kind of lonely all by herself in that room. Huh, I hadn't considered that Eileen was coming at it from that angle. It makes me think a little better of her. What she says makes me reconsider Eileen's actions in another light as well. I wonder how much of her reluctance around this isn't due to Caprice herself, but rather her feeling used by the other club for her art. Seeing that kind of talent makes you kind of envious, right? Though, right? Well, I just drew a bit in high school for fun. I don't think I could ever manage something beautiful like that. We keep chatting, but Caprice's earlier words stick firmly in my mind. Save. We may meet every day, every school day, and talk quite a lot. At least she does. But I just re I realize just how little I really know. I really know her in spite of that. Maybe spending more time together wouldn't be so bad after all. Fade to black. I really love that. That's so cool. With time on my hands, thanks to the last class of the week finally being over, some quiet sketching would be a nice way to unwind. With that in mind, I'd make my way to, up to the art room. Studying would be the proper thing to do, but I'm just too burned out. Not that the stubborn cold helps either. While most classes are winding down, the professor is aware that the looming holidays are a big distraction. Others have tried ramp ramping up the workload to try and cover everything in the semester plans. I might be keeping up, but plenty aren't. My bag tucked under my arm, I give a sigh as I stagger along the snowy path with the arts build to the arts building. It would be nice to feel like I'm doing more than treading w water in class and socially. Stepping into the art buildings with the strung up decoration reminds me to look on the bright side. It's already the middle of November, so not long until Christmas and being back with my family. I'll be thankful to be back with them, even if the rest of the holiday period is a wash. I managed to angle around a chatting group of friends blocking the hallway and start up the stairs without bothering them. Another small success.
I briefly wonder if Eileen is in the art room as I proceed along the second floor hallway. Her paintings are always nice to see, but whether she thinks of me is just another pain like she views Caprice ways on my mind. Well, she already said you're not bad. Opening the door to the quiet room, I can't say I'm surprised at the sight before me if of course she was going to be here. Eileen's eyes glance as I gingerly shut the door behind me, ending up being the only acknowledgement of my presence at all before she goes right back to her work. Curio curiosity about what she's painting gets the better of me. Is it okay if I watch? Go ahead. She doesn't bother to look as, at me as she says it, but it doesn't sound reluctant either. So I scoot over and sit myself on the table as quietly as I can. Eileen brushes continues to flick to and fro as she works on the background. So Caprice is another no is a no show. She says she had to go do something with her roommates. Her shoulders slumps as she sighs, relieved. Do you really hate her that much? Believe me, if I hated her, you know it. I'm just glad to have some quiet. It's hard not to take a that is a thinly veiled implication that I should be quiet as well. Boss might not be wrong that Eileen means well, but that doesn't make her any easier to talk to. Something on your mind? You're really good at this. It feel weird to say I've been talking about Eileen behind her back. What I said is true. What is this? Art matters mixed messages as the music. That's really cool. Huh. I really- this is a really dope game. It'd feel weird to say I've been talking to Eileen behind her back. What I said is true, though. I'm impressed she can carry a conversation while working, and I like how her painting's turning out. Thanks, I've been doing it for a while. As a hobby? Everything works out, hopefully as a career. Artist or teacher, aiming for the latter. That does explain her persistence as working a way to get better. Wanting to be a teacher though, she gives the feeling of a drill sergeant more than a art teacher, art tutor. Hmm, tube's out. Eileen gets up and places her supplies on the sill beside her, opening the cupboard and fiddling around a bit. Before long, she emerges with a tube of crimson paint in hand. Rather than getting back to painting after closing the door so, she instead turns to me. So what about you? Sorry? What are you doing once you escape this place? Oh, uh, I don't really know. I'm still trying to figure that out. I feel like I failed a test as I trail off, but Eileen doesn't seem worried. You're still young, and there's a few good a good few courses to look into here. Just try your hand at whatever comes up until something grabs you. There are plenty worse ways to spend your time in college. You're smart too, so you have that going for you. I awkwardly smile at the praise. I've never been good at knowing how to handle compliments. She may be say that, but the fact Eileen's so set on a career yet only seems to be around my age rubs me, rubs in my lack of direction. I'm still patting on myself on the back for managing groceries. My parents always told me I could do whatever I set my mind to. But it was so easy to tread water for me that I'd never bother trying to swim. Sounds like you have a nice family. I moved to a spot and the memory of them gives me the familiar pain of homesickness all over again. I might have found time to call mom yesterday, but it just isn't the same. You okay? Yeah, I guess I miss him. Well, everyone here is going through the same thing. You as well? I miss my sister, yeah. She's probably fine, but it doesn't make it any easier. Mom and Dad, too? To be honest, things have been easier between me and my folks since I messed it, moved out. Huh? Hard to imagine being on such bad terms with my family that moving away was better. The best thing about Christmas will be the chance to see them again, but Eileen doesn't seem particularly fussed about it at all. Leaving me to ponder, Eileen goes back to her painting. I get the feeling she wouldn't be this gracious to Caprice, so she seems to think a little better of me at least. She lent me an ear. Not boring you, am I? 
No, not at all. I like watching you paint. He pauses a moment before continuing. Call me for a second, but I sense a hesitation there. Did I say something wrong? No, you said something right. The moment passes as soon as it arrived. Eileen's brush returning to the canvas. The other students appear to have left by now. The orange stained room, silent save for the, her work. The building's just a little cold, but that's fine. As the minutes roll by, I end up watching her for a while as I swing my legs. I almost forgot I came here to actually draw, but that doesn't matter. Watching her paint slowly progress, painting slowly progress is more than enough. Every so often, she mixes up a dab of paint, and that on, and that on the wood pallet beside her. The side of a hip is traced out, and light bouncing off a waist shaded or a floating strand of hair, detailed with a fine tip. I can't help but admire her ability to set a goal and stay true to it, knowing exactly what she's working on, to working toward at this stage of her life. If only I had an ounce of a, only I had an ounce of the ambition Eileen has. I might go to a cafe nearby to grab a coffee. I'll be back in a bit. Tired? Yeah, sorry to distract you from your work. Glad for the company. Have fun. With that, I hop off the table and start toward the door. Oh wait! Her voice stops me in my tracks just as I'm about to go. It'd be great if she decided to come as well. Could you grab me a coffee too? Espresso straight. I'll give you some cash when you come back. So much for that. <laughs> Dun dun dun. The cafeteria hums away as students talk, among, talk amongst themselves, the room having mostly filled up by now. The thought briefly passes my mind that winter must be great for business, given this being the closest place for cheap food during bad winter. Some smears on the edges of the plate are all that remains of a mostly cooked pasta served today. What's left of my accompanying soda bubbling away while I pass some time browsing the site and that. As I read, a shadow suddenly looms over the other side of the table. Looking up from my phone reveals a very familiar figure. Eileen peers down as she stands at the opposite side of the table. A large plate of food steaming away in her hand. The fresh pasta sauce is strong enough to smell from here. Okay to sit here? Ah, sure. I quickly set my phone down as she takes a seat and arranges her table tray on the table, happy that she'd choose to sit with me. A glance around to see if anyone with her makes me realize why she probably chose to sit here. The cafeteria is practically full, and this is simply the nearest table with space available. About to take her first gulp of food, Eileen's fork halts midway before saying something. Cold any better? Yeah, clearing up now. Oh. Oh, picked off the screen. Good to hear. With that, she starts on her pasta and salad. As I take my phone to browse some more, and Eileen calmly eats the average at best cafeteria food, it feels as though there's no need to chat to fill the air. That silence between us is becoming more comfortable. That is before I get a message. Can't make dinner. Work sucks. Flicking away the browser app, I take a quick look. We were getting groceries yesterday, right? Anything in the fridge? Seconds tick by as I wait for a response, a sense of concern starting to take over. Rose? Rose? Sorry. Rose? Work needs me. See you later. All I can do is sigh and slump down my seat as I lay my phone on the table. God, I freaked out in like freaking seconds, bro. Eileen looks at me in puzzlement. Her or covering near her mouth. Bad news? Roommate forgot to do groceries. We're out of food. Can't you just grab a burger on the way home? That would be the plan if I was nearly through all my allowance. I just look away and groan. Ugh. Not up to the right, outright say, saying that I'm broke. It's that bad, huh? At first glance, she shrugs off as she goes back to eating. But she seems to actually be in thought after watching her a bit. Eventually, after finishing her food, she speaks up. I guess I was cooking some extra anyway. 
You can come over for dinner if you want. It's within walking distance. The plot thickens. The suggestions <laughs> enough to make my bolt upright and innocent. What? To your place? Yeah, should be fine, right? You okay with stir fry? I, yes, thank you. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate this. Sure, whatever. Just don't make it weird. Considering the discussion over, Eileen goes back to finishing off her food without much concern for what she's just said. Maybe she does have a good side. Stopping before the large black door, I repeat the address Ave. I repeat the address Eileen gave me to reassure myself. I've come to the right place. Eileen's definition of walkable is apparently rather different than mine. Still catching my breath from the hike. I thought I was going to be fine, but my nerves are getting the better of me now that I'm here. I'm going to a near into a near stranger's home. After all, and it'll just be the two of us. In school, we just happen to be around each other, but this is entirely different. Glancing down the hall to make sure nobody's watching me, awkwardly loiter around. I take a moment to appreciate how nice the apartment building is. This is a nice area, and everything inside is immaculate. Even the hallway carries a sight a slight scent of cleaning products. Donna, Donna. Out of excuses to stall any longer, I take a breath and gingerly press the doorbell. It's muffled chiming ringing out from behind the door. I run my head through my hair one more time to make sure I look presentable as footsteps come to the door. The plain wooden door swings open, answered by Wallace, not Eileen. Uh. Oh, evening. Before I can ask if I go to the right apartment, he turns around. Allison's here. What? He's getting in the way of my freaking lesbian romance. Wallace jerks his head around for me to follow. I immediately do so. Still too confused to get a word out. Eileen didn't mention he would be there. I don't know how I feel about it. Maybe I should feel be relieved it's just not the two of us. Barely noticing the thud of the door closed behind me, I take a quick glance around her apartment as I place my coat on the counter. The first striking thing is how clean it is, with everything put neatly in its place. Then again, aside from a few paintings on the wall that are possibly her own, there's not much clutter around to clean up. The television, quite a decent size for students, sits on a cable news channel, riveting as the economic situation report is barely audible over the crack clacking rice cooker coming from the kitchen. As Wallace and I stride in, Eileen comes to her feet after having been on the couch. She lazily covers a deep yawn with her hand as she does. Um, hi. So you managed to find the place. Welcome to my home, I guess. I'd introduce you to this guy as well, but it seems you two already know each other. Wallace and I exchange a brief glance. Just had a coffee together once. While I did find his size intimidating at first, he seems to be a gentle giant of figure. Now that I'm around him more, it looks like this isn't going to be a dinner for just me and Eileen then. Taking one last glance about the inside of her place is as nice as the outside. From the meticulous cleanliness to the Trinity furniture, her home looks like it looks more suited to a design magazine than a student's living area. Your apartment's really nice. Thanks, I like to try and keep things organized. Especially when visitors are over. Eileen glares daggers at Wallace, but he doesn't pay any heed. The two seem to have a good handle on each other. Moving on. Wallace, just watch TV or something while we get dinner started. Can do. Thanks again for letting me have dinner with you. Don't get too comfortable. I'm going to make you work for your food. Tutoring. Eileen motioned for me to come over with her, but the gesture was unnecessary given her commanding tone. Wallace gives a dreary glance as he follows his orders, and I quickly do the same. I end up standing before a well-used cutting board to- oh, I'm cooking. Taking the large knife Eileen offers before sizing up the variety of vegetables waiting its blade. I don't think she notices my hesitation as she opens the rice cooker and gives the contents a stir. The two of us waste a little time in getting to work, the sound of food being prepared filling the room. 
Unfortunately, it isn't long before I've earned Eileen's ire. Stop! My heart practically leaps out of my chest as I immediately freeze, hands retreating from the cutting board. Did I hand you a hatchet? No. Then why are you using that as one? It looks like you're trying to lop off some fingers. In response to my puzzled look, she takes the knife off me and starts demonstrating the correct technique herself. I thought you'd be more help than him in fixing this up. Look, curl your hand in next to where you want to cut like this. Now use the knife like a lever instead of wildly hacking away. We're making nice and slow slices, not some ha slasher B movie. Right, I think I have it. Eileen hands the knife back, and after a breath to steady myself, I have another try. She soon starts frowning, frowning as I slice away, but at least she's not yelling at me again. I'm guessing you don't cook for yourself. Her eyes rest on the collection of rubs, lopsided shapes sitting before me. I right, Gordon Ramsay, calm down, bro. I'm lucky if I don't mess up instant noodles. I thought those were impossible to get wrong. I'm genuinely impressed. You do all your own cooking? Not like I have anyone else to cook for me. Healthier than living off pizza and burgers too. What about Wallace? Aren't you roommates? No, he just loafs around here sometimes. I've tried to get him to help, but he's no better than you are. I'm always feeding him and letting him crouch on my crash on my couch. He even bugs me for free pictures for his writing. She sets down her knife in genuine de depressing thought. Maybe we should just become roommates. I think I'm starting to get a handle on their relationship now. As a strange a, a pair as they might seem, CERN and uncompromising Eileen and gentle giant Wallace seem like they're a compatible couple. I'm surprised you're not... I thought you might be together. Nope, just friends. Not much for that. She waves away. Ha ha! So you're telling me there's a chance. She waves away the idea so easily that it must have come up before. In fact, back at the cafe, Wallace seemed quick to clarify that too. Wallace's voice pipes up from behind us. You know, it's not often Eileen invites someone over for, else over for dinner. I don't invite anyone over for dinner. You just show up most of the time. <laughs> Including now, actually. I've had to put up with him like this since high school. I guess no one else would. Objection. I'm the one who puts up with you. I'm the one who's currently holding the knife. Objection withdrawn. With that, he goes back to quietly watching television. I'm starting to get how Eileen deals with others in general. Now, she simply has no filter when it comes to stating what she believes is true to be true. That can be a problem just as much as a shyness, though. Thinking back to when we met, the only reason I didn't write the episode with her off is Caprice and Wallace nudging me afterwards. But here she is, looking after her friend and providing me with a meal. It took a while, but I'm glad I met her in the end. Perhaps that's why it's a little worrisome that she lives alone like this. You normally do all this without anyone to help? You don't need to say that like it's a bad thing. There's all sorts in this world. Some are better with people than others. Living alone suits me, and I can afford it. You know Caprice, though, don't you? So you're not completely alone besides Wallace. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Tell me, how did you and Caprice meet? We were sitting at the same table for a biology lecture, and she started passing me notes during class out of the blue. Once we started talking afterwards, she really didn't stop. Ah. Uh, that's the way it goes with her. Once you get caught in her orbit, she doesn't let you go. Caprice isn't that bad. She's a sweet person, just high energy. She gives a non-committal grunt before getting on with her cooking. I do wish she'd give her a chance. Caprice does only mean the best for her. Moving away from that, could you grab the place and glasses? These shouldn't take too long, take long to fry. Root beer, please. Water is healthier. Awesome. Please, save me from this woman. All I can do is give a weak smile, much as I'd like to give him what he asked for.
<laughs> Following Eileen's orders would probably be for the best. Babe. With all of us well and truly full, we sit around the table and savor the meal we've had. It was best food I've had in a while, since it was neither takeout nor cooked by Rose. Having sent a text message to her for a pickup, all that's left is to run down the clock as the evening wears on. Looking around the apartment, I point to one of the paintings on the wall. You paint all of these? Yeah, I really need to find something else to put up there though. But why? They're really good. I appreciate the thought. All of them have double old mistakes though. Just need something to make the wall look less bare when I moved in. And not, never got around to replacing them. You like painting people in particular, don't you? Just into portraits and figures. Modern art's well and, all well and good, but I started with figure drawing and ended up attached to it. Bodies are pretty fascinating when you think about them. Really think about them. That is, I've spent days just sitting there sketching, trying to work out how the muscles fit together, how lighting interacts with skin and all that. The way she rattles off her thoughts, which with such feeling gives away how much she cares about the subject. I can't say I take it quite as seriously as she does, but I can see where she's coming from. Interested in this stuff, Allison? Me? I just drew a little in high school, passing the time, that kind of thing. Nothing wrong with that. I sketch on my tablet and Eileen gives me pointers. Gives pointers sometimes. Maybe I should t throw you to the wolves and tell Caprice you like doing art as well. You wouldn't. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I can't help but giggle a bit at the two of them. Yeah, even as they do, there's a small pang of envy there. I can emphasize with Eileen keeping her group of friends small, but I do wish I was closer with her. In more ways than one, she's who I wish I could be. The familiar sound of a motorbike's horn can be faintly heard from outside, bringing an end to the, both my thoughts in this little outing. That for you? Giving a nod, I get up from my chair and collect my coat from Eileen's helpful hand, quickly throwing it over myself. Thanks for tonight, it was nice. Not wanting to keep Rose waiting, I wave Wallace goodbye as I take my leave, with Eileen coming along to see me out the door. Got everything with you? I quickly pat around my pockets to make sure. Phone, purse, keys. They all seem to be there. All good. I'll see you then. If you want to come around again, feel free. If I'm not too much trouble, that'd be nice. I do a poor job of hiding my happiness at the offer. I reply just a little too quick to sound natural. Believe me, you're no trouble. It honestly does me good to see you a bit more upbeat. I tilt my head a little at the odd idea. You just seemed kind of skittish before, but now you're all sunshine and rainbows. It suits you. Ah, oh, sorry, I'm a bit shy. Not to mention a bit homesick. Being able to talk with friends outside of school was a nice change. Not to mention having a homemade meal. Even if I didn't help that much, it did take my mind off things. Eventually, as my mind slowly manages to get back into gear, I muster the words to say what I want to tell her as I get past being so flustered. You don't mind me being around for dinner, maybe being together in a club wouldn't be so bad. He hesitates for a few good minutes, making me doubt myself as I offer the suggestion as carefully as possible. He knows I like her as a person, so hopefully she can look past our previous experiences. Just as I begin to think I've overstepped my mark, she gives an almost comically long sigh. <sighs> The horn sounds again in the distance, as the silence rains, but my feet stay plastered as she comes to an answer. Fine, tell Caprice she, she can have her dumb club. Thank you. Just don't make me regret it. With an enthusiastic nod and a wave, I stare, start off down the hallway once more. I lean disappearing into her apartment as I look back. Even as I walk down the hallway, my steps somehow feel lighter than they did. As I entered, I... Being around others makes me come exhausted, but right now I feel more comfortable than ever. Do -do -do.
Wallace, it's nice to see you again. How's it going? I'm not joining the club thing, if that's what you're thinking. But... Word on the street was that the pizza was, was that pizza was involved. Besides, I don't think I can handle both of you without some back help. I'm not that much trouble, am I? Remind me who persuaded me to agreeing to this again. She's got a point. You're the last person who should be agreeing with her. <laughs> we did it. Club acquired. Smiling and sitting back in the wooden chair, I take a look about the noisy room. Everyone inside must be thankful for the heat being turned up. The weather outside having been freezing before we entered. There's a certain charm to the restaurant, given its exposed aging brick walls and wooden furniture, however hard it may be. It takes a bit of speaking up for us to hear each other over the busily chatting couples and groups around us. But like Dad said, the more people at the restaurant, the better the food will be. I notice Eileen eyeing Wallace's beer in an unsubtle, unsubtle manner. The large glass perspiring away like a commercial. I take him as parent age is just his beard making him look older, but I guess he really does have a few years on us. Man, I miss beer. It goes so well with this. Here, I was thinking you were far too uptight to do something like underage drinking. Remember the trip to Europe me and my family took last year? You think I just drank soda over there? Well... I was in Munich, Wallace. I mean, really. Priest and I can only smile at her little lecture. Don't be sad, Eileen. It's only a couple more years, then you can drink all you want. The look of pure and unrelenting disdain Eileen giving <laughs> gives her at being reminded of the way it goes gleefully ignored, which is probably for the best. Our chatter is interrupted by the- that looks good. By the arrival of a waiter, a weedy young man. Pineapple on pizza? What? No, I'm just kidding. I don't like pineapples, but I don't like any of this other. I like this one. A weedy young man clad in a plain red and black uniform. It's impressive how well he maneuvers all our pizzas and sides onto the table, all our mouths watering as they steam away. I'm hungry now too, god dang it. With a curt, please enjoy. He leaves us to our feast. Damn, they're fast here. Best pizza place in the city. How many of you actually tried? Doesn't matter, since I've already tried this place. She says, busily shoving a slice of pizza into her mouth. Eileen starts on hers, but mine catches the eye of Wallace. Vegetarian? You're not a leaf eater, are you? He says this with general, <laughs> genuine concern in his voice. I just like the taste. The answer satisfies him as he goes to work on his own. The fact that it's a meat lover's pizza is less than surprising. Think you can take the wallet hit for the night? No problem. Yeah, no problem. It's a little sad how obviously she's trying to convince herself of the fact. <laughs> the reason I'm not having a quick check myself is because I budgeted the trip days in advance. And even Wallace looks like he's doubting himself a little. Such is the life of a struggling college student. Sure is. I really need to get a job. You don't have one either? I'm planning to get one. And when will you? Soon? Eileen just grimaces. She got me. How's working at the store, Wallace? Not exactly riveting, but it's a living. As I turn to Eileen, she just shrugs as she pulls out another slice. No job and no excuse like studying. Guess I'm a slacker like a priest. Given her apartment, it's surprising that she can afford to live in that area and pay her tuition at the same time. I have to admit, I am envious of how she seems to have her life together. I've never met someone so independent, yet just doing a good job at it. Wallace momentarily brings his phone up to check the time spurs to a priest into action. We're twisting about in her seat, fussing around with her coat, draped over the back, takes everyone's attention. Caprice? She finally writes herself a few moments, for a few moments, her own phone proudly hand in her hand. Let's exchange phone numbers. As a club, we have to stay in contact. I quickly turn to grab my phone while Caprice talk, tries to talk a very reluctant Wallace into going along with her plan. 
His dreary look makes me feel a little sorry for him, especially as he cracks and gives up. At least she and I are already sorted. It wasn't long after we met that Caprice or asked to exchange the contact details with me. I take my phone in hand and took look to Eileen instead, who looks up for meeting with little interest. Don't want to? She just shrugs. I feel more feel myself deflate deflate a little from my excitement of earlier. Having under overestimated how close we managed to become. I don't really use it much. Reading the room, as she glances about, she reluctantly pulls out an ancient-looking flip phone. I can't help but stare in stunned silence at such a relic. It's not that weird, is it? I just never had a use for a fancy one. It's definitely weird. I was going to try to get everyone on this group messaging app, too. What's wrong with calling? You know the things phones were made for? Thoughts I had of possibly messaging Eileen start to vanish. I can't imagine her actually wanting to text anyone with that thing. And even that idea of calling someone, somebody fills me with anxiety. As for Eileen, I think I might have inadvertently disappointed her by not tempering Caprice's reaction. With a quiet falling over the table, we end up concentrating on our cooling pizza rather than our phones. So I was right, right? Best pizza place? At least Caprice's endless enthusiasm and bright nature can't... can't... Nature come in useful sometimes. The mood instantly lifting. You were right. Wallace gives a thumbs up as he tries to grab some cheese coming off the slice he's working on. They don't skimp on the toppings, do they? Alright everybody, listen up everybody. My first executive decision as club president coming here and now is now a regular event. Don't try your luck. You've got my art room and a warm body for the numbers you need. Needed, that's it. So cold. I'll come here with you, don't worry. See, Allison's a true friend. She slips her arm around mine and pulls us together tightly. Not knowing how I should react, I end up nervously smiling, with feeling myself flushing from the contact. I guess I'm just happy to hear her call me a friend. At least you've got Caprice with you, as company during the day, for better or worse. Come on, Eileen, you're not jealous, are you? You and I can hang out at the club room all time, too. Now, too. Are you trying to make me reconsider it? Caprice satisfies herself with pouting as she takes a big bite from her pizza. Eileen might have agreed to, to the club, but I wonder if the two will ever really get along. It's probably for the best that I'll be around to me mediate. I'm glad things turned out this way in the end. Something about Eileen feels different from my high school friends or Caprice. Every time we become a little closer, it feels like a small victory. As Caprice grins at me, I realize that I'm smiling widely. I guess things really did turn out well. Hey, Eileen? Yes? How did you say cheers in Germany? Usually prost, why? She looks suspicious until Caprice raises her glass of lemonade. The other side of the table groans loudly. <laughs> but I've already begun to lift my glass in preparation, now left awkwardly dangling in midair. We're not doing this. Come on, this is a celebration, right? Wallace, help me out here. Playing the Switzerland card. I'm not even in the club, remember? <laughs> Got him. You're still here celebrating, though. See, Allison's in for it. Well, that's one way to drag me into this. All I could do is awkwardly smile and apology as others grimace. While they might hesitate to follow our diminutive lead, new leader, Wallace and Eileen begrudgingly lift their glasses in solidarity with me. <laughs> Even if her enthusiasm might not be matched, there is some sense of camaraderie between us all. As I raise my glass, I realize that a familiar feeling is no longer weighing me down. For the first time in a long while, I don't fear the unease of loneliness. In the end, maybe that's enough for me to toast to this new club and the friends in it. To our new hour club. Prost! I don't know how to say it. Prost! Yay. Falling snow achievement. What does that mean?
Ah, oh, Act 2. Jesus, this is a long game. Alright, I'm gonna take a break, get some soda, clear my nose out, because I'm getting stuffed up from reading so much. I'll be right back. Alright, let's get back to it. Alright, everyone, out. Reese and I step out onto the busy sidewalk per Eileen's orders. The chatty girl leaning through the passenger door as Eileen tries to get to the car going again. Giving a long stretch to help my step back, I do my best to keep out of the way. After news of Eileen's owning a car leaked out, Caprice and mine immediately set about organizing the arts club's first outing. Inspiration for our art, she called it. But it was obviously an excuse to hang out. With things having gone this awry, I feel a little bad for going along with the idea despite Eileen's reluctance. Their investigation's apparently coming to nothing. Caprice is right. Caprice writes herself as the car falls silent. Eileen closes the door behind her with some force before plodding around to, to us, frustration written on written to her face. Looks like the engine won't idle at all. Serves me a right for buying me right for buying second hand. Know why it's not working? No idea. She looks a little sheepish for not having the answer on hand. But I can't say I blame her. As the two of us mull over our options, we became distracted by Caprice as her wide grin. She has a plan cooked up already, for better or worse. What are you smiling about now? I've got this. Just stay right here. I'm gonna make. I gotta make a call. Eileen and I grimace at each other in unison, but Caprice bounces off the street before us. Neither of us can object. Getting the phone from her pocket as she walks, she flirts, flits between the people around her while unbothered by the ice on the sidewalk. The background hum of people chatting and cars passing by takes over once again as we find ourselves at loose ends. Not like we could go anywhere else anyway. You're not going to try to stop her? Think she'd listen to me even if I, me if I tried? That's a fair point. Both of them are rather stubborn, so I suppose it's inevitable they clash sometimes. On the bright side, of all the places to break down, here it's not so bad. The weather's not too chilly, and it's nice to observe people sometimes, especially when they're bundled up in cute weather outfit, winter outfits. Some city workers in the distance are already beginning to set up the downtown Christmas tree, finding some entertainment for the people walking by as they struggle through with the unwieldy thing. Saved. Things will change as last minute Christmas shoppers and cell hunters start rushing around, but right now it's a pleasant atmosphere. Turning back to Eileen, she doesn't seem to be as content to pati passionately, pass patiently pass the time people watching as I am. I'm going to grab a coffee, want one? I'm fine. I'll be having a bit too much of it lately. There's no such thing as too much. As I shake my head at her offer, Eileen simply shrugs and begins strolling down the road in the opposite direction to Caprice. Rather than dance around the crowd, people make way as for Eileen as she moves, her gaze fixed and noticeably taller than most. With little to do now but watch a car, I huff into my gloved hands a couple of times to try and warm them. At least the aquarium should be warmer. We ever managed to finish we ever managed to finish the trip there. Just as I'm about to settle in and watch the passing crowds, the peop phone in my pocket begins to vibrate and ring. Not sure who it could be, I quickly grab for it. Dad. That was second thought, I swipe my finger on the screen to pick up the call. Dad, hi. Hey sweetie, it's good to hear your voice again. How are things? The sound of the crowd fades away as I listen to them, a comfortable warmth coming over me as I feel insulated but from their gaze and focus on the conversation. Things are good, I guess. I haven't caught you at a bad time, have I? I could call back later. No, no, just out with friends. He gives his usual weird laugh, sounding more like air moving through his closed teeth than a normal full belly chuckle. What does that... <laughs> I don't know. It never fails to make me smile all the time, though. Same, though. What's that about? Just a relief to hear that. Hear that. 
We've all been worried about you finding new friends after such a big change. What it was changing schools and moving out? Thinking to the people I've met in school, I guess I really have. Caprice pulled me into her orbit. Wallace seems nice and caring for his, all his intimidating size. And then there's Eileen. They might be a bit odd, but they're all caring in their own ways. It's funny how art seems to have drawn us all together, each in a different way. Before I respond, I vaguely hear my mother's voice in the background. Your mother said to ask if things are okay at home. Everything's going... Everything's good. Rose has been a big help with everything. <clears throat> That's vastly understating things. If it weren't for her, I don't know how I would have coped. Not just for the constant housework and errands, but also for being away from everyone and everything I knew before. I might still have my ups and downs, but the last thing I want to do is stress them out over me. That's good to hear. Hopefully it'll take a bit of stress off a certain someone. Tell Rose hello for us if you remember. Can do. How's everyone there? Your brothers are a pain in the ass like always. For one, <laughs> right on cue, one of the mildly complaints in the background. As you can tell. How's Lucy? Same as always. She's sleeping on the other, in the other room. I hear my mother's voice again in the background. All right. She knocked a mug off the counter the other day. Your mom gave her a good scolding. I think she's acting out with out you around. I can't help but laugh imagining it. My mom exasperated with my cat. Anyway, we're getting by. It ain't the same without you, though. In a whisper of voice, he continues. It's hard to get a moment's peace around here. Make sure to give your mother a call sometime, okay? I'll call her, don't worry. Atta girl. Anything worrying you on your mind? No, things are good. I realize my mistake the moment I answer. Having spoken just a little too quickly to make it seem natural, my mind starts to replay embarrassing situations I've been in, the constant concerns and worriness of living alone, the loneliness. Dad's calming voice cuts through, interrupting my spying thoughts. I'd better let you come back to your friends. I hope I'm not keeping you away. It's fine. I'm just happy to hear you again. We miss you too. Christmas around here will be a lot warmer once you're back for the holidays. We're going to miss you at Nana's this year. I really can't wait to see all of you again. I'll be looking forward to it too. I love you, Allison. I love you too. Bye. A few seconds pass before the familiar beeping of the ending call tone rings in my ear. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Putting away the phone, I feel like I should be happy to have spoken to my family again. That couldn't be any further from what I feel, though. The horrible lump in my throat only gets worse as I stare glumly down at the, stare down glumly at the dirty snow on the sidewalk. My heart hurts. The taste of my mother's food, my old bedroom, all the friends I left behind. When I went to college, my cat—they all came flooding back. It's just homesickness. I've dealt with this before and more than once. The fact it'll pass doesn't help right now, though. Noticing Eileen through the crowd, coffee cup in hand as she sips away, I take a long breath and try to steady myself. I don't want to look weird in front of her, getting all sulky in the middle of the street. That was quick. Hey, the cavalry is here too. She jerks her head towards the top of the street in answer to my confusion. Caprice frantically waves to flag someone down. Their little car sliding into a parking spot not far from where Eileen's ended up. It looks well cared for despite its age. All Eileen and I can do is stare as the driver opens the door and steps out. I'm more than a little surprised when I recognize her as being another student from college. She looks to be about our age, and despite her ladylike appearance, her tall figure is dressed in a smart trench coat and scarf. It's quite a fashionable look, and hardly who I expected to arrive. Caprice excitedly chats to her. I feel myself shrinking behind Eileen a little bit out of shyness. She looks more apathetic about the whole affair. Simply taking a long sip of her coffee, getting on Eileen's good sign, made me forget how unsociable she can be. Ta-da! Found a mechanic right nearby. I feel a little sheepish for assuming the worst of her little mission. Caprice seems to be very friendly with this woman. 
but it's hard to reach, read much into that given Caprice's personality. Hi, I'm Millie. The two of us are classmates. Mechanic might be stretching things a bit far, but I should be able to help. And now, Millie, it's time for you to meet my art club. Introducing Eileen and Allison. All I can do is give a weak smile as Eileen snorts in weird disapproval. Like it or not, looks like we're a part of this adventure for good. I could have sworn there was already an art club. Poof, that one is garbage. Mine is a cool art club. So that's what you've been so happy about lately. Shame on me for thinking you were ever jealous of my position in the writing club. Is that what all of this is about? Reese wanted to be on an even level with her friend. I guess that worked out well for us anyway. So you're in charge of the writing club? The current leader's graduating at the end of the semester, so she's handing the reins over to me. Seems I made a good impression on him. And the rest of the club doesn't get a say? That's how it works. I like to call it a stable line of succession. Speaking of which, I need to get back to the writing I was doing before I got that phone call. You had, your car had issues? Yeah, engine died without any warning. Managed to coast it to the side of the road. Eileen doesn't seem exactly taken with the situation. Millie's explanation of her being a rider, not explaining her ability to fix a car. We don't have much option, but to put our faith in her at this point. I'm guessing Caprice gave you the briefing. Need me to start the thing? Oh, oh, let me! Eileen narrows her eyes, but eventually sighs and chucks her keys to the, at the girl. Caprice's momentary hesitation shows she expected that to work no more than I did. Just don't go for a drive or something. I assure you, you haven't seen me actually angry yet. The seriousness of her tone seems to penetrate a little. Of course, Caprice being Caprice, it doesn't take her long to for her to back, bounce back. Now let, now then, let's fix this thing. Right, let's have a look. She gives us a confident smile before popping the hood. Caprice taking on the job of her assistant. To Millie's credit, she looks like a natural as she quickly moves this and that around, about to peer inside. You don't need us. We'll just go for a short walk, all right? Got it. The meaning of we becomes clear as I save the game. As Eileen puts a hand around my shoulder to direct me, the two of us walking off beside each other and leaving the two to their work. It feels a little weird to have Eileen's arm around my back and holding my shoulder as we walk side by side. Even if it is to guide me, she takes a, a long while to let go. You sure you're all right leaving them alone? Not at all. Like I, not like I can do anything to actually help though. All I can do is awkwardly laugh it off. I don't have the first clue on even day-to-day -day maintenance for a car after all, so maybe just staying out of the supposed mechanic's way might be for the best. At least it broke the ice a little, a little bit, as I feel, still feel a little unsure when I'm alone with her. I can never seem to get a good read on Eileen. Every time we talk, I end up getting caught in her pace. Even now, I'm not sure why she pulled me away to walk with her. No, that's not quite true. She might have noticed me being depressed earlier. Even if she isn't saying anything about it, given how she invited me over for dinner when I was hungry, it seems like she does really care for me despite her stoic exterior. As she drops her empty coffee cup into a bin as we pass, I realize it's going to be up to me to raise the subject. So, you saw me earlier, huh? You did look a bit bummed when you got off the phone. Didn't want to bring it up if you didn't, though. She left me no choice. I miss talking to my family after so long. Sorry for being so flustered. Nothing to be sorry for. It's only natural. So you're homesick, huh? Sometimes. Moving out for the first time is a big deal. You don't need to beat yourself up, up, up over feeling stressed. Thanks. I thought I was doing okay, but when I heard my dad's voice again, it reminded you of what you you're away from. I gave a simple nod. She doesn't seem to be speaking in an overly soft or caring tone, but she is listening carefully. I appreciate it. Really, she doesn't come off as patronizing. 
I can't imagine living alone. I have no idea how you do it. He gives me an absent-minded shrug. I'm not really fussed about that sort of thing. Besides, Wallace drops by sometimes, and you're welcome as well. It's good that you have room a roommate to get you, you get along with, though. That'll help. I get the feeling Eileen's circling around what she actually wants to say. As she th looks to me, I think she realizes that the game is up, the two of us stopping as she turns in front of me. We're all freshmen here. You, me, Caprice. We're all away from our families and s trying to find our niche. If you want to talk or vent, we're around. Wallace told me you talked, so you have that big oaf as well. That's it, I guess. I might have thought I didn't want to worry her. But her reassurances are more comforting than I guess they'd be. Even if it's I managed to gather myself, I can't help but smile. I know it's a little bit selfish, but it's sort of nice to have someone worried over me. To my surprise, she brings her head, head, hand to my head, and starts ruffling my hair. It's hard to read her expression as she does so, but I don't feel put off at all. Quite the opposite. She pauses for a moment, face stuck. Sorry if you don't. It's fine. I only just managed to splutter the words out. My dumb smile getting smile better at getting the message across. Taking the cue, she begins petting my head once more. I forgot how much I missed the simple physical interaction, as awkward as she may, might be about it. A hug might be a bit more normal, but somehow it's hard to imagine Eileen doing that. It's not a secret. I'm not great at this kind of thing. Just keep what I said in mind, alright? I will. Everyone's here to help me. I I'll remember that. Moving her hand, Eileen and I start heading back towards the car side by side. It's easy for someone who's outgoing to comfort another, but it feels somehow more sincere from a loner like Eileen. Eileen, she's making an effort, e extra effort for my sake. Somehow I feel a little warmer than I did before as we walk back. Maybe the weather's improved, but I doubt that's it. I guess you've had experience living alone, haven't you? Me? Just moved out for college, same as you. So we're in this, just the same situation, yet yeah, Eileen has everything so together that she can offer me help like this. Moreover, she's known so this entire time. I just sigh in defeat. <sighs> college has really driven home how everyone's different. Sure has. The reason for the dreariness in her voice becomes apparent as I follow her gaze. Caprice happily bouncing out of the car and shutting the door as we stroll up. Everyone sure is different. Hey guys! Then Prop 2 mechanic appears finished as well, riding herself and closing the hood. After poking around inside, she absentmindedly wipes the sweat from her forehead, leaving some grease on her face before realizing her error. Whoops. Well, it's fixed for now. Looks like the fuse went. Nothing major. I've done what I can out here, but it needs a proper fix back at the shop. This will get you going, though. Eileen's impressed look is shared by me. Being so handy as a good trait to have, and she did come all the way here just to help us. I'm impressed. Fixed cars before? Oh, that's a really nice touch. The grease hands. And the grease on her forehead. That's really good. This is so dope. I was about to recommend taking it to my dad's shop, actually. Auto shop, actually. Your dad's shop is as good as any other. I'll sort it something out this afternoon. This is where I'd shake your hand and thanks, but, you know. Millie gives a self-deprecating smile in response. Caprice passes her handkerchief from her pocket, which Millie quickly uses to wipe her hands as best she can. Hey, since you're already here... I'll let you get- I'll let you all get on with your art club adventure. I have other things I need to do. Sorry. Have fun. With that, we give our farewells to Millie as she heads back towards her car. Her momentary church grin turns to, towards the deflated Caprice doesn't go unnoticed. Oh, we got an achievement. Rivalry in the making. Which means... 
Oh, that was a hidden achievement, apparently. What was so hidden about it? Meet the leader of the campus riding club. We did it! Eileen snatches her keys back from the girl's hand, wasting no time in addressing both of us. Now, are we finally going to the aquarium? Yeah! She beams brightly, her smile proving infectious. Turning to me, Eileen's emerald eyes stare into my own, checking my reaction after the day's events. As rough as she might be, Eileen really does care about others. Let's go, Eileen. With this, she gives one of those few smiles she dares to give. It feels like a reward to see them, as I find myself wanting to see them more and more. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This doesn't look like the aquarium I've been lied to. I briefly wonder who's in the art room as I proceed to the sec along the second floor hallway. Well, less wonder and more hope. The priest will be there. I have little doubt about that. But I'm starting to enjoy being around Eileen. Her paintings are nice to see, and any time I manage to make her warm to me feels somehow rewarding. Someone like Capri smiles all the time, and the moment we sat beside each other in a biology lecture, my face was sealed, and she began chatting to me without prompting. Well, I don't mind that at all, finding her bubbly attitude uplifting, if a little overbearing. There's a little about her that she keeps to herself. When Eileen gives praise, or even just smiles, it feels generally earned. I think that's the difference. Upon reaching the door and opening it, the otherwise empty room is filled with the greetings of a certain loud girl sitting at the table with a sketchbook in front of her. She takes a brief break from her work. Good afternoon, Allison. Hi, you look cheerful as usual. I'm super ready for today's art club meeting. She pumps her fist as I walk in, earning a sincere if, excuse me, if weary smile. A little bad for my first reaction upon entering the door, be entering being disappointment, given her earnest sense of friendship with me. Shrugging it off, I pile my books onto another table and take a couple pencils from the side of the table, which Caprice has commandeered. commandeered. A glance at the sketchbook Caprice has been sketching in makes me stop in my tracks. That looks really good. Excuse me, gosh. I have to look up at her and back down again, just to confirm that this was done by the same person. Her casual doodle doodles were cute, but she has a real talent for this stuff now that I see her most serious work. I never really questioned how much Caprice had practiced her art. Now that I think of it, I'm, I'm left a little chastened for underestimating how much effort she puts into this hobby. Oh, look at that cat. That's super cool. Hey, I like that a lot. Motivated to try a bit harder myself, I take a seat and open one of my notebooks, flipping to a mostly empty page. I ponder for a moment before setting about sketching a cat. They were always a favorite subject to doodle. That looks awesome. I lose track of time as I start to get into it, trying to replicate Caprice's shading from the memory. It's only when Caprice pipes up with another greeting that I take a break. Eileen strides through the doorway as I look up, giving a quick perfunctory wave. I think perfunctory means like short, concise, but I'm not sure. To the both of us, she looks barely awake, but given how tired she always looks, it's hard to say if it's any worse than usual. As we exchange greetings and Caprice gets back to her sketching, Eileen's eyes fall from on my notebook. Without breaking stride, she turns on the ball of her high boots to take a detour from her easel and peer at my work. Eileen's figure looms above as she stands in front of me, figure pressed to the top of her, my sketchbook as she looks down, conjures up feelings I haven't felt since middle school as in a student shrieking before their teacher. What? The drawing was awesome, hater! Haven't done this in a while, have you? Sorry. Why are you apologizing? If you haven't, you haven't. You have the fundamentals right, at least, which only comes with practice. Her fingertips skates back and forth on the paper, pointing out this and that. Musculature looks a bit off, looks off, but that's a pain 
at the best of times for animals, try to draw from references instead of relying on what your mind thinks something looks like. The weight feels as if it's been lifted from my shoulder. It's not exactly high praise, but the fact she's willing to give me pointers feels like some validation. You like cats? I have one back home. Explains it. More of a dog person myself, really. Ever had one? Would have been nice, but my parents weren't interested in the idea. Sounds like you and your parents don't get along very well. We don't. The pet thing's nothing to do with it. They wanted me to go into one of their approved careers, and I didn't. Oh, I thought it'd be something more complicated. Sometimes things really are as simple as they seem. I'm sure things will work out eventually. That's nice. I open my mouth to respond, but the tone behind her words makes it clear that she considers the discussion over. The air goes cold between us, leaving me at a loss of words as my shoulders slump in defeat. All I meant to do was cheer her up. All I meant to do was save the game! As she steps over to another table and pulls off her coat, Caprice gleefully fills the awful silence with her bubbly voice. Hey, have you tried doing other stuff as well? What do you mean? You know, other kinds of art. There's oils, watercolor, paint, pottery, fletching. I don't know what fletching is. Like bow, an arrow, fletch. Rrr. I both paint and sketch work, so it's not like you need to keep to one thing or another. I can get some pottery stuff if you want. Eileen barely restrains herself from rolling her eyes. By harassing this, the poor professor into giving you some kiln, time, and clay. It's not harassment, it's negotiating. I think I'll be fine for now. Eileen gives one final piece of advice as she turns toward the cupboard, taking advantage of the lull from Caprice focusing on her, her own work. Don't worry about her, just keep at it. Practice might not make perfect, but you, it'll get you close. I'm sure Eileen means well with her efforts at teaching, but it's a vast change to the way I used to draw as a kid in high school. Being a little more to the occasional scribble when an idea struck. Holy crap, what is that noise? Who's jingling the door? Barely having time to put pencil to the paper, a clatter at the front of the room draws the attention of both Caprice and I as Eileen fiddles both of us to get up to see what's happening. Hmm. What's up? Standing at the old wooden cabinet at the front of the room, Eileen gives a couple more- STOP JIGGLING THE DOOR! <laughs> Sharp tugs at the door with her, all her usual gentleness before turning to Caprice. The door to the cabinet's locked. Nah, they never lock it after class. He bounces over to Eileen and takes the handle under grip, giving it several pulls at various creative angles in its case it's jammed. After one last try, hard enough to have her feet slipping on the floor. Could you say that again? I didn't quite catch what you said. As they face off, that face. <laughs> As they face off, I take a look at the cabinet between them. It's a type of look lock I've tried before, and not particularly high end. Then again, I've never done this with two people peering over my shoulder. I'm a criminal. Just putting that out there. Um. As they both look at me, I realize there isn't any backing down now, glancing out the door to make sure that anyone isn't listening in. That there is- to make sure there isn't anyone listening in, I continue on. I could maybe try picking it? You can do that? Someone sure has a knack for skills that upstanding people shouldn't have. All I can do in response is will. Eileen's not exactly wrong. Even if I do like to think- I only use such things when I should, sure. We don't really have much of an option. Think you can do it? Accepting my fate, I get up and hold my hand towards them. I'll need a couple of paper clips. Alright, MacGyver. You can do anything with paper clips. Taking to my feet once more, Eileen and Caprice look more dubious than impressed. Well, did you get it? A little more of confident than Caprice, her face having been plastered right beside the lock out of curiosity as I worked. I take a long breath and reach out to the handle, giving it a timid tug. 
The relief in the room was palpable as the door, old door creaks open, revealing shelf upon shelf of supplies. Awesome! The priest gives, oh god, gives a tight hug from behind in appreciation and excitement, leaving me to awkwardly laugh off the praise as Eileen starts taking her paints and brushes. As she writes herself and the priest detaches herself from me, Eileen gives a couple of claps on the shoulder with her free hand. You did good. Where, or maybe I should say why, did you pick up skills like that? I just like learning things. Taking an interest in the conversation, Caprice leans back towards us. What kind of things? Other cool stuff like that? Just things. School work wasn't too hard. So instead of studying, I ended up teaching myself stuff like how to pick locks and tinker with different machines to keep myself occupied. Except for a car, of course. The <laughs> geek. Are you aware of how sketchy that sounds? It's not about doing bad. Excuse me. It's not about doing bad things. They're just puzzles. The point is working them out, not getting free stuff. When I put it that way, I guess it's pretty useless to learn. That's pretty funny to say. Be saying right now. Caprice nudges Eileen, who just raises an eyebrow. She makes a decent point. Hoping that no stuff were around to notice, staff were around to notice what ha just happened, I throw the twisted paper clips into a bin. Before heading to my table, as Caprice takes to hers, and Eileen sits herself at an e her easel. Without further ado, we each set to work. It's a nice atmosphere with the three of us working away at our own little projects. I'm not sure sketching cats in a notebook really counts as much of a project. Having friends around makes it somehow more meaningful. With winter setting in, I find myself settled in for the evening on the couch watching its movie on the television. Blanket draped over me to keep, try and keep warm. Rose still isn't back from work. Rose just disappeared, apparently. And with the garbage taken out and washing up done, it probably won't hurt to take things easy for the rest of the evening. A loud ping comes from beside me. My hand automatically reaching for my phone, sitting on the couch in response. Probably Rose saying she'll be late, dooming me to microwave noodles for dinner again. Or perhaps not. I don't recognize the number or user avatar at all. That looks scary. Just awesome. Briefly consider saying no, but that wouldn't be mean. I can barely make out their picture beyond what I think to be yellow hair. I don't even know any blondes between, besides Eileen and Millie. The latter's unlikely to be messaging me. Eileen? Wallace helped me set this- oh, Wallace, Wallace helped me set this thing up. What's with your profile pic? It took a photo when I was setting up. Find any nice apps yet? I haven't tried looking. I don't really get it. I can't help but giggle a little. I'm happy she's making the effort when she made it clear. I'm glad it wasn't some random freaking murderer or something. You never know, man. She wasn't interested before. I'll help you with it tomorrow. That would be good, thanks. Sorry if I type slowly, this keyboard is weird. Practice right, makes perfect. About that, wanted to say sorry about the parents thing. I was too touchy. It's okay, it wasn't really my business. Life doesn't always have a happy ending. What's this? Oh, it's a pencil. Things don't work out, and that's that. You still have to try, though. People are good. You just need to have faith. At least that's what I think. God, I just like... Sin Quimple posted. I don't get you at all. I think- Oh, God. That looks creepy, bro, where you can't see your face. It's just like completely blacked out eyes and mouth. <laughs> Scary. I think that goes both ways. I see. Taken completely unawares, I leap off the couch and spin around, barely keeping a hold of the phone in my hand. When did you get in? Just now. Sorry, couldn't help myself. I let out a long breath to steady myself as my heart slowly returns to its normal pace. Rose just grins churlishly as she walks out off to hang up her coat. I'm safe. Roommate's back. Da da da. Catch you tomorrow. See you. 
that, I top tap the side button to lock the phone once more, putting it on the counter beside me. You look happy. All I can do is grimace, my face becoming flushed from embarrassment at her bullying. Thanks to my cheeks mildly hurting. I can tell she isn't wrong. I mean it. it. Does me good to see you managing to get yourself at a, a social circle and all. You were worried? Can you blame me? No guys around, no friends, always being so nervous. You've changed a lot. I guess Eileen was right. Everyone really is there for me. Rose isn't wrong either. I do have friends now. And the art club's starting to become a welcome little slice of familiarity in the campus. Caprice, Wallace, Eileen, everything's really nice to me. Yet yeah, it's Eileen I can't stop thinking about. Behind that cold exterior of her, there's a genuinely kind person. What's with that face? Nothing. Gonna come eat or play with your phone all day. Dun dun dun. Ah, back to this place. School. Freely art room. Oh, the screen's moving. Reindeer. There's a reindeer on the wall. With the sun beginning to set, Eileen and I say goodbye to Caprice before heading out into the hallway. Calming Caprice down after she gets a bright idea. Feels like trying to stifle a shaken soda can after opening it. She might still be br brimming with energy, but the two of us leave the art room's club, art club's room, utterly deflated. We should have just joined the normal art club, you know, the one which isn't led by a maniac. I wish I could get the two of them just to see I and I, I die more often. Caprice did say she's just doing this all for Eileen's sake as much as her own, and she's too far too straightforward to be lying about that. It's difficult to push back on Eileen, though, given how prideful of a person she is. I seem to attract strong world friends. She is, a lot. She means well, though. Well, maybe it's not too bad if you, you're around to keep her preoccupied. For what it's worth, I was actually thinking this might be a fun little venture. I wanted to thank you for making this all work out. She makes an exquisitely awkward face, caught between her by thanking her and the idea of having to share her room with us, and anyone else Caprice manages to rope in from now on. I just smile as we start down the quiet hallway, Eileen taking a look out the window. Her thing down there has a heart on it. That's kind of cool. Her gaze lingers for her, for just that little longer than usual. The snow, once again, having started falling outside, I can't blame her given how pretty it looks. Damn, going to be shoveling snow again. What a pain. She really isn't that sen isn't the sentimental type. Yeah, she's got like a heart and a clover. It looks like it's like a cards. Did I say something wrong? I was just thinking you don't seem to have a very romantic view of the world being an artist. Is there much good about winter? Being back with family, all the pretty snow around, people in cute jackets and coats, holidays. I end up trailing off. Eileen look, hardly looks looking swayed as I count my favorite things about the season on my fingers. Holidays are the problem. Everyone starts starting to close up or shut down for the new year already. I want to keep practicing instead of loafing around about the life, but the life drawing classes are over and all the student modeling offers have dried up. <laughs> I have seen notices for those on the notice, board, uh, notice boards around campus with students and others making a little cash on the side by modeling for artists. Those same notice boards have become much more bare over the last month. I can be the model. Me. Time to expand our relationship. I feel sorry for her, given she's taking her painting so seriously. I was so caught up in wanting to be back with fam my family that I didn't think how it'd be f about how it'd be for her, especially when she doesn't get along with hers. As we walk along the hallway, I realize this might present an opportunity, a chance for me to help Eileen and be a part of her painting, instead of simply watching her from afar. 
I'm not completely sure about this, but my obvious scheming has already caught Eileen's eye. If it'd be helpful, I mean, maybe I could do it. I knew it. We're, we're in this, boys. At this, Eileen stops and turns to me. Should I have not suggested this? You just need me to stand around and be a model, right? There's not a lot to it. Uh, this would be live modeling, you know. I don't want to give you the wrong idea. The, rem the reminder does make me hesitate. I know there's nothing sexual about it, but I'd be standing without clothes on as she alone looks at me, analyzing my whole body. Oh gosh. Eileen herself doesn't look fussed, though she rarely does. She seems content to let me come to a conclusion myself as she stands about. My body language soon gives away at what I'm thinking. Sorry if I made you uncomfortable. I can just work on other studies instead. No, I mean... She didn't mention herself that she's done this before. It'd simply be another method of practicing painting for her. Would it be in your apartment or something? Yeah. Oh boy, we about to... Ah! Oh, this is a... Ah, oh, the plot thickens. She looks mildly surprised. I'm still considering this. If it wasn't for... If it was for any, if it was anyone else, I don't think I could do this. For Eileen, though, it's fine. I'll do it. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, look at the bunny. That thing is adorable. Oh, that lady's naked, too. We set down our coats, and uh, as we enter her apartment, the bright light giving such a different look to her living room compared to mine. As for Eileen herself, I don't get how she isn't exhausted at all from after a walk like that from school. But try as I might I, to distract myself, something feels off. No matter how I try to ignore it, painting live models is probably totally normal for an artist like Eileen. So I don't bother saying anything as she sets down her coat. Want a drink or something? I'm fine, thanks. Suit yourself, I'll grab my stuff. Just make yourself comfortable. I like the bunny. The bunny's awesome. She walks off to get her easel and paints as I nod. His name's George. We're naming him George. Without much else to do, as she disappears into another room, I idly look around while taking off my coat and gloves. Her apartment hasn't been cleaned up this time, which is an interesting change beyond the easel with the finished painting still on it. A few colorful fashion magazines lie on the coffee table, near a mug left sitting around. On the couch, a couple of crumpled t-shirts and an old pair of jeans strewn over the back and the arm. What watches my eye most, however, is the resident who looks very comfortable on the end of, other end of it. George? Without thinking, I walk over and pick George up. A particularly large stuffed rabbit, big enough to need two hands to hold comfortably. So well made and adorably designed, it's obviously a little well loved by now. It's freaking adorable. I'm sure I'd have noticed such a thing if were a thing if were around when Wallace and I came for dinner. So it must have been stuffed into a room or something. Noticing movement out of the corner of my eye, I turn and look up. Bro, when it's blurred, it looks like their eyes are like completely blacked out. It looks terrifying. Eileen simply stares at me, face flat, as she holds a bag of supplies in her hands. I really shouldn't have gone and started fiddling with her stuff. Sorry. Um, it's really cute. George is really cute. She put her bag down in size, giving me a bit of relief that she wasn't angry. Silently, she strides over and takes the toy, takes George from me, as I offer it to her. My sister gave George to keep me company when I moved out. I'm disappointed by how little emotions in Eileen's voice when she says so, but those little thought, those thoughts quickly disappear as she gently sets down George where it had been. She takes care, set it down gently with a quick brush of George's fur. The momentary smile as she steps back and looks at George warms my heart. It only lasts for a second, but her face is unmistakably that of a child, one taking care of her, their favorite companion. So Eileen does have a cute side to her. Somehow feel a little, 
a bit less wound up about everything. Now she's not that different to me in the end. She turns away. I remember the task at hand. So... I'll just set up the easel and the canvas. Then I'll have everything ready. Should, should I take my clothes off then? Yes. Obviously. That's what we're here for. I'm guessing. She's about to answer before pausing for a moment. Much as I might try to stuff with my audience uh, awkwardness, undressing in front of someone else is still weird. If it's a problem, you can grab a towel. I can make do. It's only more than a little sheepish. I glance around to make sure, make, be more sure of my surroundings. The blinds are as shut as they were before. And the door's still locked, so I'm not sure what I expected. Maybe the silence is putting me off. The apartment being set so far back of the road, unlike mine. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Want to, I want to say that I'm fine, but I can't get quite can't quite get over the stumbling block of being bared in front of someone. Meeting halfway will have to do for now. As Eileen sets her previous painting on the kitchen counter, I pop into the bathroom. My heart's practically in my mouth as I reappear in the room with the towel wrapped around me. Precious little being covered as I take my place before her. Should I stand like this or... She looks at me for a few moments in serious thought. It's a little interesting how quickly her demeanor changes to that of a painter. Carefully considering how best to use my body as an artistic prompt. Prop. Try turning around as you're, so your back's towards me. My thoughts are in a haze, unable to let go of how exposed I am. All I can do is nod and dutifully do as she says. Hmm, yeah, that's good. Keep your head like that and maybe let your arms hang down. Like, like this? Yeah, just stay like that. I give a nod, trying to relax as much as I can. That isn't saying much, though. There's no other sound in the room as she starts sketching me out. The pencil sharp scratching fills the air. It's certainly an odd experience to think somebody's looking at my body so analytically, taking in every detail considering it, and copying it to the canvas for Eileen's sake. I try to keep it as still as possible despite the butterflies in my stomach. At least I don't have to make my video mature rated now. I'm glad that they put a towel on her. Jesus. I was like, damn, I'm gonna have to mature rate this sucker. Her pencil work apparently finished. The gentle sound of brush stroke starts as her painting begins in earnest. She's fast at her sketching. I suppose she'd have a good bit of practice at this. I can't see much at all with my head slightly down like this, but at least this position is easy to keep. Without anything in particular to focus my eyes on, I can't help but turn my thoughts inward. How do people do this without getting self-conscious? I don't know, man. Some people don't bother. Like, I, it doesn't bother me at all. Nobody's ever looked at my naked body like this, carefully analyzing every curve and muscle. I wonder how I look to her right now. Am I gross? Compared to Eileen, I probably look plain at best. Hey, I know it's not easy, but can you try not to tense up so much? It's like using the public showers while I was like in the army or when I was wrestling, bro. Some people absolutely will not do it, and then other people like me, it just doesn't bother them. Because uh, it doesn't matter. I glance back at Eileen's eyes. Eileen, our eyes meet, and I force myself to face forward again, resuming my pose. Sorry. It's okay, not too much longer. Her expression was focused and analytical. I sometimes forget that serious artwork can take so much knowledge and logic as well as creativity. I really am just an art prop for her. That's good, if I remember that, this isn't so bad. I at least done this plenty of times, and I can trust her. I was the one who offered anyway. It might matter more to her because she likes Eileen, I guess, so she doesn't want, maybe she thinks, worried about her judging her or something, maybe that's why. The reason I did this was to help her, and now I can finally be a part of her true passion for painting. Feel the corner of my mouth tug a little at the idea. It makes me feel a little bit, a little special that she's looking at me this way. While she's no doubt done life drawing before, this is something different. 
Pulling out there, I realize that Eileen's brushstrokes have ceased. Just as I work up the will to question her, Eileen speaks up. Alright, you can move now. The weight comes off me as my entire body slumps, a long breath escaping my lips. Feels like my entire body deflates. Thankful that my duty has fulfilled, I adjust the towel a little to ensure it doesn't slip off. My first thought is to go where I've t carefully placed my clothes, but on the way I'm distracted by the sight of George. Oh, that's not George. I'm left speechless. I have to resist the urge to reach out and touch it. This is how Eileen sees me. Not gross, nor plain. I feel my excuse me. Feel my heart sting a little as my eyes move across the canvas. Seeing through Eileen's eyes, how oh, she sees me. As I stand gazing at the painting, I feel a coat come over me. Eileen draping it over my shoulders. I'm about to thank her, but the words are stolen from my mouth by her different demeanor. Compared to her intense focus while painting, her gaze awkwardly avoids my appreciative expression. All I can do is smile as I clasp the coat tight. The bashful Eileen standing in silence beside me. It's beautiful. Dun dun dun. Hey, we did it. We survived. Oh, this is a new setting. The street light leads us along as we walk along the snow duster street. The pit, their pinpricks of light piercing the evening's darkness. The two of us walk side by side without a word. The only sound being snow crunching underfoot, far from the silence feeling oppressive. I'd, I'm rather glad that we don't need to fill the air with idle conversation. With our classes finished, I offered to repay her for the dinner she made for me. Hardly one to turn down a free meal, she rarely accepted. It's not like the excuse to bring her over was a lie, as such, or at least that's what I tell myself. In truth, I want to be closer to Eileen. As I grew, throw furtive glances to her, I amused about how many times together, how the times we were together feel different to when I'm with others. Her earnest yet clumsy attempts to help me with, help me feeling all the more rewarding. I'm not sure, but I don't think these feelings are just friendship anymore. Excuse me. You're lucky to live so close to school. I still have no idea how you can hike all the way to your place every single day and not be exhausted. That's what happens when you don't wimp out of walking. Being fit has its advantages. Well, I stopped myself from imagining how fit Eileen's body is. I'm reminded that she's seen my own body. I cringed in embarrassment as I remember modeling for her the other day, trying to shake off the feeling before she notices. Eventually, we reach the now familiar apartment building, the two of us stopping for a moment. I'm a little surprised myself at how quickly I come to think of this place as home. The ill-maintained building, feeling so foreboding at first. Everything here is different to home, right down in the street lights we stand under. Gone with the modern white lights of the downtown and the suburbs, replaced by dull orange lamps, which occasionally flickered. Well, here it is. I'm more than a little nervous about what she thinks of this new home after bringing her all the way here. Rather than judging for me for it, she looks more to be carefully studying it. My nervous attempts to read her stoic gaze get me nowhere. Looks nice. So what's your roommate like anyway? I <laughs> got her. Scared her. No sooner did the words leave her mouth that she jumps from a hand latching tightly onto her shoulder. I didn't even notice her in the darkness. Rose is a ninja, apparently. She must have been sm having a smoke outside when she saw us. Yo! As we sit at the dinner table, Eileen's gaze has trouble staying on us. I know those eyes well. They're those of a tourist taking in everything around them while desperately trying to engrave it in memory. Or perhaps in order to judge by living conditions. Yeah, it is cards. Diamond Club. Yeah. And the spade, boy! From the best card game ever. The spades! I have to admit, this must look a bit shabby compared to her home. She surely worked 
out that I'm not exactly well off from the area already though. Compared to Eileen's apartment, ours is full with artifacts of life, a couple stuffed animals, some movie posters and DVDs around the place, an aging console next to the television, and a various bits of bobs accumulated through the years littered the room. Eileen's eyes pass over it all, but she still stays unusually subdued. Perhaps the reason isn't the room itself, but the person sitting across from her. So this is where you live, huh? Sorry if it's a bit cold, the heating's having problems. You mean, having problems as usual? There goes trying to put, up, put on a front. I know it doesn't look great from the outside, but we keep trying to keep the place nice to live in. Fixing leaks, giving the place a lick of paint, patching holes, and all that. Gets Alice in crash course and handiwork, too. It isn't much, but it's home. It's gotta count for something, right? It does. You've done a good job making this place homely. You never told me you were this good at science and math, Alice, and no wonder it seems so easy for you. She gestures towards the trophy on the side table and a certificate on the wall above it, being awards from competition I won in high school. You never asked. What? Seriously, Allison, come on. I earn a playful clip over the head, Eileen snorting in amusement. She was good enough to get a signed scholarship thanks to that brain of hers. Never having been great at knowing how to respond to praise, I just hang my head. It feels a little embarrassing to be complimented in front of Eileen. Makes sense. She's got me out of a jam a few times now. She's a handy person to have around. I feel myself flowering to a blush at the words sinking lower into my chair, and my face feels hot. I'm surprised how nice it feels, despite being so awkward. A smile spreads on my face as my legs sway beneath the table with unexpected energy. It feels different when it comes from Eileen. Thanks for the food, by the way. It's nothing. Nice to finally meet someone from Alice's side of the fence for a change, actually. I was starting to get worried that she didn't have any friends. I can only bring my hand to my face as Eileen raises an eyebrow and point of interest. I do wish Rose wouldn't make a big deal out of me, my being shy. Really? Not exactly the outgoing type, I guess. I'm shocked. She takes a large sip of the soda before her, before continuing on. There's a few of us in our little circle now, no thanks to her dragging me into a club. You agreed to come, it's Caprice's club anyways. Oh, so now you have nothing to do with it. This is a new story. All I can do is grimace as Eileen lifts an eyebrow, getting the rise out of me that she wanted. She softened the blows a little with a small nudge from her shoulder, earning a smile from Rose. Eileen gives a mighty yawn, poorly hidden by a hand over her mouth. I don't think I've seen her bother trying to hide one before. Sorry. Tired? I'm always tired. What's with the bags under your eyes anyways? Rough night? Insomnia. It's fun stuff. Here I was trying to be tactful and not, and not bringing that up and Rose just kicks down the door as usual. That does give some context to Eileen's short fuse, though I shouldn't jump to conclusions. Well, they say good wholesome food can fix that. Hopefully this will pick you up a bit. Nothing says homemade like burgers and fries after all. As the two talk, I quietly begin on my food. I hadn't realized how empty I was, the fries disappearing into my mouth at quick pace. Thanks, thank goodness for having a good metabolism. Someone's hungry. I look up quizzically at her, drawing a raised eyebrow. It's only now I realize my cheeks are as full as a chipmunk's. Good to see you two get along so well. Rose takes a hold of my shoulder and gives a playful shake, my head bobbing to and fro as I tried to avoid choking on the fry on his way down. Allison's fine, quiet as a mouse, and manages to put up with my crap. Considering how much she takes care of chores and errands, I really can't, can't really complain. You mean considering how nice of a person I am, right? That too. Dave. Hey. The 
three of us munch away on our food, the quiet sound of cars outside and prowling from the television and providing what little noise there is to be heard. Panda. Seems like Eileen is starting to settle, which is a relief. It took me a while myself when I first met Rose. Surprised you two keep your figures eating this kind of stuff. You don't uh, don't have it often, do you? Rose and I share a quick glance. No, not at all. Not often, just special events. There we go, falling a foul of Eileen's judgment. Should just get a rice cooker, buy rice in bulk, grab some veggie packets, throw them together. Easy, cheap, healthier than takeout. I have to admit, it was nice when I dated a guy who could cook. Having her around doesn't make things too awkward when you bring guys over. You learn to be quiet. I guess you would. I frown at the both of them. I don't want to hear about this. You didn't know already. That means I've been doing a good job. Rose's comment only caused me to frown my frown to deepen. I can only feel myself brushing just from the topic of conversation, which just embarrasses me more. Besides, if you ever get a boyfriend, you're going to have to learn too if you want to bring him around here. I won't be doing anything like that. Rose laughs, and even Eileen looks amused. I saw Katie that the tension has been centered on me now. I especially don't want this conversation around Eileen. Thankfully, Rose seems content with their teasing. So what's your story? You're a friend of Allison's, right? Turned out that way. Just another student at the community college ma majoring in art. Darcy type, huh? Going for the big bucks, though. Thanks. I'm sure you'll find something. Hopefully not involving burgers and fries. Eileen's limits are clearly being tested, being less tolerant of being poked at than I, hopefully. Hopefully Rose realizes it. You seem like the RC type yourself. What's with all the ink? Eileen motions to her Rose's left side while brandishing a french fry. The tattoo on her upper arm only made more noticeable by her tank top. Looks cool. Uh-huh. Expected it to be my life story or something? That was my first. Wait, no, forget what I said. I'm in the Yakuza, and they gave me this as my initiation. <laughs> Nothing says Yakuza like a biker in the middle of America. As Rose chest heaves with the lighthearted laughter, I find myself smiling as well. I'm glad these two get along, though a little part of me wishes I could be like Eileen. It took me months to warm up to Rose, yet yeah, Eileen gets on with others so smoothly. Sitting out in front of the apartment once more, we say our goodbyes for real this time, even though if she pointedly refuses Rose's later offer, later offer of transport, at least she'll be going home on her full stomach. It's not an atmosphere. It's time to say our goodbyes, especially given the nice chill has, having set in, but neither of us quite want to say the words. When you said you had a roommate, that's the last kind of person I expected you to be shacked up with. Excuse me. Rose is nice once you get to know her. She's a family friend, so I guess you could say I got this apartment through connections. Eileen's not real. Eileen's not really wrong, though. Ever since starting at community college, I've gone from having a couple of very alike friends at high school to an increasing menagerie of odd characters. The way Eileen looks as she gazes at the building, catching me off guard. Hardly the comfortable existence she seems to have. Rose and I pretty much eking out a living with what scraps we get. Yet she looks so wistful. You really have a nice thing going, don't you? Yeah, I guess so. Um, if you ever want to visit again, you're definitely welcome. He gives an amused snort and a smort and a smile. I have to take you up on that sometime. Moments tick by as the two of us stand out on the sidewalk, neither quite knowing what to say next. I want her to stay around some more to get to talk to, but I know it's already getting late. Idly thinking over our dinner time for something to talk with her about, one particular part of the conversation keeps sticking out, replying it in, replaying it in my head. I can feel my face going red before I can cover it with my hands. What's wrong? 
I can't believe Rose was talking about that kind of stuff even though you just met her. Sorry about that. It's alright, I'm the one who brought it up. That's right, you're just bad. I give her shoulder a firm tap, immediately feeling conscious of the gesture. I pull away from her and look elsewhere, fuming away in my embarrassment. Eileen rocks back and forth between her heels and the ball of her feet to pass the time while I recover, hands not knowing quite what to do. Eventually, thankfully, Eileen breaks the silence between us. Thanks for inviting me here. I'm glad to have been over tonight. Why? To be honest, I had you pegged as someone, some spoiled little delicate flower when I first met you. You know, the kind of coast, coast along on their parents' attention before the real world punches them in the face. It looks like you have your life pretty sorted, though. You've got a good head on your shoulder and friends and a cool roommate. You managed to scratch together a pretty decent life for yourself. She just gives a long breath, rocking back and forth on her feet as she tries to put some words together. I wanted to thank her for Han's word, but I'm left speechless after such a warm-hearted appraisal of my current world. I don't really know what to say. I guess I feel a bit dumb for lecturing you so much. It's fine, really. My frantic brushing off of the idea puts the both of us on the back foot, smiling with that wonderful rare smile of hers. She seems to accept the situation. Before I can say anything more, the blonde girl turns to begin the long walk back home. Without looking back, Eileen simply raises her hand in the air as she strolls off down the road. She's as confident as ever. Think Things just happened around me, and I worked problems out as they occurred. Is that really worth respect? I feel strange to have someone I admire to turn that right back on me. I feel my heart sting as her figure gets smaller in the dark night sky, but there's nothing I can say or do. Just watch her go. Ah, we're back at the beginning scene, but it's orange. The cold night's breeze wafts past the balcony, my thin jacket doing little to stop it. The only noise to be heard is the odd car rushing down the street through the darkness or snippets of muffled music from neighboring apartments. Moments like this are nice. Circumstances aside, just being able to be alone with my thoughts without the distraction of others. That said, I already have my answer to what had been on my mind. What was the real point of this dinner after all? When I modeled for her, I wanted to be a part of something that was important to Eileen. Even before then, I wonder if the times I tried to get closer weren't out of friendship alone. What I felt as I watched Eileen walk away was all the confirmation of my feelings I needed. A dark figure suddenly appears, taking no heed of my surprise as it leans against the balcony beside me. As I compose myself once more, the familiar acrid smell passing my nose tips off my eyes before tips me off before my eyes do. Don't scare me like that. Hey, I called out. Not my fault you were daydreaming. Her mention of it brings all my worries flooding right back, hardly wanting to look at Rose while thinking about all this. I turn back and try to ignore her as best I can. Rose mentioned how I should think about finding a partner sometime while in college. My parents too, and even my high school friends before I came. I was content to focus on school and keep such complications out of my mind. Until my life was all set up and ready. College has already set me up, set me right on that account though. Life doesn't go on hold until you're ready to face it. Rose simply blows a puff of smoke, a thin stream passing her lips and disappearing into the night sky. I try to keep my mouth shut, but the smell proves too much for me as I bring my hand to my face. That's terrible. You're the one who banishes me here, remember? I hate to admit, <laughs> admit it, but she does have a point. Rose stubbornly makes a point of taking a puff of her cigarette, but soon notices that something is amiss. Come on, out with it. What's on your mind? It'd be easy enough to wave her off. One of those, one of the things I like about Rose is that she knows when to step back. And this is the kind of thing plenty of people keep private. But somehow, even if I hadn't, haven't told Eileen how I felt, I kind of want someone else to know. I think I like someone. I watch her reaction with the best attempt I can muster at casual interest. I'm surprised by how unsurprised Rose is. After a torturously long time, she finishes her puff of cigarette and takes it from her mouth. You 
you had the look of someone with that on the mind, it's that Eileen girl, right? My mind blanks. She picks that picked that up herself. She hasn't taken off guard by my by my liking the girl at all. Well, of course, you were just with her, and now you're telling her you like someone after having like a heart to heart outside with her. That's like uh, nostalgia. <laughs> this game is really good. I like this. The knot of the anxiety I hadn't even noticed forming inside of me suddenly twists and turns. The expected spluttering, spluttering explanation suddenly not needed. I psyched myself up so much, only for it to go nowhere. The silence between us continues as Rose patiently waits for me to respond. It's just, what's supposed to come after saying that? I didn't think you knew about Eileen, or, you know... Well, I mean... Kinda of hard to ignore what's in front of your face, you know, seeing you two together. It all clicked. You don't think I'm weird? Apparently feeling a little more sure of what to say, she gives a disarming smile. Believe me, I'm not in any position to call anyone someone weird. Yeah. Hey, that's not what you're supposed to say. He elbows me in response to my most, uh, mostly unintentional bite back. With the situation diffused, I managed to calm down a little. Just saying I like her makes my thoughts feel all the more real, my heart skipping a beat as I repeat the words in my mind. Rose thinks to herself a little, before snuffing out her cigarette on my ashtray and looking at me squarely. Sorry, I shouldn't be so flippant when you're all worked out. I get that coming out can be hard. For what it's worth, I really appreciate that you trust me so much. The warm smile on her face proves infectious, all tension from the air fading away. I hardly mind now that I've managed to unwind a little. I get the feeling she's stumbling through this herself. Minutes ago, by the by with only the passing of cars beneath us for noise, both of us savoring the peacefulness of the winter's night. At loose ends, I lean against the balcony railing and finally break the silence. What should I do? I don't think that's something I can decide for you. Just remember that you're still young. So, you don't think it'll work out? I'm not saying that. Just take it easy, alright? Relationships are a pain in the ass. This isn't what I'd hope Rose would say at all, but that doesn't mean she's wrong. I thought love was supposed to feel happy and warm, but I feel more nervous than anything else. Welcome to relationships. <laughs> Welcome to relationships. Falling for someone is easy. It's what comes next that makes them hard. Her disarming smile at least puts me a little more at ease. I'm glad to have Rose here for me. In many ways, I feel like we can't relate to each other. But we can still have this kind of conversation and understand each other. We're just two girls talking about love. You're a good girl, Allison. I promise that whatever happens, you can call on me, okay? Thanks. But you know, if things work out, you're still gonna have to learn how to be quiet for my sake if you bring her around. Rose? <laughs> Huge Christmas tree. While I'd had my doubts, the city workers managed to get the Christmas tree in the city's main square finished, just on schedule for the first day of December. It's oversized pencil and baubles gleam happily in the morning light, proudly announcing the coming holiday. Rose takes my pause in the middle of the city square as an excuse for a break, setting down her bags, setting down her bags down as I look up the huge tree before us. It's not the tree that's the most interesting, so much as the crowd around us. Everyone walk, walks to and fro, just a little faster than normal walking speed, pouring from shop to shop while hardly even glancing at the Christmas tree looming over everything. I think I read something once about feeling alone, even in a crowd. So many faces pass by, from couples holding hands to businessmen, to groups of people, yet I feel more disconnected than when, I, when I'm actually alone. 
The clicking of a lighter next to me reminds me of my companion. The cigarette now perched in the corner of her mouth, glowing brightly. Shame we couldn't walk part closer. Downtown's pretty crazy these days, isn't it? Maybe we should put up our own Christmas tree. Hey, I got a tree for us a few days ago. I was the one who bought that. It's like a, also like a foot tall. Oh yeah. <laughs> the cigarette perched in her mouth tilts downward as she looks at me. Her mouth's turning just a little less cheerful. You're missing holidays at home, are you? A bit. She clamps onto my shoulder and gives me a firm shake. Hang in there. I might not be much company, but at least you've got someone around. Were you homesick when you first moved out of home? Given the circumstances, no. I don't think you appreciate how lucky you are sometimes. Wander straight into that landmine. Rose has never talked about her immediate family in the few months I've known her, so maybe I should have taken the hint. Noticing the gazes of a few around us have turned upward, I look up curiously. It looks like the weather has turned, the morning chill turning to snow. Piss off, winter. <laughs> with a dissatisfied puff, she puts out her cigarette on a nearby bin lid before flicking it in with a practice motion. Taking her bags up once more, we continue to slog back to the bike. Chin up, eh? I was going to say this later, but I bought your favorite while you weren't looking. Strawberry trifle? You know it. Just a thanks for pulling your weight a bit more. Nice to see you getting yourself together. Just as I'm about to thank her, a loud ping comes from my pocket. A little sheepish, I take my phone from my pocket to check what the message is. Behind you. Confused, I stop walking and turn about. Hey! Eileen holds her hand high as she walks, slowly walks up the street, slipping her phone into her pocket as she arrives. I'm happy to see her, but something makes me hesitate, something Rose picks up on, going by her churlish grin. I know full well I've fallen for Eileen, my stomach tying itself into knots at the sight of her makes me realize that asking her out will have to come sooner rather than later, if she's in even interested in girls that is. Trying to put my worries out of mind as best I can. I do my best to act normal. You've sure got been getting some use out of that phone. Starting to see the appeal of these things. Yeah. Morning, morning Rose. What's up? Just out for a walk. The apartment's getting stifling after a while. Not interrupting anything, am I? When she puts it like that, she sounds far older than she should. In fact, given she doesn't own, didn't own a smartphone, likes simple walks alone, and spends her days painting, starting to doubt. Excuse me, starting to doubt the girl. I fell for her. It's really my own age. As the two of us strike up a casual chat, I remember how Eileen and I came to meet, being pushed into the club, take, taking chance after chance to come closer to her in the hopes of spending more time together. The only that persistence which gained me her friendship. My heart begins to beat as I walk, hulk myself into the f plan forming in my head, pushing myself to got me this far. Perhaps if I could take one more step. Hey Rose, can I leave these with you? She hesitates at the change of plans. The words blurted it out before I could help my stop myself. Sure, I'll see you later. If you need a pickup, just call. Before I can so much as think her, Rose quickly starts the work of strapping the shopping bags out her back to her bike. It'll probably be easier to get everything home without me on the back anyway. Eileen and I give her our goodbyes to her as we walk on, Rose waving us off. As we go, I think I see a small grin on her face. I guess she worked it out. Once again, we're alone with each other. My stomach twists and turns as I desperately try to find some small talk to fill the air with. Not that Eileen looks fussed about it at all. 
Dun dun dun, save. Buried in thought, I barely register us moving through the old wrought iron gates and into the city park. The water in the pond lies nearly still, the ducks lazily bobbing about with the odd flap of their wings to shake off the snow. The normally rustling branches of the trees stay silent as they gather falling snow, green slowly turning to white. With everybody in town busy shopping, all that's heard as we walk along the wide paths are our footsteps on the freshly fallen snow. You come here much? Yeah, every so often. I used to just think to myself but without being cooped up. You? Only when I was younger. I like to feed bread to the ducks. I feel like I should have guessed that answer from you, especially with your duck profile pic on your phone. All I can do is pout as she gives me a smug smile at my expense. Damn, I'm just looking straight out of shot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, eye level, chick. <laughs> Even as we walk on through the otherwise empty park, I can feel my eyes lingering on her. That difference between us is probably what drew me to her. Now that I think about it, I never felt like this towards anyone else before, but I know my feelings are genuine as I gaze at her. If she spends Christmas with her family, I won't get to see Eileen get until classes start in the new year, telling her what I feel might ruin everything. But I don't want this to linger like a hanging thread. If she can push herself to get towards her goals, then so can I. Now I'm not even thinking about spending time with my family. I'm thinking about getting together. As I come to a stop, the ceasing of my footsteps on the crushed snow making Eileen towards, turn towards me. As her eyes fall to mine, my heart begins to race. I'm suddenly filled with doubts, but now it's too late. I've psyched myself up so much that it's surely showing. All my life with others has pushed me, helped push me forward, but now I have something to do something for myself. Eileen taught me how I have to do that. Eileen, I want to tell you something, and she'll be like, I want to tell you something too. With my heart, voice shaking and a hand clutching my other arm tightly out of nervousness, I take a long breath to clear my mind and sort out the words in my head. I ball my fists as I feel my hands shaking. After spending my whole life with such a big family, this was the first time I've ever tried to live by myself. I was really lonely at first and didn't really know what was going on. But recently, I realized that loneliness hasn't been around. I met so many wonderful people and had so many nice experiences. Now I'm looking forward to every day and what fun things might happen. A lot of that is thanks to you, so I wanted to thank you for helping me. This isn't exactly poetry so far, but I think I'm getting my feelings across right. Eileen simply looks at me, accepting the praise with only a touch of confusion. Well, thanks. It's nice to be appreciated like that. It's more than that, though. I mean, I first thought it was just friendship, but why can't I be more confident than this? My throat feels like it's closing as my nerves get the better of me, and it only gets worse the more I try to speak. It's... I... I'm so busy reading Eileen's expression that I lose track of what I'm saying. I'm, I try desperately to force something out, but no words come to me. Looking at her face, though, I don't think the rest needs to be said. We just look at each other silently. The winter snow falling between us, she looks gentle somehow. Stepping forward, she looks down at my blushing face from here. I can see the faint red in her cheeks clearly. I can't think of anything else, just that gentle, calm face that I've never seen her wear before. After a moment of hesitation, Eileen brings her hands forward, grasping my shoulders delicately. Yay! And then, as she leans down, everything stops. I reflexively gra gasp in surprise as her stop soft lips press gently to mine, but it ends up stifled, with my body utter utterly frozen. I can find myself completely in the grasp of the girl holding me, her breath tingling against my face. The sounds, the smells, everything beyond Eileen and I fall from and I falls from my consciousness, 
All that's left is this wonderful warm feeling flowing through my entire body. Minutes, seconds, I have no idea how much time passes. I just know that I don't want it to stop. Eventually, sadly, Eileen's lips part from mine. Straightening herself as she steps back, Eileen takes a long, shuddering breath as I stare dumbstruck at her wildly blushing face. The feeling of Eileen's lips pressed in mine replaces endlessly in my confused mind, clouding everything else. Eileen, you... The air between us falls quiet. Eileen left waiting for a reply as I stand in a silent daze. Simple shock is one part of it. But far from all, Eileen is not only interested in women, but also in me. I feel like my heart could burst from the relief. It's only now that I see her fidgeting, playing with her hair and unable to quite stand still. I wonder how long that's been going on, unnoticed. It makes me realize she's as un unfamiliar at this situation as I am. Neither of us knows what we're supposed to do or say right now. Here I was trying to explain my feelings when Eileen rushes ahead and does something brash like that. Overcome with my own flood of emotions and confusion, it's Eileen who ends up having to reluctantly move things forward. Sure hope I didn't misinterpret that. Her attempt to play off her nervousness is portrayed by her blushing, I finally realized just why she's so uncomfortable now. She left herself vulnerable, it's the first time I've seen her exposed like this. Her feelings plain to see. I didn't know you felt that way. I entertained the idea, I guess. Didn't ever think you'd be the first one to make the first move. So, you'll go out with me? No, I just kiss you for the sake of it. Of course I will, you don't. Guess we're in this thing together now, huh? For all she tries to play things cool, it's obvious. Eileen's so awkward about this as I am. The only reply I can master, muster, and perhaps the only one needed, is a smile. Loud yawn fills the living room, the droning of the television briefly overshadowed. The scene could be more normal. Rose lounging about the couch, watching the morning news, the sound of traffic outside heading off to work, and me stumbling around, pulling up on the last of my clothes as the morning lessons loom. One thing is different now, though. Just thinking about what happened last night makes my heart race, but I have no idea what's supposed to happen after something like that. What happens when I see Eileen again? How close I meant to be with her, now that we're going out. Then there's the kiss itself, playing over and over in my mind. The feeling of her soft lips on mine, the way she looks so flustered afterwards. Ow! Sharp pain from my shin brings me back to the real world, bending down to rub my poor leg, revealing the cause, and be walking into a chair. The feeling of embarrassment is <laughs> helped by Rose looking over in concern. You okay? Nothing, just bumped my leg. Not sick or something, are you? You're even more clumsy than usual today. I'm fine, just didn't sleep much last night. Oh, my nose is getting stuffed up again. Jesus. Time like this that normally being a morning person doesn't pay off, I shrug off her concern as best I can, distracting myself by throwing on my clothes to prepare for the chill outside. Just take it easy, all right? The w ice is bad enough out there already. I will. Walk down the road towards the campus does give me good, does me good, giving me time for my mind to settle and get back to the daily routine. Not everything is quite the same, though my footsteps feel light, and what's typically an arduous walk feels unusually easy. I'm not quite dancing in the streets, but the day feels just a little brighter than usual. It's nice. The snowfall's been getting heavier now that it's December. I pass a few people standing outside buildings, which looking mournfully at their roofs. While looking mournfully at their roofs, plotting on how to dislodge the snow, <laughs> dislodge the snow piled on top. The traffic's 
all slow to a crawl, rolling by carefully. As for Christmas sales on television, I'm into full swing by now, which reminds me that I should get my shopping done when I have some free time. God. When I have some free time, I think I could scrape together enough money to buy a little something for everyone in my family. Then there's Christmas cards for my new friends here, not to mention organizing a trip home for the break. Christmas is meant to be relaxing, but it feels like there's so much to organize for it. Welcome to adulthood. Sucks. <laughs> for Christmas. Coming up to campus, I tried to focus my thoughts back on to school for the time being. Thankfully, the paths here are better cleared, if nothing else. As students file in past the gate, my heart skips a beat as I recognize a particular blonde girl. She looks back and notices me as I skip up to meet her, her usual tired expression unwavering. I've never met someone so far from a morning person. Morning! Hey, Allison. With that, the both of us begin to walk in side by side. All thoughts of school work leave my mind as I try to stop myself glancing at Aline, furtively trying to work out exactly how I'm expected to act around her. The part where we admitted we're interested in each other is also where most of the romance movies I've seen end, and I've never gone out with anyone before. Then there's the fact that neither of us have said a word to the other beyond a quick greeting. I try to comfort myself with the thought that it's probably the same for Eileen too. It's always hard, so hard to read her poker face. Good grief, it's cold today. She's not thinking at all about yesterday, is she? With a long breath, it feels like all my restlessness leaves me. Eileen's relaxed attitude makes me feel embarrassed for getting so worked up after seeing her again. How are you so confident about this, you know, with us going out and everything? I'm just really good at faking it. In my head, I give up on ever trying to read her. The grin Eileen gives me makes me feel better about today in an instant. Her normally cold demeanor, if just for a moment, is pierced by the sincere smile that peeks through. A smile which soon evaporates, collapsing into something else entirely. Is something wrong? I just remembered something troublesome. Crease. I almost ask why before the obvious hits me. My thoughts finally moving beyond the girl at my side, the implications of this all became clearer. Should we just tell her? I'd rather not. You know Caprice as well as I do. I don't want her to make a fuss about us getting together. Then again, she'll probably work it out herself. She's not stupid. She knows to pay attention if I'm serious. Besides, is there really that much harm in letting her be happy for us? My serious tone and defense of Caprice seems to catch Eileen off guard. Catching me a little off guard, too. Fine, if you're going to tell her, then, I want to be there, too. The discussion comes to an end, yet I find myself not wanting to leave despite having nothing further to say in particular. Seems Eileen has the same problem as she awkwardly mills about, the chatting students passing around us, only making the silence between us more pointed. Would it be okay to kiss her here now? Yesterday in the park, we did it without thinking. Eileen's always so awkward about physical affection that I'm not sure she'd like it, especially in public. What I'm thinking must have been plain to see as Eileen reaches down, placing her hand on top of my head and scruffing it around in response. It might be an odd way for her to show her feelings, but I can't say I hate the gesture. I feel my cheeks blushing as her head, hand rubs my head, enjoying every moment until she stops. Eileen's awkwardness around all of this makes me feel a little a little better about my own uncertainty. Everything will work out fine, I'm sure of it. Ever the octopus. We better get to classes. See you at the club, I suppose. She sure doesn't seem to share my optimism as she waves and walks off, nor my like of our new club. I'm sure she'll come around, though. Oh, we're still in part two. I really love this game, but it, it is long. With the afternoon wearing on, I trudge up the familiar route to the second floor of the arts building. The sound of Ray's voice is coming up um, from up ahead, easily audible in the otherwise dead silent hallways. If I'm not mistaken, they're coming from the art room itself, stilling myself for what's to come. I sigh and head up, on up to the door so inside. Eileen and Caprice have 
Already arrived as usual, each standing on the opposite side of the table as they fume at each other. Their heads snap towards me in unison the moment the door rattles open, making my heart skip a beat. Yes? Help me talk some sense into this woman, please. Just relax. As our club of president, I have everything under control. Everything except the club part. I mean, I would have thought a club needed things like official paperwork and advisor, funding for supplies that haven't been pilfered from the real art classes. Basically more than an excited proclamation of a club existing. That's why I'm working on the posters. Feeling sorry for the heavily sighing Eileen, my eyes drift to the said posters, lying on the table between them. I walk over and tentatively take a look at the one sitting on top, its sharp graphics and color scheme catching the eye. The new art club. <laughs> they do look nice. Gosh. See, people will love them. I may say that, but it's a little obvious that this is out of her comfort zone. When it comes to art, her sketching is always nice, but her work with paints comes off a little crude. Still, trying new things is to be praised. Think about this logically. It's near Christmas. All the students are going to be a break soon. Even if they weren't, nobody would be looking for a club to join around now anyway. I wouldn't exactly say that. Caprice is quick on the draw. She leans over and latches onto my shoulder, becoming a sm beaming a smug look of victory at her opponent. I feel like I've been reduced to a useful prop in the argument, but Caprice is wrong. Caprice isn't wrong. <laughs> Eileen looks physically pained as she grows in her frustration. She didn't walk right into that one. What could only be interpreted as a universal sign of giving up, she shakes her head and starts to walk away, retreating to the cabinet to grab her things. Looks like posters will be the accomplishment of today, as far as club goes. I suppose it doesn't hurt to try and draw in some more members. Hopefully we can get them soon too. I wanted to have another club outing and the more the merrier. And like I declared, we're going to make the pizza place a regular thing for the club. I'm up for it. Eileen looks drearily as the, at the traitor to her cause, but knows her goose is cooked as she hangs her head. I swear she looks more tired than usual. You're stressed out, man. Then it's settled. The priest goes back to fussing over her posters, brushing off some of the specks of dust so that that have settled on the paint. Her bags under her eyes, they get more pronounced, it looks like. Taking advantage of the distraction, I look to Eileen. She grimaces as I pointedly flick my eyes back to our companion, plainly hoping to leave this for another day by her reaction. Reluctantly, Eileen sets her paints down and plods back over like a child, accepting her bitter medicine. In hindsight, perhaps she was trying to use her painting as an excuse to not deal with this. Caprice is one of my few friends, however. I feel bad hiding this from her. Even if we try to, she just poke and poke until one of us eventually spilled the beans. What's up with you two? Caprice, there's something we need to tell you. To make this absolutely clear, this does not leave the room. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. I'll bet. Eileen and I have started... I mean, it just happened recently, but we're going out. Feel Eileen take my hand in hers. I worry for a second about the sweatiness of my palm, but feeling her hand closing around mine sells my nerves. I never realized how warm someone's hand could feel. As her fingers tighten, I realize something else. Eileen's settling herself just as much as me. Eh? Like dating? So you guys are both? Yeah. Ooh. My guess that Caprice wouldn't go too wild turns out to be true, with her surprise feeling a little exaggerated for effect. Well then, aren't you glad you can do art all together all the time now? Look, we don't need any help, much less help from you. But... It's alright, I appreciate what you've done. Just don't go too crazy helping things along, promise? Promise! 
Sounds like things are lively in here. Our gaze snaps towards the doorway. Excuse me. Wall strolling in with an expression more bored than in the least bit surprised. Eileen's hands let go of mine, but the warmth remains as I reflexively fill my hand with the other to recount the sensation. God, Eileen is a more collected person than I am, calmly playing off the interruption. Just as she's about to greet him, though, Millie slides around his large figure and into the room. Millie, you're here! You're looking cheerful today. We just finished our club work, so thought we'd pop by. So you're in the white riding club too, Wallace? Only for now. Only until I graduate from this place. I'm not joining this club, no matter how many times you ask. You make it sound like being here is some horrible fate. I smile a little at Eileen suddenly finding some pride in my club. Now that someone's spoken against it. As for what I actually came here for, Haley was wanting us to join her for takeout. Alright, takeout, lead the way. Millie gives us a polite wave goodbye as Caprice skips over to her pick up her hoodie on the way out. Fortunately for Caprice, Eileen doesn't let her go so easily. And your club? Uh today's our club meeting is over. Good work, everyone! With a thumbs up from Caprice, the two disappear out the door and head off down the hallway. Three of us are left to our own devices as the, after they leave. While I think Wallace to be a perfectly nice person, I'm not really sure how to act around him. Caprice no longer being the center of attention, the familiar self-consciousness I have around strategies flares up once again. It seems I'm not alone and quite not knowing what to say. Wallace and Eileen doing a little more than awkwardly mill around. Given that they're good friends, it makes me think something is going on. Um, I've told her, Wallace, you don't need to keep your mouth shut anymore. As he lets out a sigh of relief, it finally clicks. Wait, you knew about Eileen and I? Eileen, yes. Not you, though. Going by the fact that didn't, by the fact this didn't just come, become intensely awkward, I'm going to say things worked out. Eileen takes my opposite shoulder and shakes me slightly, lightly. Seems so. Well, I'm happy for you two. Hope it works out. Thanks. Told you I'd find someone who could put up with me. That's not the kind of thing you should say about yourself. Guess I'll get out of your way then. Just take things easy, okay? We will. Give each other goodbyes before he leaves, his unmistakably large figure slowly disappearing down the orange lit hallway. And then there were two. I thought you didn't want to tell anyone. Wallace is different. He's known I like girls since we were in high school. He's known I like you for a while now, too. I feel myself blush. The thought of that I would even talk to Wallace about me like that makes me smile. I suppose we better home, head home, too, given the club meetings over. Guess so. An obvious invitation for us to leave together, but I find my feet stuck. I know I'll see her again tomorrow, but... Something on your mind? I don't really know how to phrase this, but what happens now? The expression she gives is one of gender with thought rather than judging me for being lost. So lost. It's only now that I wonder if this is actually her first relationship or not. If it is, this makes... That makes my confusion a little bit, a lot more embarrassing. That's up to you as much as it is me, you know. I guess school has got us for the week, but how about we go on a, for a date on Saturday? Be good to get some use out of the car for once. Yes, that would be good. I mean, uh, yes, let's do that. I can drive us, so just give me a heads up once you get, you've worked something out. As I consider the prospect, I can see a little excitement from Eileen at the idea of going on her first date, though I doubt she'd realized it herself. The silence settles in the room. I see my chance. Kiss her. Allison? Oh, handhold. Eh, close enough. Taking Eileen's hands in mine and raising myself to my toes, I close my eyes and let my chin push forward. Hey, we're doing it. 
My heart fails to stop for a fleeting moment, my lips gently, pr gently pressing to Eileen's as her hands intertwine. As our lips part and I come back down, my heart makes up for lost time. Come to think of it, I guess that's the first time I've ever kissed somebody myself. I have to admit, the physical side of us being together is nice, even if it is awkward. I can't help but feel the sensation lingering despite the moment having passed, filling my, me with warmth. Even Eileen, so normally placid and stoic, looks flushed. The two of us end up standing around like complete dorks, the only one, only sound being the trees rustling outside. I've been wanting to do that since this morning. I swear you're getting bolder by the day. With a gentle smile, Eileen reaches over and rubs my hair. Even if I still don't know how to react when she does so, I can feel my head leaning into it and a grim, dumb grin spreading on my face. Ah, oh, that was nice. Such a happy relationship. With the day wearing on, I let out a badly hidden yawn as I leave the cafeteria. I clutch my bag tightly as I walk, both from the cold and trying not to take up too much space given all the people milling about. I can't help but eavesdrop on the conversation around me as I walk, the building humming with activity. One conversation from the groups idling about catches my ear, the chatter about same girls about their plans to be with their families again for the holidays. It makes me excited for Christmas all over again. As I push through the heavy door and step outside, I wonder if Eileen would be as eager. The fact she doesn't get on with her parents is a worry, but surely they can't be too bad if they're paying for her to live in such a place. For all I enjoy Christmas, it doesn't sound like Eileen has much reason to. Some vibration from my pocket grabs my attention, my hand instinctively diving to pluck my phone out. She hasn't admitted it, but I think Eileen's enjoying playing with her new toe. Boy. Hey, I'm in the coffee shop if you want to meet me. If you want to meet. I quickly text her in agreement and hit send as I step off the stairs, dodging a student I nearly bump into as I do. If only I had an extra set of eyes so I could use this while walking very easily. Gosh. Heading toward the cafe, I muse on how normal things still feel. I'm happy for us. Being together, of course, yet life goes on. She enters my thoughts more and more these days. My schoolwork chores around home and the club don't stop. One thing has changed though. I feel more sure of myself than ever. Knowing what my own feelings are is oddly liberating. The rush of warmth as I step through the door makes my shoulders slump in relief. Thank goodness for the interior heating being cranked right up. It doesn't take long to notice Eileen sitting at a table with her coat and scarf in her lap. Fully staring out the window to pass the time. Walking up, I noticed not one, but two coffees sitting on the table before her. <laughs> hey. Hi, Eileen. Is someone else with you? Eileen's apathetic expression barely changes as she turns to see me sit before her. I'm a little disappointed, but I know her well enough by now to expect it. She's not the type to show her emotions easily. The second's for you. You helped me out earlier with my life with life drawing with life drawing, so I wanted to return the favor. It's fine, you don't need to repay me. So that doubt was still lingering on her mind, huh? Now that she bought it from me though, I suppose I can't exactly say no. The coffee proves too hot, as I bring it near my mouth, so I settle for blowing on it a bit. How's your day been? Good, I mean normal I guess. I might think everything's still normal, but my nerves around Eileen haven't quite settled yet. We've only been together a matter of days. I gingerly take a sip of to calm myself. Calm myself down before continuing. Physics was good, kind of basic right now, but I think we're going to get to some interesting stuff next year. So what are you doing? Trying to stay awake mainly. What a day. Caprice, you're getting too good at this. I just awkwardly smile. As I do, my eyes drift to the side after a sh noticing a sharply dressed familiar figure 
breeze into the cafe and up to the corner. Eileen follows my gaze, an eyebrow lifting. Oh, it's that mechanic girl. She's appalling with names. She's Millie, you should at least remember who fixed your car. Do you want to talk to her or something? You keep looking at her. Uh, well, I don't want to annoy her. She might be busy. I barely know her anyway. Eileen looks at me for a moment, unimpressed. I used every excuse from the book to not bother Millie, too. Then again, I suppose that's the problem. Hey, Millie. I shrink in my seat at Eileen's casual calling out across the cafe, taken completely off guard. Millie turns towards the source of her name, giving her usual calm smile upon recognizing us. See, it's not that hard. This is a good, good opportunity to know her better. Millie takes her coffee as the barista slides it across the counter before strolling over and daintily taking a step at her seat at her table. Good afternoon, Allison Eileen. Afternoon, welcome to Friday. Finally so, yes. Any plans for the weekend? Eileen and I exchanged a brief glance. Both of us were looking forward to the plans we made for Saturday, but they're still the day after. Depends on the weather. I was thinking of heading out to the mountains with Wallace if it's not too bad. As Eileen takes a long drink of her coffee, the majestic mountain ranges and foothills around the city float to mind. They'd be freezing cold this time of year, but she seems to be made of stern stuff. I hadn't taken her for the outdoorsy type, though. That sounds nice. Hiking? Eileen shakes her head as she sets down her cup. We brought some permits for deer, deer hunting. Deer hunting? As in killing them? Bambi, no! She stares at me for a moment before look, tr looking downward, trying to make sense of the words. It takes an awfully long time for her to formulate a response. Well, we don't pet them. Wallace taught me how to shoot down at range, at a range, and I take a loner whenever we head out. So that's what Wallace gets up to outside of the riding club. I did wonder about that. It's nice that they found a way to bond as friends, but to think of a big, proud deer lying dead on the grass. You know now where meat from goes from an animal into a look pretty little package at the super pumpkin, don't you? Of course I do, but I wouldn't want to personally involve myself at that level. Is that the point of a big day? Of a big day out for them? I have to admit, I'm a little jealous of how they share this whole little world, but I don't think I could ever be a part of it. Millie reads the room quickly as I take another sip of my coffee. And you planned yourself, Allison? Nothing so exciting, just shopping for groceries. Sounds like my weekend plans. I'm the only one of my roommates with a car, so it's easier, easiest if I do the groceries myself. Speaking of roommates, what are your thoughts of the new club of Caprices? At first, I thought it was just a diversion, but she really does want her art club to work out. She's talked a lot about you two as well, actually. Eileen and I look at, at each other, to each other in concern, really offering no further explanation beyond an, an indulgent smile. For all I tease her, I'm sincerely glad to see Caprice so happy. She shines brightest when she has something to work on. It's nice to see Millie care so much. They strike me as a caring... Strike me as caring for each other more as, as more than other roommates, almost as sisters or such. While I still feel the familiar pangs of homesickness from time to time, I'm finally seeing that sometimes family is more than who you grow up with. We are, we all have people around to support us and help in what we set ourselves to doing. A ping from Millie's phone rings out. Eileen and I going silent as she hastily takes it from her coat pocket. The resigned frown sun spreading on her face shows it's not good news. Noticing our concerned expression, she soon moves to allay our worries. Sorry, I have to go. Affairs in my own club need attention. Sometimes I wonder why I do this to myself. I ask myself that question all the time. Take it easy. Take care in the snow is starting to pile up. I'll make sure to. See you around. The two of us waver off. 
Millie quickly doubling back to fetch her still full cup and take it with her. A brief silence ensues between the two of us as, as we sip at our own. The quiet chatter of our other students and staff at the club, at the cafe, providing background noise as we do. Sorry for being so weird about the hunting, that is. I was shooting my mouth off. Forgot you liked animal and that sort of, animals and that sort of thing. I didn't take you for liking the great outdoors. Being stuck indoors all the time is easy to do when focusing on painting, but it gets stifling after a while. It'd be nice to take a trip somewhere to, with Eileen, to the mountains or wherever else, seeing the places she likes to go, and how it influences her art. Probably not to go hunting, though. Millie's nice. Keeps the riding club go keeping the riding club going sounds like a lot of work. See, could have never had that nice chat if I hadn't called her over. You could stand to be a bit more social, you know. You're a good person, and you get on perfectly fine with most. I'm flattered by what she's saying, but I'm not sure exactly how to put it that into practice. Without a reply forthcoming, Eileen gives a flustered sigh. Allison, why do you think I joined this dumb club? When she mentions it like that, I realize I never g did give her a compelling reason. Caprice and I just pushed up it on her until she broke her, at least that's how I understood it. I actually thought about joining the existing art club for a while back when they first offered. They seemed interested in me, and I was just a, some bewildered freshman who didn't know anything at that point. Over time, I realized they didn't give a damn about me. They just wanted my paintings and my skills. I was a trophy for their club, something to show off. That was when I gave up on them. So you joined this one because Caprice was better? She's the last person I'd do this for. I joined this club for you, Allison. You just wanted to hang out while I did my thing. I like that. There were no mental games and no need to worry about ulterior motives. I had something, someone to share my interests with. That's all I really wanted. It worked out pretty well in the end. I got someone to share my love of painting with and thought that maybe the club would help you open up a bit. She joined for my sake as well as her own. I awkwardly fiddle with my coffee cup, trying to think of how to reply as my cheeks flush. I don't know what to say. Well, I do. We need to get to class. Raising an eyebrow at the change of topic, I grab my phone to check the time. I really had completely lost track of time while relaxing here with Eileen. I quickly jump from my seat, pushing it in as Eileen collects her things and swings her scarf around her. Uh oh, we're late. Ah, uh, chemistry is just about to start. What classes do you, did you have? Yeah. Math. Math. All energy dissipates, dissipates from the situation as I pat her shoulder in sympathy. <laughs> Hang in there, Eileen. <laughs> oh, Lord. The elephant's mighty trumpeting sends a couple of children scurrying away with giggles of laughter. The animal is excited about the crowd, small crowd watching on as they are of him. Stepping back from the enclosure and joining Eileen once more, the two of us walk on. Even as we brought, bought our tickets, I'd be, I wonder if coming here during winter was such a good idea. It turned out to be better than I could have hoped. I've never been here with so few people around. Usually this is a complete madhouse. It's nice. As we stroll on, Eileen takes my hand as, in hers as we walk. Weird how such a simple gesture can make me feel so warm, my cheeks hurting against a smile. I've seen it done in so many romantic movies, but actually feeling someone take my hand in theirs is so unexpectedly comforting. You're easy to please. Without any real idea of how to respond, all I can do is keep walking. Maybe I should find it off-putting that Eileen's so calm about this sort of thing compared to me. But I think I might even prefer it. She see feels reliable. I think level-headed. How did or not? It's nice too. You've never been here before? Considering I've only been in this city since college started. Not really. 
Wait, where do you come from then? Russia. My family immigrated a few years ago. Still get so still getting used to how things work around here. The question of whether she was a native has generally never occurred to me. She doesn't have any kind of accent, so I ne would have never have thought of it. If she's Russian, I couldn't tell at all. That was a lie. Oh. I can't tell if she meant for it to be a joke. Her expression makes it obvious she didn't expect me to actually fall for it. Too late to laugh to hell, and I just feel stupid for not questioning her. I'm actually from around here, but moved to Colorado when I was a kid. I never had much interest in zoos. Oh, so we're in Colorado. I've been to Colorado. Oh, or maybe I misread that. Colorado, huh? But why would you come back here? Okay. Moved out to my, f moved out from my folks' place to make my own path, have my own home, partner, life, and all that. But she was moved so far away from her family, especially to live in her apartment alone. It's too hard, hard to imagine, considering how hard it's been for me. Having problems with fam her family is one thing, but jumping states to get away from them. Left wondering if I should delve into the topic any further. Eileen speaks up as we leave the savannah area. Few people around the zoo seems to be congregating around the eating area ahead, which is a good sign we should grab some lunch too. Hungry? Just a bit. To be honest, I just need a rest. Eileen's pace is unrelenting, yet she looks fine despite how ragged I am. I don't understand it. I'll go grab something then. Go grab us a seat a seat for us. They're all before they're all take aren't you? Roger. Priest's speech patterns are rubbing up on you. We both share a grimace at the idea before we part. Eileen's heading for the hot food stall. Ahead as I skip down to one of the two unused table on the outside of the seating area. I practically fall into the hard metal seat, watching the condensation from my breathing rise into the air as I recover myself. Nothing else, at least going out with Eileen, will do wonders for my fitness. Several couples in line ahead of her, Eileen crosses her arms and patiently waits. I can't help but let my eyes set on her as she does. Ever since we met, I've noticed how beautiful she is. Her order made... I'm a little impressed at her managing to bring the sodas and hot dogs over in one trip with some very careful use of her fingers. Hungry from all the walking, I quickly slide mine towards me as she sets him down and takes a seat. How much was my share? It's fine, don't worry. You already bought my ticket. I said it's fine, besides, it's nice to dote so on someone. She puts it like that, it's hard to argue with her. Letting Eileen have her way, I start, my f start on my food. Allow, uh, man, I need this part two break so fast because I my nose is killing me and I'm thirsty. <laughs> oh, a loud bird squawks in the distance. It's call reaching out right across the entire zoo. I've always liked the strange and unfamiliar sound you get in a place like this compared to the relative quiet of the apartments and the routine sounds of school. As comfortable as Eileen looks, packing up her quickly finished hot dog and soda and pitching them into a nearby bin, I can't quite seem to settle down. Thankfully, she's willing to take charge, given that I have no idea what I'm doing or how to act. Enjoying yourself? Ah, yes. I really need to settle down. At least she doesn't seem to be too harsh on me for my nervousness. But it's plainly obvious this is my, that this is my first date. That's good. That's good. I'm not sure what to make of you when you climb up. Climb up. I'm just not used to this. It, as you are. What makes you think that? You've never gone out with someone before? Do I look like I have? I almost blurt out a rather blunt answer. Uncompromising is definitely the word for her, but that doesn't mean she couldn't have had a girlfriend before me. Especially at our age, come to think of it, I at least I had the excuse of being a bit shy and focusing myself on schoolwork. Eileen says she's said herself she's known since at least high school. Excuse me. 
Holly brings her head down, resting her chin on her arms as they lay on the table. I'm dumbstruck as she looks up at me with those tired eyes of hers. For what it's worth, I'm glad you're my first. You're a sweet girl. That look she gives me a single hand that look she gives me single-handedly explains why people do all this dating business. For one brief moment, it feels like the two of us are really in sync as we look into each other's eyes. Oh god, the bird attacked. <laughs> Only for a small a moment, though, before a small bird suddenly lands on the table between us. Its head darts this way and that. But it doesn't seem to be in the least bit shy about parking itself in front of Eileen's startled face. Well now, hello there. Ah, little fox sparrow, it's so cute. Even my excited whispers don't seem to bother the little thing leading to me gingerly, gingerly breaking off a little of my hot dog bun and trying to feed it. While a little too timid to outright take the food from my fingers, it seems quite happy to pick a few pick a, a few sprinkles of butt I left leave before it on the table. Eileen seems content to simply watch our little companion. You know what it's actually called? It's orange and white after it all after all. That would make it easy to remember. As a slightly chubby bird busies itself becoming a little chubbier, I feel my cheeks hurting from smi my smiling. You really like animals, don't you? I pause a little but quickly start feeding again as the bird looks at me expectantly. If our little friend lives around the zoo, it's obvious how it could be so tame. Came so tame. We've always had pets back home, so I grew up around them. Your family keeps getting bigger and bigger. Must have been a hard chance change when you moved out. Having apparently had its fill, the bird spreads its wings and flies off at surprisingly speed. At surprisingly speed for its weight. I wave as it goes, my hot dog the worst for wear, thanks to me pick my picking at the bun. Bye bye. You're a dork. I laugh off her jab before returning to our conversation. It was hard when I left, yeah. I have a new family though, now now though. You, Caprice, Rose, and everyone else? Ah, I met at college. Yeah, a real family. Disappointingly, Eileen looks rather skeptical at the idea. Then again, she doesn't seem to get on that well with anyone besides Wallace and I. I was always an optimist, I guess. Nothing wrong with that. Maybe some of it will rub, rub off on me. Eileen picks herself up from the table, giving a big stretch as she does. For a moment, we just look at each other, simply appreciative of the fact that we're here together. Hey, Allison? Yeah? She picks herself off, up a little off the chair. In order to lean across the table, it becomes obvious what she's doing. Relaxed enough to let her get away with a quick peck, I close my eyes and lean forward and... A little in anticipation, my heart beating just a little faster. As the feeling of her tongue hits my cheek, my body suddenly freezes up as a shiver runs down my spine. I hear myself giving a weird subtle gasp before I reflexively fall back into my chair. Eileen looked rather nonplussed as she settles back into her own chair, her eyes studying me as she does. What was that? You just had mustard on your cheek. And I was maybe bullying you a little. I feel my face flower into a wild blush as I grimace at her, partly for her betrayal after my expectation of a perfectionate gesture, partly for startling me so badly. I don't know how quite how to read Riley's interesting expression. I, I don't care to ask as I sulk. I am generally a little mad at her, but I don't think it's getting through. I'm still not used to the physical side of all this. Letting out a mute snort and picking herself up from her seat, Eileen dusts herself off and gets ready to go. Come on, Miss Pouty Lips, let's get moving before the weather gets bad. As Eileen closes the door to the apartment, I let my coat drop to the floor as I collapse over the back of her couch in exhaustion. How this girl can keep up such a pace for her whole day is totally beyond me. Even now, she doesn't seem to be too bothered. The only sign she's 
tired at all being stretched after she takes off her scarf and coat. All being some stretching, yeah. Haven't collapsed on me, have you? I'm dead. You can have my stuff. Better check before digging your the grave. Remember how they used to do that? Sticking a big pin into a toe to see if they wake woke up from the pain? Look at that, I'm suddenly alive. The Christmas miracle. As she busies herself behind me, my eye is drawn to her entertainment cabin cabinet that the television is sitting on. With curiosity getting the better of me and perhaps to distract my wandering mind, I walk around behind the couch and press the right door to pop pop it open. I'm hardly surprised that the movies inside are all perfectly organized, but the genres she's collected are strange. You want a coffee or something while you rummage through my stuff? I'm not rummaging, I'm just... I try to think of another word to describe what I'm doing, but it doesn't take long to realize Eileen's right. Looking like, looking like a kid caught with her hand in the cookie jar, she walks back over. I try to change subject topics. Do you really like westerns or something? They're all either those or documentaries. Sorry to disappoint, I just like westerns. Can't beat a nice simple plot with a good guy drifting drifting into town. Getting over one over on the bad guy and walking into the sunset. Nice landscapes, too. Right, that makes sense. Something fell off as we stand around in her apartment and chat, but it's hard to put my finger on it. The silences are just a little too long. The chatter, nothing more than small talk. We've never, we've usually never needed. Here we are, the evening after a date, and filling the time in time, milling about her quiet apartment. Even the usual background noise of passing cars and busy tenants I hear around my home are nowhere to be heard. Just the two of us shuffling about alone. The thought of sharing a night with Eileen has passed my mind more than once. Even if I have tried to distract myself from her. Is it too early? Would she think I'm weird? I don't even know how you even bring it up. Without any reason to, I idly fiddle with Eileen's movie collection and read the covers occupied. You know our date doesn't have to end now. As her words trail off, my heart freezes. Her stoic face only makes it this worse. My brain freezing between bashfulness and shock at her being so blunt. We've only started dating, but the thought of sleeping together had passed my mind. Left spluttering about, I awkwardly turn away to hide my expression. Do you want to watch one of them together? Do what you want. I'm going to take a shower. Right, I'll just get a drink. George! As she leaves, I wander over to the kitchen and grab a glass, pouring some orange juice for myself to try and refocus. My heart's still racing. The thought of what Eileen suggests is still playing on my mind. I wonder if I should really be letting Eileen take care of me so much. She doesn't seem to mind at all, but that's not really the problem. Even now, she suggests that we do what I did want to try, and I couldn't even bring myself to just accept. I want to get closer to her, but it feels like everything's happening at her pace. Then again, Eileen's not the only person in my life I've let dote on me, and I go with the flow with the, of others. The door from the bathroom is open as I set down the empty glass, but the words are stolen from my mouth as I walk over to talk with her. Allison? Uh, were you getting close? I I'm sorry. My face burns hot as I stammer out the words, but she only steps closer. She takes my hands to stop me from moving away, holding them softly. Her face is so close to mine. I can feel her breathing. Her eyes look into my questioning. Suddenly, the thought of even a kiss makes my head light. All I can do is nod a tiny nod, which is enough for her to close the distance, kissing me more deeply than she ever has before. My heart races as her tongue touches mine, teasing it just a little before pulling back. I can hardly breathe by the time we separate, left clutching my chest and taking a deep breath to try and regain myself. It looked like you didn't get it, so I decided to be more blunt. Ooh. With our excitement over, the two of us had a shower to clean up before settling in for the night. 
enveloped in a soft and loving warmth as Eileen cuddles me. I almost want to nod off already as she gently strokes the back of my head. Given how cold she could be towards others, it's a real surprise she's so physically intimate. I have to admit that I like the sight of Eileen snuggling into her body as I think so. I love you, Eileen. I know. <laughs> That's not what you're supposed to say. Alright, alright, I love you too. Even a few weeks ago, I never imagined I'd be sleeping with someone. We won't see each other for a while, so we have to make the most of our time before the holidays. Oh yeah, I'd forgotten about that and all the excitement. It'll be nice to see everyone again, but there's a ping of disappointment that I can't be with Eileen more. You'll be going to stay with your family, right? Yeah, Colorado's not bad, so at least it'll be a nice change of scenery. It'll be nice to see my sister again, too. As Eileen thinks about her faraway family, I'm reminded of my own. I've been excited to go back home for the holidays for weeks now, but with her gone... You okay? I'll be fine. I just wish I could go with you. Sorry? As a plan forms in my head, I try to summon the strong, same strong will she and Caprice have. I'd like to be with you over the break. Could I come? Aww. Eileen looks unsure of what to say. I wonder if she's trying to decipher if I'm making a serious suggestion or not. Even I don't know. And you talk about me going fast. Didn't you want to see your own family really badly? I do, but they won't be back home right away. I'll go back for Christmas. I just... I don't want to be alone until then. Looks taken aback. I suddenly find I'm actually arguing for this instead of merely voicing a whim. I'm not really sure about this. You've never been outside the city, let alone the state. Then there's the fact you'll be in a house full of strangers. I coped with moving to into Rose's apartment, and I'll be with you. After how much you've helped me until now, I'm sure I'll be fine. He tries to stare me down, but I've managed to find an internal willpower in some corner of myself I didn't know existed. Eventually, thankfully, Eileen lets out a long, tired breath. <sighs> Fine, you win. You can come. Thank you. Just don't try to fix any things, okay? As I snuggle into her warmth with the grim of victory, Eileen silently smiles as she pats my head once more. Da, da, da. We still haven't broken part two, boys. We're not even into part three yet. The classroom lies silent, save for the scratching of pencil against paper. I've already finished my math test. The unwillingness to be the first to turn it in being the only thing keeping me glued to my task. I'm thankful for the chance to rest, though. Eileen's pace as we scooted around the zoo took all my effort to keep up with. And then there was the other business we got up to. <laughs> the other business. Some, some, someone finally brings the paper to the front. Other students follow suit soon after. Look at that emoji back there. I quickly joined them, eagerly placing my test on the teacher's desk and packing my things afterwards. Last final of the semester now over, I can, I'm ready to go home and to see Eileen one last time before she leaves Colorado. Hey! The loud voice from behind makes me jump and startle me. Oh, Caprice, hey! My heart slowly moves out of my throat, with Caprice and I starting off together towards the art club. I consider asking Eileen if we could walk back to get her apartment together instead, but I couldn't leave without saying my goodbyes to Caprice and Wallace if I could find him. What brings you to my class anyways? Millie wasn't around, so I got lonely. So I'm the second choice, huh? Well, at least I can be around for her. You two really are close, aren't you? Yep, we grew up together, and now we you can live together. Millie and me and Haley, she's our friend, our other friend. We take good care of each other. There really are all kinds of relationships. It's so different from my school, where everyone was neatly organized into friends, classmates, or strangers, and we all just lived with our parents. Do you have a roommate? What are they like? I live with a family friend. 
I'd live with a family friend. She's nice even if she looks a bit rough. I have the apartment to myself a lot, though. The statement seems to give Caprice food for thought. You shouldn't look so tired. School's finally over for the year. And that's why we're having an extra special art club meeting. Extra special? You'll see what I mean. I have a feeling she's working this out as she goes along. I still can't decide if I like that spontaneity of hers. It's endearing, but there's no sense of stability to her like Eileen has. As we head towards the art building, we spot Eileen just outside, busy huffing into her hands and rubbing them together for a little warmth. It takes a bump for her to notice us. Eileen, hi. As she looks up in my direction, I notice her shoulders relax a little. It wasn't long ago that I only ever saw Eileen tense and on guard, but now she reflexively relaxes around me. It's nice. For her part, Caprice just bowls on her head, on her head without a care in the world. Hey! Eileen tenses right back up as she sees my companion, the moment lost. Still, I'm left rather happy at the effect I have on Eileen, whether she notices it or not. Afternoon, you two. Caprice, why are you looking at me like that? It's creeping me out. Caprice grabs onto both our shoulders and, to my surprise, directs us away from the arts building. We've had a, we've had a change of plans. Do I get a say in this? Once again, Caprice either doesn't hear or chooses to ignore the question. Oh gosh. <laughs> By the time we arrive at my apartment and shrink our, shirk our coats, it's already dark enough to flick the lights on as we enter. Apart from the sound of passing cars, the only sounds are Caprice's is exaggerated into the sounds of thoughtful inspection. Eileen raises an eyebrow as Caprice whips out her phone to take a photo of her for posterity. The item disappearing into her pants pocket almost as quickly as it appeared. Will you just leave that thing? You've been fiddling with your phone on the way here more than Allison does. Hey. Well, it's true. Caprice gives a thumbs up, but it has the opposite effect, if anything. Her agreement is a little too quick, given how stubborn Caprice usually is. So, Rose isn't here then? She drifts in and out, and I've given up trying to work out any schedule to it. Cool posters. They're my roommates. She's been living here longer than me, so the decorations are all hers. Knock on the door rings out. Four lights tap. Four light taps. Struck with a veteran's timing. Come in, doors unlocked. Huh? What's going on? This is my apartment, you know. Bruce just grins, drawing out a drawing a grimace from Eileen. What did you think I was on my phone up for? I called over some friends. The old door creaks open, with Millie's head peering into the living room. Sure that she's come to the right place, she skips in with the unmistakable figure of Wallace following her like a giant shadow. Millie, have you heard of from Haley? Millie answers as she takes off her coat, Wallace doing the same for his car. She's at home sleeping. Seems like Finals tired her out. She never wants to go anywhere. I don't know this, Haley, but I feel like I can relate. It's not just about finals or going particular places, but being around people is exhausting in itself. Lately, I've been looking forward to it, though, even if it takes a lot out of me. The clinking bottle draws my attention, looking downward, showing a six-pack of bottled beer being carried in one hand and a plastic bag with a couple of brightly colored nacho packets visible inside. Reese looks up to the two, surprised just as I am by the present they brought along. Just a little something for the special event. I can't believe you didn't take the Santa hat they were offering, though. I'm not wearing a Santa hat, Christmas or not. Why not? Would have suited you. Don't you start. So this was Caprice's plan, a party to celebrate the end of the college year. I really would have preferred her to just tell me, but there's also a begrudging respect that she's apparently managed to organize all this during the short trip from college to my apartment. 
I'm about to warn Wallace about Millie casting covenant eyes on his beard, when Eileen leans over and murmurs in my ear. Is a party here going to be a problem for you? It'll be fine, I think. Satisfied with my answer, she steps over to the couch and takes a seat with a sigh, despite my waving off of the concern. I appreciate Eileen's sense of responsibility. As we talk, Wallace sets down the beer with the chips on the table. The priest wastes no time in scooting over and ripping over the, open the bag. Millie's soon following and taking a seat across from her. In fact, she steals one of the beer bottles that does not go unnoticed. Millie. Just the one. It won't hurt, right? Hey, stop hogging all the chips. But I'm hungry. Walsh is sighs, defeated as a two bicker of the food. I feel a little sorry for him, but then he did bring them. Forgiven, he did bring them. Make yourselves at home. Eileen gestures for me to join her, jerking her head, giving up any thought that I could control them. I skip over and take a seat on the cushion next to her. As Eileen turns towards the television, she finds a beer bottle held in her front of her face. Looking up to the smiling Wallace, offering it, she takes it in her hand. Merry Christmas, Eileen. Cheers, same to you. The two clink their bottles together, popping the lids with the bottle opener on Wallace's keychain before Eileen slouches back up to the couch. While well, the thought passes my mind that the last thing I'd want to do one is an alcohol-fueled mess at my place. Those fears are put to rest as the two gently swip, sip away. They're just friends sharing a drink, not party-goers to get as drunk as they can. Looking around the room, this sure is a low-key for a college party. We're just friends drinking and gossiping. It's nice. Far from the wild craziness I expected when I heard tales about college when growing up, guess I fell in with the right crowd. What are you doing hanging out with us losers anyways, Millie? Riding club is not doing anything special? They're doing this and that. Most of them seem to have plans. The leader and his friends are graduating, so it's up to me to keep the ship sailing. Sounds like you're gonna have your hands full next semester then. Always up for a challenge. Hey, Wallace. Grace's excited tone as she wolfs down a mouthful of nostrils fails to amuse him, enthuse him. Remember what we talked about at the pizza place? I mean, about your club and all? No. But. No. Molly grins triumphantly at her friend's expense. I feel a little sorry for Wallace being caught in their rivalry. I'm the only one who notices the creak of the door. My attention wholly focuses on. It as I wonder who's arrived. Part of me worries that Caprice organized for more people and come the girl now bickering with Millie. As the leather clad steps in, everyone in the room suddenly drops to a, a god into a dead silence as they stare back at her, the woman being just as dumbstruck. Stop. I struggle to stifle a chuckle, never having seen Rose act so awkwardly before. Everyone, this is my roommate Rose. Rose, these are my friends from college. The clarification has the attendant effect, everyone relaxing as soon as the words are said. There is some wild party you got going on here. Oh, actually, I'm left wondering what she's doing as she clicks her fingers and drives, dives back from my coat. After a few minutes fishing about, she manages to pluck out my phone. After handing it to me to enter the unlock coast, Rose stands back in the corner of the room and hands, holds it up with both hands. Just gonna take a quick photo for the folks. Bye, guys. Priest and Millie no need, need no further prompting, leaning together, leaning towards each other as Caprice flashes a V and a toothy grin. I simply lean towards Eileen as she does the same as we do. I idly note that this will be our first photo together. As 
Roseburg to the camera and said, I can't stop myself from smiling. I spent so much, so long stressing about how, about being away from my family, but before I knew it, I found myself surrounded by a new one. We might all be a bit odd, but we get along. I found someone to hold dear, and who cares for me? We're all in this together, celebrating life in my little slice of city. I finally made a life that I can call my own. Thank you, everyone. Rose, Caprice, Wallace, even Millie. And especially, Eileen. I love this game. This is so nice. A World Apart Achievement. Act 3, A World Away. Jesus, we are just getting to Act 3. Oh, Act 3. Fuck. Alright, I'll be right back. I gotta blow up for those and get a drink and stuff. Oh, I love this game, but oh, reading so much is hard for me. One thing I hadn't counted on when asking Eileen if I could come over was how large the distances were involved were. I'm already feeling the difference from home. Colorado and Utah might be right next to each other on the map, but all to be seen between them are vast plains of utterly nothing. Kansas. God, I don't know if that's between Utah and Colorado, but Kansas is nothing. There's nothing there unless you're like in Kansas City. With n noon approaching and little else around for miles, as as we motored down the endless strip of tarmac, Rose made the executive decision to chance this place for some lunch. A little chancy for my taste. The faux fifties interior, faux fifties interior, decorated with a mishmash of cheap Americana. But Rose is in her element as she stuffs down another hunk of meat. At least it's quiet beyond the cheerful music, given we have the di diner to ourselves. I barely slept all night, not only at the prospect of seeing Eileen's home, but at this being my first trip so far from my own. Right now, though, I'm just so glad to be free of the motorbike's vibration and noise. I've finally become used to the odd short trip around the city, but this road trip is something else entirely. Ooh. Still getting your bike legs, huh? It's been four hours. Give me a break. Three more to go. He digs in once more as I groan and try to swing my legs back to life. Man, the stakes here are amazing. You're missing out. I think I'll be fine. Take a sip of my milkshake while ga gouging how gauging how best to tackle the huge plate of steaming nachos before me, buried in cheese, sauce, and sour cream. Jalapenos are carefully picked off and sitting on to the side. Ah, oh, snowing again. Snowing everywhere. There's not much to see out here as I glance out the window. Just an endless plain stretching out to the horizon, an enthusiastic welcome sight sign at the otherwise invisible border being all indicated with we entered a different state. I'm not sure what I expected really. I knew there are no rivers or anything defining the border, but it's a different thing to see that for yourself. It's just so arbitrary. A line on the map, nothing more. Far from being any sort of revelation, it just makes me feel rather silly about being sheltered. This all probably barely registered Eileen as she drove along the lonely highway. Rose picks up her phone to check the address I gave her once again, forcing down the correct chunk of meat, the current chunk of steak she's eating with a giant gulp. Still have a while to go, huh? If it's as big, close to the big city as you said, we shouldn't have a problem finding the place. So she's never told you anything about her home, her family? She mentioned her sister once. Scratch at the back of her head as she thinks. I don't mean to pry, but I still don't get why she'd come all the way from outside the state to live in Utah. Not that I have anything against the place, I do like it, but it's not exactly where I'd choose if I were her. But coming here just for a community college, that's the part that gets me. I'm not exactly an artist, but from what you've said, she could probably get a scholarship at a proper college. Sounds like she probably afforded tuition even without one. 
Rose looks to me for answers, but I have none. If she puts it that way, there are vast stretches of Eileen's past that are total black spots for me, to me. She leaves me to stew a little as we eat our respective meals, piping up again as she chews. Remember when you asked me about my family a few weeks ago and I blew you off? I feel like I should probably explain that. Not to get too deep into things, I ended up cutting ties with mom and pop. And given what my family was like, I wanted a clean break from them. Oh, um, I'm sorry for bringing it up. I've made peace with it. Don't worry, my point is... Failing to remember, she started circling her fork in the air. The point of all this was... Right, Eileen. I'm just saying that there might be a reason she's cagey about her personal life. I guess that makes sense. My nod earns a comforting grin. You're a good kid, Allison. I'm sure you'll do fine. In fact, you even taught me a little something. To be honest, I expected it. I expected to be mothering you around when you first arrived to live with me. That you were some kid I already knew everything about. Who I'd be left teaching adult life to. Yeah, I was kind of wrong there. But you've helped me so much. I couldn't have managed without you around. And you've surprised me so much. You made me... <laughs> you made me rethink how much I know about the world and other fel folks as an adult. I got a little arrogant without realizing it. You brought me down to earth. I thought adulthood was about knowing everything, but it's actually about admitting how much you don't know. I want to thank you for teaching me that. That's fine with her explanation. Rose quickly gets back to her precious state. Left in thought, I go get back to my own food. I didn't realize I could have such an impact on another's life, let alone Rose's. I looked up to her so much that I forgot we were both just muddling through life together. Eileen's lived as much of her life in a solitary manner. That maybe opening up to me isn't easy. Maybe she just doesn't want to, given her past experiences. What was I gonna say? Oh. Eileen aside, this trip's probably a good thing. It'll push you out of your own comfort zone a little. You've already grown up in the time I've been bunking with you. Just hang in there, alright? Thanks, I will. Atta girl. Bearing a smile, we get back to our food. All the people I might have ended up with as a roommate, someone like Rose was amongst the last I expected. Maybe she's just the sort of person who was best for me. High speed achievement. Oh, we almost got all the achievements, I think. Oh, we're 6 out of 10. The two of us find ourselves in a surprisingly quaint little corner of America, a heavily forested town with snow-covered pines visible no matter where you look. Woods seem to be the norm for building around here, rather than concrete. I find it quite charming. Actually, I was worried I'd be awkwardly roaming through some manicured slice of suburbia, but this feels closer to a friendly country town, almost something from one of Eileen's westerns. Just give me a call the day before you want to come back, alright? I will, thanks again for all this. I know it's a really long way. Don't worry, it's a nice ride out to here. Anyway, mate, might stick around a bit before heading back. What? You're gonna head back and then come back and get me? Oh, well, I, damn, that's like the ultimate friend. That's all I drive him, bro. As she walks back to her bike, she stops and turns around once more, raising her hand in for farewell. If you ever want to give me a call, go ahead. It's no problem. I'll be seeing you, Allison. Bye, Rose. Thanks for everything. She beams a smile as she gets back on her bike, fitting her helmet before kicking back the stand. With a flick of her wrist and press of her foot, the bike rolls to life, Rose settling off down the road and around the corner out of my sight. I do my best to appear natural as I turn back to the house before me, a shuffle bag of clothes slung over my shoulder. Senior around here is nice. There's a, hardly a crowd. In fact, I'm the only person around at all. Safe. Now that I get a good look at it, Eileen's house sure is big. 
Give me one moment. My eyes slowly scan around as I slowly make my way down the path, front garden path, taking in every detail. I guess being outside the city would make bigger houses a little bit more affordable. With a gulp, I gingerly pressed the doorbells beside the solid oaken door, quickly brushing my clothes with my hands, afterwards to look as presentable as possible. Even as muffled footsteps approach, I'm trying to flick a little snow out of my hair. As Eileen opens the door, I'm greeted by a warm smile. The reflexive reaction at the sight of make me makes me feel better already. Fancy seeing you here. I made it in the end. Enjoy the bike ride? Yeah, it was great. I don't think I managed to make that very convincing. Looking at each other, I think we both realize we're just making small talk. She leans forward, the two of us sharing a momentary kiss before she nods for me to come in. It's strange how much a simple action can feel so nice every time, my heart skipping even from the most gentle peck. I obediently follow her inside, closing the door behind me as I do. Dad, she's here. Eileen's cut off by the sound of the little girl looks distressed. So, Sog footsteps on carpet rapidly approaching. A small figure suddenly dips around the corner of the stairs and out of, into the entrance hallway. Nearly barely straining into Eileen before stopping herself. With both of us taken by surprise, a small girl examines me, likely around 10 by the looks of her. Difficult not to see a bit of Eileen in her face. Hello there. She quickly shuffles behind Eileen in response, her apprehensive face peering out from safety. Eileen just gives a sigh in response. Welcome to the family. <clears throat> Turkey. Turkey. Smell of... Oh, is it a chicken? Okay. Freshly cooked chicken wafts in the air. The skin's still steaming away from an appetizing glint. The line of place down the center of the table hardly lacks for sides either. The potato salad, coleslaw, salad, lettuce, and other greens. While I'm thankful for the luxurious dinner before me, it's a rather quick introduction to the, her family. I can't help but feel intimidated when surrounded by everyone at once. With her father already preparing dinner as Eileen let me in and her mother moved, arriving from work only soon after it was unavoidable. That being the case, here we all are gathered around one big table. While not exactly a mansion, it's obvious Eileen's family lives very comfortably. I'd probably be green with envy at how well off they are. It's not from being so self-conscious of how to act in front of them. I suppose some proper introductions are in order. Now that we're all together, I'm Eileen's father, Andrew, and this is my lovely wife, Elizabeth. A pleasure. And you would be Allison? Oh, um, yes. Allison Merlot. My nerves seem to amuse her father as he gives me a reassuring smile. This isn't a job interview. You can relax. Right. Yeah, sorry. I let out a long breath to try and relax a little, though it doesn't really work. Well now, let's dig in. I'm no chef, but it hopefully shouldn't give you food poisoning. Smiling politely at an attempt to lighten the mood, I start, start to ladle this and that from the large place, my mouth already watering at the prospect of such wonderful smelling food. Rose might be many things, but she isn't a cook. Satisfied with my selection of meat and salads, I pile some potato salad onto my fork. Tentatively have a taste, my reaction seems to draw some smiles. I make progress on the mill, so, but I'm in, so enamored with the food I can't help but keep going. It's nice to see Eileen already made friends in college. Brief panic comes over me as I realize we haven't talked this over. She out to, to her parents? Are we going to play this as simply friends? As I mull over how to handle this, Eileen's voice cuts through. Allison's my girlfriend. I probably should have mentioned that earlier. <laughs> Oh, well, damn. Everything seems to stop for a moment. Yes, you should have. I thought you said having a girlfriend wouldn't be a problem. You know that isn't what I'm talking about. This isn't the first time you've kept us in the dark since moving out. 
I have to admit that I can sympathize with her mother, which puts me in a delightfully awkward spot. Eileen's father makes no attempt to mediate as he eats, which is probably the best approach. I didn't think I need to report back on everything I did. Don't you think this is important enough to warrant a phone call? Neither Eileen nor the, her mother raised their voice, even eating their <laughs> the odd bit of food as they quibble. The argument almost feels routine, which going by her father's reaction might well be the case. Even her sister is still eating, albeit with badly hidden glances. I mean, our daughter's first girlfriend. Isn't it nice she's gained something from college? She looks pointedly to her husband with just an edge of snark in her voice, but he perhaps smartly simply acknowledges with a smile, dropping that on them here and now is quite the decision. Uh, I'm beginning to wonder why I thought this was a good idea. I can't read her parents at all, but I can already tell my presence here is increasing attention that usually permeates this household. Well, you know, now. Uh, at least Eileen dating a girl isn't a problem in and of itself. Eileen's father finally pipes up as their argument peters out, taking a swig of his wine to wash down his food. Setting all that aside, it looks like college in Utah is working out well for the both of them. Her father gives a brief chuckle, maybe sensing my tense mood. He seems to down to earth and relaxed, especially compared to her mother. That said, I get a vague feeling of being a foreigner, and not just because I'm in a different city, and as if there's a certain social etiquette that I'm not quite aware of, but everyone else is following naturally. Quite. So tell us about yourself, Allison. Attention now focused on me. I freeze up. Must have expected this would come up. Judging by their conversation, Eileen probably told them nothing about me. This feels like introductions on the first day of elementary school all over again. Um, let's see. I go to the same college as Eileen. I've lived in the same city my whole life, but I moved a little closer to campus before the semester started, so I'm getting used to that. So you are an, uh, art student like Eileen? Oh no, I'm nowhere near at her level. I'm actually on a science scholarship. Science, huh? She sounds immediately interested. Her eyebrows raise, but all I can offer is an invasive dodge. I don't know how to say that. I'm not really excited about it, even if I apparently have some talent. We are in the art club together, though. We met through a mutual friend who made it. I see. Her previous curiosity suddenly hits a wall, her entire demeanor changing. Did I say something wrong? The abrupt change in tone breaks my train of thought. Unsure whether to continue or clear things up. The other problem I have is the feeling of someone's eyes drilling into me. Eileen's mother notices as my eyes shift behind her, Hold, hand holding the little girl little girl's back to reassure her. Come on, dear, be polite. The efforts don't seem to move her. The girl is resisting as her suspicious face shrinks behind her daintily patterned children's plate. Don't be silly. My name's Eve. Nice to meet you, Eve. That's a lo lovely name. I keep smiling, but her pouting shows my charm of charm offensive isn't working out. Once again, Eileen comes to the rescue, speaking up as I try to think of a, another way to overcome her distrust. Are you going to be like this all night? Eve just huffs and starts shoveling food into her mouth. The size of the spoon in the table before her makes the attempt at serenness look more amusing than anything else. Don't mind her, she'll come around. I might say that, but I was hoping her cute little sister might be a little more warm towards me. At least her mother has given up questioning me for now. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you, the uh, guest room has just been cleaned out a few days ago, so you can use that while you're here. Thank you very much. I'm really sorry to impose so much on you. You have charm going for you when you say Aline. Eileen grimaces, her mother embarrassing her in the particular way only a parent knows how. <laughs> oh, that's nice. It's 
fireplace. I can already feel my eyelids get heavier, getting heavy as I lean back into a wonderfully soft couch. Exhaustion of the trip and meeting Eileen's folks finally catching up to me as I rest in the living room. Excuse me. The fireplace happily crackles away near the Christmas tree. The cozy room all the warmer thanks to the heat of the shower still lingering on my skin. Excuse me. Lingering on my skin. All that can be heard are the fire and the faint clanking of dishes as Eileen's parents wash up, recounting the day's events between them. I very nearly succumb to doziness before Eileen walks in, pulling back her still slightly wet hair. Boy, eye level woman. Jesus. The sight of her pajamas wake me up a little, though I quickly try to move my gaze elsewhere. She practically collapses onto the couch beside me, staring up at the ceiling for a while to collect herself. I catch myself staring at her, but if she minds, she doesn't show it. What a day. That goes for both of us. I almost mentioned the argument Eileen had with her mother, but I can't work out how I should want to phrase it. Maybe it's best that Eileen preempts me. So how was the trip, now that we can talk properly? Sometimes we stop for good. You're braver than I am. could pay me enough to get one of those things. Get on one of those things? Yeah, get on one of those things, sorry. Ah, come on. I'm sure you'd be a natural at it. No way, your roommate's crazy for using it as her only transportation. Your parents seem nice. Eileen just shrugs. I wish they were a little more subtle. About what? Being so specific that you'll use the guest room, not mine. <laughs> My cheeks flush scarlet as I connect the dots. Did you just realize what that was about? <laughs> I know that, Phil. No, but I... I'm still embarrassed to talk about it. I only find amusement in how flustered I am. And then make out on the couch. I bury my face in my hands. Never change. If I had lied and said we were just friends, I wonder if they would have been so adamant about us, the two of us not sharing a room. I peek at her from behind my hands. I don't really know what to say. I don't know enough about her parents to say anything. Maybe that would have been better, huh? Her smile returns and she leans in towards me. I can feel my face go redder. My heart burning in my chest, all I can do is lean in to meet her. This sort of reminds me a ton of like one of our relationships. Eileen closes her eyes on her eyes, our lips meeting for a brief moment. Hopefully it doesn't end for them like that one did for me. God dang. As I pull back, the two of us look at each other and smile, part, partly from happiness and partly from our sheepishness. It's going to be a while before this comes naturally, I guess. As I watch her, though, Eileen's face slowly collapses into frustration. What's wrong? Oh, gosh. Everything's wrong! Eileen makes no secret of her displeasure as she sighs and takes to her feet, confronting the small and very unhappy girl before us. <laughs> it stings to be so close, only to be interrupted. Eve. Eileen's sister takes a little nose, directing her pouting towards the object of her annoyance, me. She's my sister. I finally get to play with Eileen after so long, and you keep hogging her. Want to play, do you? Eileen flits behind Eve while she's busy branding at me, bringing her arms around the child's midsection and lifting her up at gets her chest with ease. As Eve finds her feet dangling a couple inches from the carpet, she begins flailing about to grab a foothold. Unhand me, you fiend! Let go of me! Oh, wow, you haven't grown at all. That will definitely help calm her down. To no surprise, the two of them start fighting. Eve's slight little body joking this way and that as Eileen plants her feet and refuses to let go despite her squirming around. I'll tell mom on you. And what? She'll ground me? He fruitlessly continues to struggle, arms and legs flailing about in there. For all her frustration and growling, her acting out just makes Eileen all the more amused as she teases her little sister. 
Watching the two have their having their sibling scuffle reminds me of my brothers at home. For the first time, my nerves are about here, about being here, fade a little. <laughs> Sitting on the side of the bed, I'll be using for a week. I idly watch the news on the small television placed on the cabinet. The little speakers on the device chime valiantly, but the voices are so tinny. I think that's supposed to be tiny. I can barely understand them. It's 10.30 in the evening. Going by the clock in the corner of the broadcast, adulthood's weird. Now that I can go to sleep where, whenever, I want without my parents disapproving. I dutifully do so at a reasonable time, anyway, so I can be fresh for school. The fact I'm actually watching the news nowadays, too, is strange. Bored of the reports about being trucks being stuck after sliding around the rows, I let myself flop back onto the bl soft blankets as it drones on. Lacking the energy to do much else, I lazily stare upwards. And then Eileen's gonna sneak into her room. Watch this. Yet another unfamiliar ceiling above me. It feels like everything is constantly charging, changing these days. My old home sure didn't have a guest bedroom, let alone one that's so nicely furnished. Here I was, thinking I'd be squeezing into Eileen's bed. Not that I'd have minded that at all. For all the lovely things she has here, though, Eileen seems to intentionally trying to distance herself from her parents. I don't understand it at all. She might have told me not to pry into her life, but it's hard to ignore what's going on, what's right in front of my face. I quickly shuffle myself up at the sound of the opening door, sliding across the carpet. I freaking told you, Roy. I, this is so much, this is nostalgia right here. Flashback. With a gentle touch, Eileen gingerly closes the door behind her. I thought everyone to be asleep by now, but maybe I should have expected her of all people to still be up. Eileen? Puts a finger over her lips as she turns back. Before walking up, climbing into the bed and facing me as I twist around, the two of us end up sitting in its center. Can you be sleeping? Same goes for you. She has me there. Far from the quiet, the quiet feeling awkward, I find myself smiling at our secret rendezvous. Feels like we're kids having a sleepover. Too bad the movie's just news instead of some horror movie we snuck past our parents. You did that? Once. My friends were so freaked out we went back to the usual horrible romance stuff. There's nothing wrong with romance movies. <laughs> her face makes it abundantly clear. Uh, it, this is a difference of opinion that will never be bridged. I have to admit, there is one thing different too back. There's one thing different too back then too. Eileen's body is really hard to ignore when we're like this. As much as I try to distract myself from the subject, she did sneak into my bedroom at night. What's wrong? Nothing. It's just, you're really pretty. Hmm. It isn't often I catch her being bashful, but I think this might finally be one of those times. A moment of victory is brief, though with Eileen's quick movement towards me, taking me all the more off guard. Unable to make sense of this girl suddenly lunging at me, the both of us are sent falling backwards into the soft mattress. It takes a couple of seconds to collect myself and work out what's happened. Time seeming to stop as I'm left staring upwards as a pair of air mortal eyes above me. I'm pinned. I think a brief attempt to right myself in. ends in little more than a couple of weak jerks. I lean holding my hands to the thick sheets with her body weight. Silence reigns, my vision filled with her face looking downwards. I have no idea what to say as my heart beats wildly in my chest, yet she doesn't say a word. Eileen, what are you? I missed you. How am I su supposed to respond to that? Were her face any different? I think it was an, inv an invitation, but there's a sincerity that there that takes me off guard. I wonder how often I've seen her face or anyone's from this close, and for so long, I can't help but stare up upwards, try my best to read that face so I, I so often can't. As I do though, I realize something. She's do doing just the same. 
Maybe she's scared of forcing me to do something I don't want to do. Or afraid of getting too close too fast. Maybe she's simply like I am. Unused to being looked at this intently. Either way, she isn't leering over me. Eileen's generally unsure what to do next. Whatever the reason, I can't help but smile a little. Did I say something wrong? I was just thinking how you're still the same as ever. What's that supposed to mean? I answer her confusion by lifting my chin a little in invitation. Not that I can move much more. Who the hell stole my memories, bro? <laughs> My <laughs> god dang. Huh. Without any further prompting needed, she passes her lips to mine with a satisfied sigh. It isn't long before our tongues move about, her breath tingling on my face. I squirm about roughly as the atmosphere gets heavier between us. I lean easily keeping me down. It's a little exciting to be playing like this, and she shows no sign of letting up. Shiver runs down my spine as I find her thigh between my legs and my fidgeting about, my heart beginning to race with ideas of this and that. With lips affectionately breaking and meeting, Eileen barely letting me take as, so much as a breath. I can't help but to think back to the first time we did this. Oh, that didn't happen to me though. That feels bad. This, I, see, my experience, I figured the parents knew, so they just never came in. But that sucks. Then <laughs> several sharp thuds against the door ring out. Get on the bed. Please. My entire body freezes, my heart nearly jumping out of my chest. The both of us freeze as I break from our kissing to look over, hoping against hope that the door doesn't creak open. It's getting late, Allison. Why now of all times? I can only thank my lucky stars that we've been quiet, but being one door handle turned from being seen like this is far too close to comfort. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> all right, sorry, I'll get to bed soon. That was remarkably more natural than I thought it'd be. I'd be able to pull off. Thank you. If you need anything, just ask. Sleep well. Thanks. Good night. And her footsteps go down the hallway. Both of us have a great keep a great sigh. The mood's completely gone as both of us look at it to each other. I suppose this is one benefit of Eileen having her own apartment. Whew. Stress. I run my hands through my hair to settle myself down as Eileen sits back on the bed, wisely letting a few moments go by before trying to slip out of my room. I also miss living alone. Well, that was annoying. See you tomorrow, I guess. Have a good sleep. She ruined the good part. <laughs> I'd be so triggered if that happened. With, <laughs> with that, she slips off to bed, quietly shuffling across the room before pausing a moment before turning the handle. As I pick myself up to wish her a good night, she curtly turns back. Be honest, I think you really look really pretty too. I don't manage to form a reply before she skitters out of the room. Then again, my scarlet cheeks probably did the job for me. Hmm. Rubbing sleep from my eyes as I slowly drag myself to the living room, a strained yawn heralds my entrance. I thought I might have trouble getting to sleep in an unfamiliar place, but after everything that happened, I crashed almost immediately. Looks like Eileen's family are early risers. Noises from the kitchen presumably being from her parents while the TV television blares away just ahead. The fires crackling would make it quite a cozy scene if not for being inter interspersed with cartoon voices. Eve sits on the couch as I glance down, already bundled up in her wetter outfit like a puffy ball of clothing. Eagerly watching the morning cartoons, her legs swing away as she happily munches on a bright a bowl of brightly colored cereal. I can't help but smile, reminded of my own childhood. The show and the setting might be different, but the innocence is just the same. I forgot what this simple existence felt like. I take a seat beside the oversized hamster, Eve barely acknowledging my existence before Eileen pops in from the kitchen and calls out to me. Looks like the coffee in her hand hasn't kicked in quite yet. 
Want any food? There's toast and cereal if you want any. I don't usually eat breakfast. Thanks, so. though. Drugging in response, the tired Eileen heads back out. Despite settling down to watch Eve's cartoons with her, I can't help but eavesdrop as the conversation between Eileen and her mother can be heard from the other room. Go back. I know you snuck into her room last night. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, no, it didn't. Any plans for the day? I was going to study for school. Real studying, not just drawing. This drawing is real studying for you, dick. The cartoon's loud exclamation punctuate the short silence that forms Eileen's reply. Should have known. I've seen your marks from high school. I just want you to do well. Maybe you can have Allison's help. She seems to have a good head on her shoulders. She's been helping me with my math already. And here I was worrying about who you might end up with for a girlfriend. You know I can handle myself fine. Why worry? Because I'm your mother, that's why. Eileen doesn't exactly sound buoyed by the comments, but I have to admit that the praise is nice to hear. It is a bit sad to hear her mother doesn't approve of her pursuing art, though. I wonder how tempered this exchange is, thanks to them keeping things together since I'm around. Morning, you two. Coming out, dear? Just swinging into town to grab paper and milk. Want to come along? Eve, Allison, will be heading out for a moment. Okay. We're going by your favorite shop, Eve. I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> she drops her almost finished bowl onto the coffee table so hastily that it nearly spins. Spills, skittering over to the, out the door with a faint pitter-patter on the carpet. It's amazing how much energy kids have. Eileen's parents give a short farewell as they escort Eve out. The girl racing out straight to the car to be a child again, filled with excitement for the next car trip or television show. Ah, uh, low time. This is familiar as well. With her family out the door, Eileen watches them drive off before heading over. I shift over a little as well. She drops onto the couch, setting her coffee down with somewhat more care than her sister's cereal. I give a loud stretch, but rather than being out of tiredness, it's more to calm myself as my heart starts beating in anticipation. We're finally alone for the real this time. As I look over to Eileen, it's obvious that she has the same idea as she turns off the television. Want to pick up where we left off last night? I want to, but isn't it kind of early for this nonsense? She has to think that one through. It'll wake us up. I'm not given a chance to respond as she presses her lips to mine. Not that I particularly wanted to argue the fact. This will likely be the last time we can share a moment like this for a good while. Snow makes a satisfying sound as I pat it down, each handful making the spear before me that little bit larger. It's surprising how much physical work putting a snowman together is, but this is my first time making one this size. Standing out on the front lawn in the cold of the early morning, I keep patiently patting away at my creation, slowly but surely building him up. I've been wanting to make a snowman for a while now, but between moving, studying, and hanging out with others, there just wasn't much time. While I might have wanted to keep blazing around with Eileen, her family probably won't take much longer to get back, and she wanted to keep practicing her art, if nothing else. At least we're both a, little, a lot more awake now. It's rather nice to, out, to be out here, despite the cold, and given so much needed time to unwind. I think I'm living up to the expectations of Eileen's family, but living in another's home under the gauges of strangers is still stressful. I forgot to say I've been enjoying this so much. I don't know why I'm saying there doesn't seem to be answer choices. I know there's achievement to unlock answer choices, but I don't want them. I love how the story's going. Not that I'm alone out there. The odd squirrel flits about in the distance around the trees, and the birds can be chir heard chirping away from the pines. 
I wonder if Eileen, for her love of outdoors, appreciates the sound of nature around here. Even if you're the only person around, you're never really alone. The air's nice here too, fresh with just a hint of pine wafting from the trees. I don't think they have pine trees in Colorado, do they? I don't think so. I think that's no. Do they have? Well, I guess it's not actual pine like needle trees, I guess. It's only when a car door clangs shut behind me that I realize I've become so distracted with my surroundings. The father makes idle mention of how little traffic they encounter as they pass into the house, with her mother guessing that that the cars must be going in the direction of the city instead. He bounces out of the car after them before stopping to spy what, at what I'm up to. Ah, snowman! Yep, never had the time to make one back home. Want to build one too? Yeah! Needing no further prompting, she enthusiastically rushes past me and crouches out, pushing together the snow with her tiny gloved hands. The two of us start working away, with her snowman start slowly starting to take form next to mine. There's almost a therapeutic feel to it all. Relaxing outside as I see the large snowman coming together with each little step, even Eve seems to have quietened it down, focused wholly on her work. Making, maybe this is a bit what sculpture is like. It's satisfying to build something with my own hands, to see an object form where there was nothing before. Looking over to Eve's snowman as I go, I'm impressed with how quickly she's managed to get something together. A slightly a lopsided figure, roughly equals to her height. Wow, you must have a lot of practice. He continues working away at it, making a bit of snow a pound, making a bit of a show of pounding the snow into shape with bare, both hands, her entire body, upper body being put into it. Eileen taught me how to make snowmen. There's a little bit of his hesitation still, as if reminding herself that she shouldn't talk too much to a stranger suddenly hanging around her sister. Hopefully the fun of sharing the experience might just help distract her. Sounds like you and Eileen are really close. I don't get to play with her much now that she's moved out. I miss her when she goes away, but Mom and Eileen always argue when she's home. You could visit her back in Utah, maybe. I, I'm sure she'd like the company. Dad says we will, but he's always got work. I want to see her paintings. She always making them. She was always making them before she went away. Her paintings are really pretty, aren't they? Yeah, but Mom said it's not a real job, so Eileen gets bad. What about Dad? Dad has said he thinks the same, but that they shouldn't fight so much over it. Sounds like they don't get along very well. Hey, can you make Eileen happier? That's my what I'm doing. <laughs> I'll certainly do my best. Satisfied with the best answer I could drum up. He goes back to work on her snowman, little hands collecting more some more snow to pat on. Might say that, but I don't really know where to begin. Now that I think about it, she's done a lot for me, but when I think back to when I we when we've been together, all I've been able to do around her is watch as she draws and paints. I'm just getting myself worried over her. As she said, Eileen's perfectly capable of looking after herself. It's not like she needs me to be happy. Trying to stop myself from dwelling, I focus on patting the head of my snowman. Some more to make it a bit less rectangular. You paint too? No. Not really, I just draw cute things. I draw too, can I show you some of my drawings later? Sure, that'd be great. As she beams a grin, I'm glad to finally be able to make head- finally be making headway with her. I never thought I'd be bonding through messing about in, in the snow. Have you shown mom and dad? They're always busy, so I can't always show them. My nanny's seen all of them though. She's nice. Nanny, huh? I suppose you don't get to live this nicely without some sacrifices. I wonder if Eileen was raised by a nanny too. I wonder if either of them ever really connected with their parents. As we work away at, on our creations, the door opens once more. Looking around to see who it is, a familiar figure strides up. 
I do worry about her long boots in the slippery snow, but she doesn't seem bothered. What are you two doing? Mickey Snowman! You don't say. Well, if you want some lunch instead of freezing out here making snowmen all day, come in from the cold already. But I want to make him better. Eileen studies her work for a moment before reaching out over towards me. Too confused to respond, I just stand there as Eileen's hands reach over and take my scarf in their grip. Unwinding it from my neck, she slightly walks over to the eve snowman and smartly wraps it around what's probably supposed to be the neck. That looks cool! There, he'll be happier now that he's less cold. He'll still be here when you get back, so go in. Go and eat something. Your show is starting, you know? Shocked that she might be missing him even a minute, she completely drops any attention she had on the snowman and stomps off as quickly as her restricting clothes allows. It's obvious Eileen has Eve wrapped around her little finger. All I'm left to do is stare at Eileen, pouting. You can grab your scarf back when Eileen Eve gets bored of making him. I was going to use that on my own snowman. <laughs> I swear, you're worse than her sometimes. <laughs> oh. The sound of Saturday morning cartoon kid shows. Kid shows fills the living room as I walk back in, each hand carefully balance, balancing a bowl of cereal. Eve sits quietly, fo wholly focused on watching television, while still something of a work in progress. She seems more content to let me hang around now. Even if she doesn't engage much, maybe simply being friendly company is enough for her. Despite being the weekend, Eve's parents are out once again. This time, they're with Eileen to check how her car is going. Of all the ways Eileen home is different from my own, it's the sheer quiet that most gets me. With few cars around, no people nearby, there's only the odd boisterous bird outside to make noise. I could get used to small town life like this. My spacing out is interrupted as the main door shuts with a loud thud, familiar figure striding past. Welcome back, how's the car? It's fine. We're headed out once Dad's finished poking at it, by the way. Uh, sure, where are we going? You'll see. Finish your breakfast for now. I'll get your clothes out and pack everything. Isn't this a bit of a rush? I still have sleep in my eyes from waking up. She's usually a zombie at this time in the morning. Still standing around with bowls in my hands. I pulled them out and looked down, checking that I'm not going crazy and did actually dress myself this morning. But I'm already dressed. Not for where we're going. Oh, we're going somewhere fancy, I guess. Oh, it's cold. We're going to get a Christmas tree. Quiet morning is only punctuated by the crunch of snow underfoot, the occasional birds chirping, and the jingle of items from our backpacks. Apart from the woman's plot, from the woman plodding ahead before me and the footprints she leaves behind, all that I can see are pine trees, as much snow on their branches of greenery. Oh, and the puffs of condensation from our breasts. The scenery is nice, at least. I'd hardly expected to be spending today hiking through the forest, which dragged me out of the house. But so far, it's been a pleasant way to spend the day. Hard as my legs may be, Eileen's place, pace doesn't falter. The hiking clothes she lent me hang off my frame. Well, I suppose that should have been expected given our height difference. They're comfortable, though, and are most of all warm. I picked a good day for all this. Not exactly warm, but at least it's not bitterly cold. He says this with all the care that one might give when looking out the window of a morning. Eileen really seems to be treating this as almost an everyday activity. The fact we need bear spray out here wait also weighs up my mind. Apparently being black bear country, Eileen simply carries it in stride. And so we keep plodding ahead. On the plus side, the air is nice and fresh up here. The odd huge bird. What air? There's no air in Colorado. It's too. The altitude's too high. There's barely any air. The odd huge bird squawking as it flies above us. It calls, echoing around the mountains, making for makes for a nice atmosphere. 
we're alone like this. Her family feels like an elephant in the room. There's so much I want to talk to her about, but I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say since she told me not to pry. Wanting to fill the air with something, I end up setting for the mildest of small talk. So you're experienced at this, huh? Yeah, I've been up for a few hikes around here. Played outside a lot as a kid. Ended up adventuring more and more until I started hiking. With your father or... No, alone. It's nice to have some time to myself. Without a doubt, Eileen has to be the most solitary person I've ever met. Maybe this explains her abrasiveness towards her parents. But it feels unfair for her to take it out on them. Coming out here has been a real help for my, with my art, too. But we're... Running out of breath. Ah, there's the realism. <laughs> That's what you get. Colorado hurts. I have to stop and take a moment to... She probably would have passed out, honestly. With the altitude not being, like, super physically fit anyways, she probably would have already passed out. I have to stop and take a moment to collect myself. My natural pace is slower than Eileen's, making this height all the more taxing. How is all this related to art? The more life experiences you have, the more inspiration you have. Hard to create anything of worth while stuck in the four walls of my room. You need input to be able to create output. That's how culture works. Thinking on her words, as I turn and start moving it once more, Eileen's voice calls out. Watch out, there's a stone there. I look at my feet, quickly stepping around the dangerous trip hazard. If it weren't so big, I'd move it out of the way for future people coming up here. I took this route a lot as a kid. It's probably the easiest way to make it through this area, but you still have to keep an eye out. By breathing heavy, I come to the grim realization that Eileen must have been far more fit than when she was young than I am now. Sorry, I'm a total city kid, I guess. You're plenty smart, but you just can't pick... But you can't just pick up everything from books and internet, you know? I don't really know how to receive that half compliment, half criticism. Is this where Eileen picked up her independence, hiking in the woods alone? It's not like it's bad out here. The air and the sounds are everything are nice. I can't imagine doing this alone. And not just because I'm barely being pulled along as it is. Do you think maybe we could rest soon? Going by the frown on her face, Eileen is clearly disappointed with my request. We barely started. There's a resting place I want to reach, but we can't stop every few minutes if we want to get back by sundown. So how far does she plan on taking us? <laughs> Just realize you have to get back as well, so that's extra motivation. The sound of the river getting closer and closer, louder and louder as we walk. Before the two of us finally reach a clearing after a couple hours or so of hiking. Despite barely being able to walk, I've kept myself from complaining anymore, not wanting Eileen to be disappointed in me again. The two of us slowing to a stop as she looks around, it seems we'll finally be making pit stop here. Same as it is always, looks like nobody's messed with it. I'm about to ask what's so significant about this place before she bends down and sweeps some snow off a few large rocks. Showing them purposefully set in a small circle. Here, have a seat. Setting herself down on a particularly large rock, I quickly follow her lead and sit next to her. Looks like most of the rocks here were, were carefully set in the ground to make a little campsite. Positioned next to the gently flowing river, my legs are happy that I get to sit down. Looks like you've come here before. I ended up building this place where I up into a little base camp over the years. Bears kept taking out everything I bought in or set up, but at least they leave the rocks and the ditches alone. Eileen makes herself comfortable as she pulls out a tin and thermos to pour herself some water, while I cut my hands and huff into them to warm them up a little. With the two of us settling down to recover for a while, I listen to the sounds around us. It's so different to my own home, with the sounds of cars and crowds replacing, replaced by the river's slow trickling and various birds and other wildlife. Somehow it isn't a surprise that this is the kind of place Eileen would like. As she sits out here, thinking to herself, she looks like part of the scenery, just as she did in her quiet art room, 
At least until Caprice and I made it decidedly less quiet. Then there's me in my oversized clothes and labored breasts. Y'all feel bad. Altitude's hard. It's peaceful. Yeah. Thought my apartment was quiet, but it's nothing like this. Your place wasn't quiet at all when I was there. Constant cars, construction, and people walking by. I'm not like you. I've only ever lived in a big city. I was worried about being so far from home, but I think I like it here. Playing with Eve has been fun too. Your family has been really nice to me as well. Eileen's face sours, making me immediately regret adding that last little addendum, or more to the point, that lecturing tone. I want to understand her, but, excuse me. But she only gives me small pieces to work with, not enough to puzzle things together. I knew my sudden intrusion into her home would be at least a little awkward, but I've begun to realize Eileen's resistance to bringing me here was about more than that. Just... I started speaking before even gathering my thoughts. This isn't a great start. Just what is it that makes you want to be away from them so much, to move to a different state? I mean, is it just about your choice of career, or... Can we not bring all that up? I came here exactly to get away from my parents being on my case. And then there was silence. I explained to her rush in the morning to organize our hiking trip out here, especially if she was stuck with her parents while they were, gave her a car gave her car a spin around town. So what am I even here for? Something up? I thought you brought me out here because you wanted to share it with me. I was really excited to see the kind of things you did growing up. Her face tells me that she hadn't even considered that reasoning. I feel a little stupid for attaching so much feeling to this now. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be a good look if I left you back at the house while I wasted time out here. So this was just stress relief for her. Even now she's not looking at me, probably more busy thinking about things over regarding her over with regards to her family, I open my mouth to try and ask her about it, but I can't work out what to say. You need to realize you're the one that asked to go with her to her parents' house. She didn't ask you to come along with her. She told you it's going- oh my gosh. You're making a big deal out of this when you shouldn't. I'm just here because she feels obligated to invite me. I guess I should have realized she did, doesn't want me here. You don't want me here at her home, after all. I'm the invader. I'm in her space. It's no wonder she treated me like a bird in this entire walk. If I was going to get in her way, she should have just said so. In the end, the only reason I even knew about anything about her disagreement with her parents is because Eve told me. Eileen doesn't want me to know. For now, I'll just have to be content as a spectator, looking into her life without getting too involved. Um, I quickly look at her, but rather than acting contrite, she's pointing to my left side with her gaze focused. An insect seems to be lazily crawling on the top left of my hand. The thing about a fingernail leaf and jet black, oh god, is this a stampede? I don't recognize it, but it looks harmless enough. To be honest, I couldn't care less about the little beetle right now. You're not worried? Should I be? Well, I mean, most people don't like bugs crawling on them much. Where did the bug come at in winter in Colorado? At least it did. <laughs> I just shrugged, leaning down to press the side of my hand to the cold ground while gently persuading the bug to get off with my other hand. After a bit of effort, the little fellow gets off my glove and onto the soil, scampering off a little faster for the experience. It won't hurt me. What, just another one of your animal friends? I'm not exactly in the mood for being teased. The kind of thing you learn in books or the internet. Oh, retorted. Eileen laughs it off, but I'm sure she can tell I'm being snippy. With that, she stands up, putting over the thermos and cup back into her backpack before dusting it off. Ready to keep going then? We still got the afternoon ahead of us. Yeah, sure. I try to put as much enthusiasm into it as I can muster, but I get the distinct feeling that I'm just long for the ride now. And so she pushed it forward without even looking back at me.
This is always where I am with her. Whether I'm watching Eileen paint or watching her hike, I'm always far behind her with her eyes on my back, on her back. Hmm. The wave to her father as her his car disappears down the road. Eve takes my hand in hers as we head start off down the street. How did we get back so suddenly? With the weather particularly nice today and Eve needing to burn off some energy, we decided to take a grand tour of the local town. Her pace is sl thankfully slower than her sister's, with my sore legs needing a rest after the excursion yesterday. I had wanted to do this with Eileen, but she couldn't be dissuaded from painting in her room. There wasn't much fight in me to argue with her, so that was that. Maybe some time away from her is best. Even people who like each other sometimes need a break, I think. The old wooden storefronts hardly loom over us, being mostly just a couple of stories tall, themselves dwarfed by forests and hills beyond. Strolling around is a much nicer way to take, a, take it in than clutching to Rose on the back of her bike. It's nice here. Kind of boring sometimes, though. Thinking about it, I could see that being the case for a child. The few people out and about today are basically all graying older folk, hobbling around as I look around us. Such a pleasant atmosphere has its downsides. My thinking interrupted by a ping from my pocket. As we stop for a moment, I pluck my phone from my pocket and unlock it. Hi, Allison. How are things going? Who is it? Just my dad, asking how I'm doing. He stands on tiptoes, trying to look over the phone with curiosity. I get an idea. Crouching a little and bringing the phone level with her. She sets herself back down. I try to hold it steady. I'll send him a photo. Stay still. In response, Eve fixes her posture to stand up prim and proper, dusting herself off to look as good as possible. It's charming how seriously she takes this. With a tap and a click, the photo is saved and quickly sent on to Dad as a message. Her sister is showing me around. Sounds like you're having fun. Yeah. How are things there? Back home, safe and sound. Your brothers are driving us nuts. We'll be glad to have you back. Sounds like things are the same as ever then. See you in a few days. Miss you. Take care. Enjoy the last of your trip. I smile and lock the phone once more, slipping it back where it belongs. I have to stop myself from counting down the days left here. I don't want to start regretting this trip and once again wishing I was home. Hey, what's your family like? Totally different, I'll say that much. I have mom, dad, three brothers, and a cat. We all live in the city and it's really busy and noisy every day. They're nice though. It'll be good to put me back home. That's fine with my answer. Eve pulls me forward as we begin our tour in earnest. She points out this and that though. My thoughts aren't about Eve or my family, but stuck on what, wanting to be doing this with Eileen. Ah, our relationships, this isn't good. Just as it was whenever I watch her paint, I feel like I'm watching her life from outside rather than sharing our time together. Don't doubt that she likes me. She certainly likes me in a physical sense. I like those times too, but I feel like I'm the only one who wants us to become closer in more than just a physical sense. I'm the one who planned our first date. I'm the one who asked to come here. Now I'm wondering if Eileen even wanted any of this. The one time I thought Eileen wanted to share something with me, she was just using me to distract herself from her problems, problems she, that she wouldn't talk to me about. All I can do is sigh. <sighs> What's wrong? Just a shame your sister is busy, that's all. Is Eileen having a good time in college? Why do you ask? Mom says she was worried about Eileen since she worked, moved out, but when Eileen's around they always argue. Is she really alright? Eve says this with genuine worry in her voice. Eileen's parents really do care about her, even if she doesn't think so sometimes. 
Eileen's fine. Every day she's making painting, pretty paintings and having fun with her friends. And she's helped me a lot since I met her. Eileen's always been fine now that I think about it. Ever since the day we met, I've merely watched her as she lived her life. She's getting together. Has she, anything really changed? For all our intimacy, she still treats me the same way as she always has. All while pers relentlessly pursuing her ambition. Ambition. No, I can't think like that. I'm getting myself wound up. Your parents are nice, aren't they? He gives an enthusiastic nod. They think you're nice too, since you hang out with me. At least they think I'm useful, I suppose. I never realized it before, but having a little sister is really fun. Not that I mind my own siblings, but three older brothers aren't quite <laughs> the same company. Let's see some more of the town before we have to go back then, okay? Yeah! I'll drink again. Gosh dang it. Finally back from our trip, after a bus ride back, Eve bounced through the door as I dragged myself in and closed it behind us. I don't know how kids have so, can have so much energy. Eileen stands with a glass of water, looking nonplussed at her entrance before noticing the new book held tightly under Eve's arms as she skips over to the living room sofa. You didn't. I can spare that much money. It can be your Christmas present for me. You're enjoying having a little sis, aren't you? She got me. How's the painting going? I need to go down to the city soon for supplies and stuff. No art supply stores around here. Wanna come? I'm along for the ride as usual. Bro, you are turning everything into negative. You should be glad that they asked you to come with her. I feel bad for thinking bad thoughts about her, but I can't mas muster any real one to come along. I'd just be baggage while she did her thing. Bro, oh my god, this is going poorly. Sorry, still tired from yesterday. Do it yourself. I'll be straight back afterwards. We're having pizza for dinner tonight, by the way. Ah, good. This is going like my fucking relationship. This is not good. <laughs> this is... Come on, figure it out. The two of us briefly wondered how to continue conversation, but I can't think of anything to add. Fuck. With that, she wanders back to her room. Who stole my memories? <laughs> God. To her room to keep painting. I feel like I should follow her at least to see how her paintings come along, but my feet feel stuck. Left to Mill Bow alone, as Eve can be heard happily humbling to herself from the sofa, I decide to turn around and head back out the door for some air. The warm afternoon is starting to fade air is starting to fade by now, causing me to push my hands into my pockets to try and save whatever warmth I can. At the rate the weather's going, I'm sure it's sure going to be a cold Christmas. At least the snowmen are liking it. Still standing tall as they guard Eileen's house from the front yard. It's easy to lose sight of when outside, inside, but her house sure is big. Even the yard's pretty spacious, but I suppose living so far from town would help with that. Nice house, enough money to live alone on her parents' dime, trips all the way to Germany. Eileen really did get a good start in life compared to me. It annoys me a little that she doesn't seem to see that, especially when it's her parents paying for her apartment. You are really taking the all. You're looking at everything so negatively. Painting alone in a room, hiking alone in the woods, living alone in a department, too big for one person. Is that really independence? Moving out away from her parents, but still relying on them for everything? Oh man, you, oh, we're down. We're going to end up breaking up. This is stupid. I'm pissed. Try as I might to get closer to Eileen, I can't help but feel like I'm just hanging around her. When I'm looking at her back, it's, it's just because she's always ahead of me. I would, shouldn't she turn around to look at me? I wonder what I really am to Eileen. The fact that I can't work out an answer makes me restless. The lump starts to form in my throat. I quickly decide to wander back inside. All I'm doing is making myself feel worse by dwelling on all of this. I should make the most of my time here. 
given I only have a few days left. God. God. The park makes for a peaceful sight as we enter, the three of us slipping between the wood barriers as we step from the rough concrete car park onto the snow-covered grass. The bundled-up Eve clings tightly to Eileen and I with both of her little hands, each of us on either side of her. A bag of old bread sways uh, swings away at Eileen's side, destined for the local wildlife. I feel like a killjoy to say bread is good for them. With the two of us acting like as babysitters thanks to Eileen's parents working, we decided it'd be better to head outside than to let her vegetate on the couch watching cartoons all day. Tired from the walk, I take a seat on the swings facing the lake as Eileen's mother walks around Eve. Tugging at the girl's scarf, pull it tight, Eileen's hands over the bag of bread for the ducks before ruffling her hair affectionately. I wonder if that's why Eileen does that to me, now that I think of it. With her sister having finished her fussing, Eve turns and starts for the shore while Eileen watches her intently. Be careful around the water, Eve. Okay. The ducks peacefully floating about the still lake start flapping about excitedly, quickly realizing that the girls waddling towards them come bearing food. Satisfied that Eve isn't going to topple over in a rush and flop in, Eileen wanders back towards me and sits herself on the other swing, all the while keeping a keen eye out. Looks like nobody is here at all. It's getting rather cold, but it's more likely people are being busy with holiday sales. I think the lake to be frozen over given how still it is, save for the boats first flying about. I'm just gonna say this, now would not be a good time to voice your complaints, Allison. She's cute. Yeah. While Eileen smiles warmly at her sister, I struggle to do the same. I'll soon have to make a call to Rose to pick me up. After all, leaving behind this lovely town, Eileen, Eve, their parents, I'm not sure when I'll get to see them again. Eve clumsily crumbs, crumbs the bread, crumbles the bread in her gloved hands, chucking it out onto the lake with varying degrees of success. Half the crumbs end up dropping to the ground at her feet, but she doesn't seem to notice. Is something up? You've been, oh God, okay. You've been kind of quiet over the past last couple days. I really don't get how you're such an upbeat person in general, though. Nor do I get how she's comfortable being so alone, so apart. The more I'm around her, the more different I feel we are. I just think it's better to see the best in people. I have to admit, I wish I could be like that. Why not try being more friendly in general? Oh god, every time I see you, you're closing yourself off to focus on painting and trekking out in the wilderness. Oh man, she's gonna be like, you don't understand. The more I get tied up with people, the harder it is to do what I want to do. You should know that better than most with Caprice and all. You shouldn't talk so badly about her all the time. She just wants everyone around her to enjoy themselves. Oh! I'm a little taken aback at how my firm my tone is. I'm starting to get tired of how she's always so critical. Oh my god. Oh my god. I force myself to keep my eyes on Adeline, despite her own surprise. Maybe it's for the best if I clear that- No, it's not! <laughs> I clear the air out and talk about this directly. Our concentration is broken by Eve giggling loudly in the distance, the birds enthusiastically crowding around in front of her, and occasionally flopping her away at the water. Is bad. Okay. Come on, what's this about? I get the feeling something's on your mind. It feels like we're hanging around each other, but not actually. I pause for a moment to phrase my thoughts correctly, trying not to let emotions cloud my thinking. Eileen thankfully patiently waits for me. I guess it feels like I'm along for the ride. I don't feel like I'm really there with you. What, here? We've been spending a lot of time together, and we've had some nice time to ourselves, right? Is that all this is to you? Silence reigns. The fact that she even needs to think about this is a bit upsetting. 
I don't know how relationships are supposed to go, but it feels like we both have very different ideas about it. What am I supposed to say? Is there something more you want from me? I'm just not as clingy as you are. Clingy, I just want to be by your side. You have gone off without me the other day if you felt like you could. Yeah, but I wasn't being considerate of your feelings. Is that a problem? It, it just feels like you'd rather I wasn't there. I like being with you, you know that. But I've been fine on my own this all time, all this time too. I don't need you to be there. Even though I always want to spend more time with her, she doesn't care whether or not I'm there. You have it so together. I've always admired that about you. Maybe you have it too together. Before coming here, I didn't realize how good a life you left behind when you moved away to drop everything here, including Eve to pursue art at a community college. Why are you attacking the way of what you are being a dick? From the way you talked about your family, I thought that they must be really hard on you. They just want what's best. I mean, the apartment you have seems like it would be, wouldn't be cheap for them to cover for one. You don't want uh, Ha, God. You're not even trying to understand things from her point of view. Because I don't hear that enough from every time, from them every time I'm around here. Can we just drop this? I like being around you because you don't bring up that stuff. Is that all you want from me? A quiet girlfriend who doesn't ask questions and leaves you alone? Eileen takes to her feet, her mood significantly souring, while I freeze up. I don't feel like shrinking from her for once. Am I only here to distract you from your parents? You're the one who begged to come. I told you that, com that you could come precisely because I didn't think you'd end up sticking your nose in my life. I want to learn more about you. That's what having a relationship is. That's up to me, not you. This is why you shouldn't have come here in the first place. She points in the general direction of her house. I'm used to enduring their crap already. I didn't need you to make things worse. I'm already hearing from them about how my girlfriend has a better life path than I do. So that's my fault? I think I'm shaking. My eyes are stinging from the salt wanting to flood out. Maybe they have a point. Did you think any of this through beyond just escaping them? Is that all our relationship is too? Man, I have never been so against the main character and with the person out there. Like, oh my god. I can't stand this. Uh, Allison. You can't expect her to change her goals just because you came into her life. You should get your own goals and work it. Oh, whatever. Hmm. I had my life on track before I met you, even met you. Just because you and Caprice want to come along and push, try to push me around, it doesn't mean I'm going to derail myself. Is that how she thinks of it? Didn't she agree to the art club? Didn't she agree to date me? Didn't she say she loves me? Hearing the sound of footsteps on the snow, the two of us turn in unison towards Eve, standing a few yards away with the empty bread bag held in her hands. Is something wrong? Eileen looks to me for a long while with her face full of frustration. I don't think either of us really knows what to, we should say next, even without Eve being around. Settling herself with a long breath, Eileen smiles as she turns back to Eve. I don't think I'll ever get used to how she shifts her entire demeanor like that. Everything's fine. Don't worry. It's about time we headed back home. I don't want to keep feeding the ducks. That's going to be hard to do without any more bread. Come on, it's about time we had some food ourselves. He gives one final glance back before taking Eve's hand and her own and walking on ahead. God. I thought I was someone important to Eileen, but I feel like more like I'm just being used to make yourself feel better while she lives for her work. Oh, you suck. You absolutely suck. God, dang. She let you be part of her life and you're... Hmm. I know I have my faults. I'm not good enough at art to share the hobby with her. And I was barely even able to keep help cook a simple dinner. I'm trying to get better though. And that's thanks in part to her. The image I had of her is starting to become difficult to see. 
Who is the Eileen I admired? The beautiful girl in the apartment with the beautiful paintings? Eileen is someone at, so at odds with her family, she decided to only care about herself. As I watch her leave hand in hand with Eve, she looks even farther away from me. Maybe she's only so far away because we aren't walking on the same path. Ugh. This is going just like <laughs> my relationship, unfortunately, that one relationship. The jingle of the old bell above the grocery store door rings out as we step through the into the street. There's a silent chill in the air, but that hasn't stopped a good few elderly people from hobbling along the town streets. Aside from needing to tell Eve she couldn't have this sugary snack or that as we walked around shopping ended up being a quiet affair. Eileen went through the shelves with her usual military efficiency as she ticked off her mental checklist. Yesterday's argument between us hasn't helped. That's not the only reason for Eileen's quietness. She might not even realize it herself, but small things like that which reminded me of her solitary nature. That ability to tune others out so easily isn't something that comes naturally, at least to me. For want of helping at least a little, I took one of the overstuffed bags we ended up with to carry myself. Thanks for coming and helping carry all this. It's fine, I wanted to see a bit of town anyway. Can we sit down? I'm tired. Not that far to the car. Wouldn't hurt to rest a bit, would it? There's a bench right up there. Taking Eve's side doesn't, doesn't win me any favors, but Eve no, Eileen knows she's been overruled. As Eve jumps back onto the seat without any further prompting needed, Eileen and I carefully set our grocery bags on the ground and join her. Her parents sure chose a nice place to live, more a town than a city. The wooden buildings and stones, retaining walls, give it a distinct, distinctly old-fashioned natural look. Even the Christmas decorations are understated, amounting to the occasional sign be behind a shop window. The odd person walks to and fro and as we sit back, paying us a little heed as they go slowly go about their day. This should be the easiest occasion possible to make idle chatter with Eileen. As time lingers on though, the silence between us does it also. Eve doesn't notice, of course, her little legs swing up and down as she lazily watches the odd cargo pass. Uh, she suddenly brightens up and points ahead. Eileen and I are following her gaze. Inside the small ice cream parlor over the, the road, an old man in a pinstripe uniform turns the sign behind the glass door from close to open. Don't even think about it. Come on, I've been good. You know what Mom said, you can't just have ice cream whenever you want. <laughs> Besides, why would you even want ice cream? It's when it's already cold. Eileen's answer doesn't exactly satisfy the young girl. After a moment's consideration, I take to my feet and start heading over. Allison? I was just feeling like getting some ice cream for myself. Might as well get her one while I'm already there, right? You need to stop going. It's her sister, it's not yours. What are you doing? Strawberry! Two strawberry ice creams coming right up. And you didn't even ask Eileen what she wanted. <sighs> With our sweets quickly devoured, we finish off the last of our cones. They sure served them large here, but Eve managed to finish hers off hers quicker than I did. Maybe eating ice cream is one of those skills kids are just better at. Without needing to be asked, Eileen pulls a tissue from a box in the bag and curly wipes Eileen's Eve's mouth. Get the feeling she enjoyed being a mother given how she fusses about her little sister. As Adeline looks to me, I notice that I'm smiling at her. My face collapses as she opens her mouth to speak, but visibly thinks better of it. Much as I want to make amends, I don't want to apologize if I'm not wrong. With neither of us willing to back down, nor wanting to fight with each other again, yesterday's argument looms over us as the elephant in the room. Focusing my attention on a less stressful topic, my gaze falls to Eve, two of us sharing a brief smile. 
I guess it isn't long now, huh? You and I are just look at each other, but it quickly becomes apparent that the topic that the topics reminded Eileen of something I've been avoiding. You're being extra nice because you're going you're going back, aren't you? As Eve looks to and fro between Eileen and I, I tried my best to hide my disappointment in being found out. I was trying to think of a better way to break it before Eileen handled it so bluntly. It couldn't last forever, but I wanted to keep enjoying the carefree days just a little while longer. Maybe it was selfish of me to not make myself clear, but... Wait, you're going? Well, I do have my own family I want to spend time with. Oh god. She's shaking. She's oh, all... You shake at the child. Despite my best efforts to try and deliver the news as gentle as possible, her bottom lip starts to quiver. Both of us panic a little as it becomes clear Eve is about to crack. Uh, Eve? Her composure collapses as she <laughs> reaches over, her face weeping as she stuffs it into my stomach and grabs out my skirt. I don't want you to go, Allison. Stay here. I want you to stay. Ugh! This has gone about as awfully as it could have gone. Glaring at Eileen in frustration, I seem to have made my feelings clear to her as she turns her other sheepish. As Eve cries into my stomach, I stroke her head, shuddering head reassuringly, speaking as calmly as I can. Come on now, do you want me to remember you crying or with a big smile? My general suggestion seems to work as Eve pulls back and sniffs hard. <laughs> her little cheeks still stain red. He doesn't manage a smile, but I'll take what I can. There we go, that's more like it, the Eve I know. It's been so much play fun playing with you, so I wanted to thank you with a little something for being such a good girl. You're gonna come back, right? Don't worry, I'll come back. Maybe you could even come to Utah and see my home for yourself. She clumsily wipes her eyes. I give a big smile. Really? Eileen just scratches the back of her head, trying to m not to make things worse. I have our disagreements, but I think we can at least hold together for Eve's sake. I guess we can try to work something out. Eve looks from Eileen back to me, taking my hand in both of hers, with as much strength as her little hands can muster. Promise me we're going to play together again, right? I just smile as I bring my hand free hand over both of hers. I promise. At that, she gives me that toothy grin that I so like to see. She really is a charming little girl. I guess that settles things then. Now come on, you two. Let's get all get get. Let's get all this back to the car. And then her face shifted to sad, because she knows it's not true. Because we're about to break up, and I'm. <sighs> Light yawn fills the living room as I tiredly wander through, the others in the house being quiet as mice. I really should have just gone to bed early like the others in hindsight. Restless from the thought of the trip back, I ended up sitting around and watching television long after Eileen left for bed. Try as I might to find her to say goodnight before going to sleep, though she's nowhere to be seen. Running through the possibilities, I wander up to Eve's room. Opening the door as gently as possible I can, the sight inside makes me feel warm just by looking at them. Eileen sleeps on her side, wrapped around the slumbering Eve, curled up in a ball on top of the fur bed. Eve must have wanted one last cuddle before tucking in for the night. I just smile as I silently look over them, slumbering peacefully together. Even as I look at them, I wonder if I belong in their world. We have briefly pushed it from our minds, but I think both of us know that the closer we become, the further apart we felt. With Eileen's peaceful sleep face, peaceful sleeping face lingering in my mind, I gently close the bedroom door and head back slow, head slowly back downstairs. going to be hard saying goodbye to Eve. It's been nice to have a little sister, and I think she's enjoying having two older sisters doting over her just as much. Then there's Eileen. As I try to settle myself before going to bed, I idly notice my phone left on the couch, taking my hand before bringing it with me. 
I paused. Eileen left hers on the table some distance away, the moonlight glinting off the screen. My heart stinks as I turn on my own, and unlike the display, only the oppressive quiet is here to keep my, me company as I look down, a heavy weight weighing on me as I ponder. Eileen always did enjoy playing with her new phone. In time, she will hear what I was too cowardly to say. Thinking of the girl I admire so much, I make the call. It doesn't go answered. She never changed the default voicemail, as the uncharacteristically cheerful. Oh my god. Oh my god. Cheerful tone asked me to leave a message, my voice barely a whisper for fear of waking them. When I said that we had a family with our little art club at college, I really did mean it. It might not be much, but it's ours. You were an important part of that. I pause for a moment. My heart is stinking as I think of her. Even if it hurts, I know it needs to be said. Maybe I'm the only one who saw it that way. Maybe it was naive of me to think that way. Maybe I've been having the wrong idea all this time. I think. My third times, I wipe my eyes on my sleeve. I must have looked pretty stupid. I was so excited to be in love and to have a girlfriend that I pushed and pushed to get in your space, but you didn't let me. You didn't want me to, and even now, I can't even muster the courage to tell you this when you're awake. I don't know where things will go from here. I want you to be happy, but I don't know if I can be the person who does that for you. In the end, the anger and frustration I felt at everything is nowhere to be found. There's just an emptiness. I can at least yell and vent to let go of the firmware, but the, nothing can fill that hollow feeling. Good night, Eileen. That, I end the call. Bro. Oh my. Bro. <laughs> it's uh, weird seeing this from the female perspective. God damn. Too reminiscent. This is what. Oh. Uh, well. Thomas returns to the dark room once more. This is actually a lot like my first relationship. Except I'm watching it from the female side instead of the dude side. Oh, this is awful. I don't understand it. I still don't understand it to this day, so... Yeah, whatever. The snowfall is thankfully light as I walk through the city, bags in hands, from the day's last minute shopping downtown. People call me walking to and fro. The occasional passerby of Elaine's country Eileen's country home, replaced by the crowds of downtown Utah, briefly distracted by the huge Christmas tree, completed just in time for Christmas Eve. I think back to yesterday's events. When all said and done, leaving Eileen's family ended up being a calm affair. I gave her parents my thanks for taking care of, at such, of me at such short notice, and both said they're, they are, that they're. Be, they would be more than happy to have me again. Eve had so reluctantly come to terms with my leaving by then. Then there was the matter of Eileen. Our soul and food well was short but sweet, but maybe there wasn't much. That was because there wasn't much left to say. Thanks to my time in Colorado, a surprising amount of things I needed to buy before heading back to my family slipped my mind. At least wandering around the cities tonight gave me a. Now he's giving me a chance to unwind and set my thoughts straight. There's a phone call. It's from Eileen. And she heard the voicemail, I'm sure. Of course my phone starts ringing as soon as I appreciate some time alone to think. Pulling back from my pocket with my free hand, I'm surprised to see his dad. Oh, okay. Dad, hi. Hi, Allison. Not catching you at a bad time. No, no, it's fine. Sounds like you're busy. I can barely hear you. Just wandering about downtown to fill some time and do some errands. Still good to be picked up tomorrow morning. Yeah, I'll be ready at the apartment with all my stuff. Sorry again about changing everyone's plans. I told you before, it's fine. Plans already had to change because of your finals. We'll pick you up tomorrow then. It'll be good to see everyone again. Is mom doing okay? She's better, thankfully. You gave a bit of a shock when you said you weren't coming back for so long. 
We were all shocked. It seemed like you were having a rough time away from home, so I never expected you to go out of state like that. So they could tell. I feel a little sheepish thinking back. So you had a good trip then? I feel a chill as the last few days rushed in my head. Yeah, I did. Hmm. Once again, Dad can tell just from my voice. It's impossible for me to hide how I'm feeling. Something in me compels me to try anyway. What? I had fun. Well, when you're home, you'll tell us all about it, right? Of course, I'm looking forward to it. I am too. You know you, that you can tell me anything. I know. Bye, Dad. See you soon. Love you. With that, the call ends. I stare blankly at the screen of my phone. I'll be happy to see my family again, not to mention the warmth and liveliness of home. I have to take a deep breath, a lump in my throat, forming from homesickness. I guess that feeling never goes away completely. Phone already out, I take a moment to glance through the photos I've taken on it. A few from Colorado and more recent, which will be nice to show my parents as I keep going back, though. Stop at a photo taken just before I left for there. Green shines brightly in the darkness of the night. The photo of everyone gathered in my apartment celebrating the end of the semester making me mull over everything that's happened since I've arrived here. It's only been a few months, but my time since starting college has been an adventure already. I've learned so much, found so many friends, and discovered so many kinds of relationship. It's such a different way of life I lead now. Smiling faces all gathered for that one moment in time. It's all thanks to those around me, like them. The phone goes dark once more as I lock it. The precious memory slipped into my pocket once more. The only light to be seen is that cast by the Christmas tree, occasionally broken by the passing crowds. A strange sense of calm falls over me. As a stand falls over me, I stand in the snow, falling snow, hands slipping into my pockets for warmth. I was alone and afraid. Eileen was the answer to that, I thought. It seemed so Cool and collected, managing life by herself. That strength of will was what drew me to her, in hindsight. Thanks to Eileen, Caprice, and our little cub, club, that I was able to cope with being alone. The reason that I'm so at peace with myself isn't that I've finally learned to live without others. Because I know I have others to help. Maybe I was too clingy, as Eileen said. I just wanted to know her more. Even if she was brusque at the best times. If she wants to retain her solitude so dearly, though, perhaps it's for the best that things go like this. Swallowing the lump in my throat, as I push the thoughts aside, I begin to walk once more. It's then my phone begins to announce, no, this is Eileen, and she heard the voicemail. I hope this diverts from how it went for me. I hope. So bad. It's then that my phone begins to buzz in my pocket. Did Dad forget something? Eileen, why is she calling me now of all times? Should I answer? My phone is shaking in my hand. Pick up the call, but I have no idea what to say. Hello, Allison? Allison, where are you right now? She doesn't allow me to get to allow me to so much as get a word out. Her voice breathless. I'm back home in Utah. No, I mean, I know. So am I. Can we meet somewhere? Where are you exactly? I'm by the Christmas tree in the city square. Okay, stay where you are. As the line goes dead, I'm left dumbfounded. Eileen is coming here. She doesn't want to lose you, you fucking asshole. God, I've experienced this from Eileen's point of view so hard, bro. This is gross. <laughs> God damn. I hope it goes better for her. Uh, within moments, I hear a car door slam loudly. Surely she wasn't looking around for me. A familiar figure jogs up as quickly as she can in her high boots, her long strides clinking loudly on the concrete. She slowly pulls up to a stop, our eyes finally meet, and so we stand in the city square next to that large tree. Between us, only the falling snow. Eileen, why are you... What, you didn't want to see me? I almost respond, but sheer surprise stops me from finding the right words. I ended up just hanging my head, not knowing how to respond to her snark in a, such a situation. With my bags weighing down my arms, I set them down. As I look back up, I see Eileen's quip for what it was, a diversion to hide her feelings. I soon realizes I've caught on her. 
her voice turning soft. I found your voice message. I didn't want to leave things as they were. My face flowers into a blush as I grimace from embarrassment. I knew she'd eventually hear it, but still embarrassing to think about. Um, I... As I think back to everything that happened, I feel a pang of regret. Once again, I felt myself shrinking away from her. But haven't I been in pain ever since we met? I have only caused you trouble. Yeah, you sure have. There's that sardonic humor again. I can't remember if I ever found it endearing. Why do you do that? Your first response to everything is to try and brush things off with the quipping of someone. Only because everyone sticks their nose into my business. Including me, I guess. I follow that up with a dry laugh, yet Eileen's expression doesn't change. I should have expected that, but I feel my chest tighten in response nevertheless. I just... I already had things figured out for myself. The silence reigns. It feels as though we're just skipping the steps we took until now. Nothing's changed. I'm still me and Eileen is still Eileen. For all I want, I might want to get closer to her. She keeps pushing me away. I'm all the way here to work things out, yet still stuck, awkwardly trading barbs. Everything we did together was it only ever a pain to you. I didn't want to say it, but I still my heart to try and force out the words, tightly holding my arm to try and steady myself. I suppose this is all over then. No! Her shout startles me, the point where she recoils a little from my reaction. I guess we're both getting flustered. I mean, that's not what I meant. Reminding us that we're not alone, a small child goes running by us. As her mother runs after her, the distraction gives Eileen time to reason through all this, while I try my best to ignore the stinging in my heart. Everything is so confusing right now. Every day was the same, living alone in my apartment and working away in the art room. I thought I was fine being alone until you came into my life and messed everything up. When I thought you might really be gone, I realized how lonely I was. I meant what I said earlier. I can't forget all my worries about around you. I don't have to work hard and worry about being my best. I didn't have to prove anything. And I thought, I thought you'd understand. I didn't ever expect you to take my parents' side. I didn't think you'd try to tell me I'm making the wrong choices. My heart sinks. Is that how, that's how it was. That's really how it was. Is that how it looked to her? Like I betrayed her? That is what happened. You freaking, oh my God. How could I? I've always seen what her parents can't. She's serious about painting. If there's one thing I know about her, it's that why I would why would I want to ruin that world of hers that I found so fascinating? But when I thought I might lose you, I realized you were right. For all I talk big about how you should try new things in college, I was the one pushing everyone away and trying to, to stay the same. I tried to think of how to explain myself. I realized Eileen's eyes had become moist. Such a strange sight that I completely lost track of what I was trying, going to say. Eileen, I don't want to lose you, Allison. I want to try again. Moments pass as I think over her words, trying to sift through her, my emotions. She looks so different now. Her proud stature is somewhat smaller and more fragile. She's scared. Seeing her in this state puts me on the brink of tears as well. I know my answer already. Given how seeing her like this affects me. I only ever wanted to be the closest person to you. Why would I want to ruin that world of yours when it's what brought us together? Let's... Let's try again, Eileen. God, it went so much better for her. Thank freaking God. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that last part is where it definitely changed for what happened. Okay, well I'm glad. Without warning, she pulls me into an embrace. Arms wrapped tightly around me. My brain short circuits as she begins to weep, completely unable to handle the situation. I have no idea what to say as she clutches me tightly to her shuddering body, my own composure barely holding as my arms slowly raise and come around her back. Oh, I see now. Eileen's finally cracked under the pressure. That wall she carefully built up over so many years finally crumbling down at once. hold her tightly to me as she cries, trying my best to comfort her. She's here and in my arms, a vulnerable and honest girl is for only me to be seen, my own eyes only barely starting to dry. This Eileen is one I've never seen, but this, she's the Eileen I've fallen for all over again. 
Thank you, Allison. I feel a lump in my throat as I stroke her hair, trying my best to soothe her. I love you, Allison. I love you. Holding her close, as her words are muffled into my shoulder, I close my eyes and savor the feeling of her against me. Eileen loves me. This feeling, this warmth, thought my entire body as I hear those words. Throughout my entire body as I hear those words. I guess I really am in love with this hopeless girl. And I love you. Let's do this together. We're such different people with wildly different backgrounds and worlds of our own. As long as the two of us can let each other in, though, we can build a life together, side by side. We can start here. It's okay, Eileen. Welcome home. Oh, I'm so glad it went happy for her, but damn, that was a fucking memory trip. I love this game. Um, I'm gonna try to find the hidden option in the title screen after this, and I'm gonna go to the gallery, because I think we're missing either two or three achievements. We're missing three. I don't know what the hidden achievement is, so we probably won't get that. <sighs> damn. Yeah, that was a real trip down memory lane. It was all pretty like spot on for like my one of my first relationships, except for the ending. I'm so glad she had a happy ending. Ah, that made my freaking chest hurt. Goddamn, a lot of memories. Ugh. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was a long one, but. For people who don't want to read it, I thought this was probably the best visual novel I've played. I loved it. Ugh, it was so good. The freaking art style in the game is awesome. I love how the scenes load in and like draw them and then the colors them in. Um, I love how certain scenes depict what's actually going in in the frame, like when the girl got grease on her hands. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. I know it starts with the M. But yeah, I thoroughly freaking enjoyed this game. It was amazing. It's our boy George. George is back, baby. so struggling at work today <laughs> oh I just uh, maybe I'll be able to catch like a nap before work starts and like what time is it it is 8 in the morning so I started this at 2 got done at 8 I gotta be at work by 2 I can maybe get like 4 hours of sleep uh, hopefully my throat will heal up a little bit while I'm taking my nap <laughs> Fan. God, I love that game too. Oh, this is so exciting, Haley. Oh, there's voice acting now. Uh huh. Oh, we got another achievement. The Haley achievement. That was one of the hidden ones. Was wondering where you were. It's a long time coming too. Do you know if Millie knows yet? Millie, that I was her name. To her since this morning. Ooh, I can't wait to see her reaction. I'm gonna say something as soon as she gets home. Don't you think maybe she should hear it from them? Aww, but I really want to tell her. I get it. But, you know... Millie! Hello. Got some stuff. Welcome back. Took a while. There's so many people out there today. Guess it's the post-holiday rush. That's not... Millie! Millie, have you heard the news? Hmm? 
I was at my dad's shop half the day. And? And what? Car trouble again? Unfortunately. Maybe it's time for a new one. That's what Dad said, too. He even offered to help pay for it. You don't sound too thrilled. But what would you do with this one? Trash it? Well, sell it, probably. If it still functions. I don't want to, though. Yeah, you can't! Why not? I'd rather not accept something like that from him. He's already given me so much. And you can't just abandon it! Sure you can. <laughs> just leave it on the side of the road. That car is like family. As I said, if I was upgrading, I'd at least try to sell it. Hold on. Let's go back to what Capri said. Yeah! Listen, you've had that car since high school. Think of all the places it's taken us. We have spent quite a bit of time in that car. And besides... It's like family? Dad and I worked on it together a lot. I'm kind of attached to the little thing. Exactly! I know the feeling. But you can't hold on to everything forever. I know. I guess. While we're on the topic, maybe some other people here should think about getting their licenses. Psych! Um... I'm a supporter of public transit, actually. Yes, that! <laughs> Me too! Me too. Oh, really? Then you won't mind taking the tram from now on? We like riding in your car, though. Very it's boy. fun going together! So much for that. At least consider it. It'd be good for the both of you. Especially you, Caprice. I know you're getting your new club members to drive you around places now. Hey! They want to go just as much as me! Oh, really? Did they say that? More or less. Plus, I've helped them out too, you know. Thanks to me. Love is blooming in the art room. How much of that was you? Mm, 50. No. Really? Only 60? <laughs> Please, just promise me. As much as I love you two, I won't always be there for you to rely on. <laughs> it's like she's talking to her kids. Don't worry. We promise. Right, Caprice? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I won't be going anywhere anytime soon. After all, I suppose you'll still be needing rides to class this semester. It's almost here. I'm getting excited. I'm not really. Uh, I've got a full slate of classes. Plus, there's a club to run. I'm gonna recruit so many more members. At least double the size. I don't even want to think about it right now. Are you too hungry? Starving. You gonna cook, Millie? Oh. Ugh. <laughs> What about the food you just bought? Today was exhausting. How about you, Haley? Uh, let's just order something. Hmm. <laughs> Why don't we go out somewhere? Take the car together? It's a place. Weren't you just saying there's a lot of people out? Yes, but it's nice out, too. Oh, yeah. So, about that news? Let's talk about it over dinner. Okay, you drive. I call shotgun. I'm the only one who can drive. And we're very appreciative. I'm looking forward to removing my tire chains. It's a little warmer today, so the snow is starting to let up. Finally. It's about time! It's Park, Jill Harris. <sighs> Alright. Aww. Alright, what's the hidden hidden option? Go to the gallery. Yes, star. Hey, achievement. George!
Where's the hidden option? It's the only achievement I'm missing. Well guys, I don't know what the secret option is, but thanks for watching as always. That's the one achievement I'm missing, but wonderful freaking game. Best visual novel ever. Alright guys. Bye!